Hello friends. Welcome to the Muse fanfiction. How are you all? So in this video, we will see what if Naruto awoke the forgotten bloodline limit of heavenly bodies. But before we start, if you want more amazing stuff like this, then be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Also if possible share this video with your friends. Now without wasting any more time. Let's begin the story. He climbed up to the top of the Hokage stone and walked over to sit down on the head of the most famous Hokage, the Yandaimi also known as the Yellow Flash. Naruto always looked up to the Yellow Flash, the greatest shinobi ever in Konohagakure. The man that sacrificed himself to kill the demon fox Kayubi. That was also the same day he was born. As the young man sat there he couldn't stop asking why to himself. He sat there for hours asking why. Why did everyone hate him? Why did people call him a monster? Why did people think his life was such a disease to everyone? It doesn't matter how many times he asked himself these questions he never found an answer to any of them. The next day in a giant classroom there stood 20 excited and nervous wannabe ninjas just waiting to take their final exam. After this exam they would be full-fledged ninjas or have to go back to the academy. None of them were as excited than the energetic blonde named Naruto. Yesterday I will come one step closer to becoming Hokage soon that old man will have to accept my greatness and step down. Naruto yelled while jumping up and down. Will you shut up Naruto you have to pass the exam first or are you just going to magically become Hokage after failing for a third time, a blonde girl in purple screamed. Just let the dobi fail Eno, grunted the raven-haired boy named Uchiha Sasuke the most talented ninja in the class, and the most stuck up. Oh Sasuke whatever you say, squeaked Eno as she jumped to hug him but he just took a step to the side avoiding her. Eno pig stop trying to hug my Sasuke, he's too good to be rolling in the mud with a pig, a girl with bright pink hair named Sakura squeaked in the same tone as Eno just did moments ago. The two girls went back and forth about who was better for Sasuke. The whole time the two girls were bickering Naruto just gave Sasuke a bone chilling glare. That bastard thinks I'm going to fail, screw him ill pass this exam with ease as long as it not a bunch of no jutsu exam. After I prove that high almighty asshole wrong ill just kick his ass and that will be the end of the great Uchiha. Then Sakura Chan will fall in love with me. After a little while, the great Uchiha noticed Naruto's glare and grunted, Hey Dobi, what the hell are you looking at? Just staring at the person whose ass I'm going to kick, the young blonde shouted. Ha ha ha, like you Uzumaki Naruto, the dead last at everything could ever stand a chance against me. You won't even be able to scratch my forehead protector. The young man pronounced while oozing confidence everywhere. Right after Sasuke's statement Naruto was hit by two textbooks that were thrown like kanai. They bounced of the back of his head. Ouch that, he was cut of by the two angry girls. Don't you dare threaten my Sasuke again or you won't be seeing your 13th birthday, both girls shouted in unison before turning back to argue with themselves. After that the blonde could only think of one thing. I don't care how much stronger Sasuke is than me right now. One day it'll show him and everyone that I'm not a monster or just an idiot. I'll become the Hokage and get everyone to acknowledge me. I'll never quit because that's my Nindo. A man with a large scar on his face yelled, Everyone sit down and be quiet. Everyone ran to their seat and sat there quietly. Now that's better. Okay we're going to start to final exam. This exam will test you on the Bunshin no Jutsu. I hope Naruto can pass Bunshin no Jutsu it is his worst technique. Shit shit how am I going to do this that's my worst technique. I can do I can do this. I can't fail again. Naruto told himself that constantly but was still scared shitless. I'm just gonna skip this part and go straight to the woods you know what happens after this anyway. The man named Uruka was searching desperately to find Naruto and the scroll of secrets. He knew if anyone got to him first they would just kill him. He had to find him. After about five hours of searching he finally saw the orange jumpsuit wearing blonde. Naruto, Uruka said in a voice that Naruto knew he was in trouble. Hey Iruka sensei I did it I learned a technique out of the scroll so that means I can pass now right, that's what Mizuki told me. Naruto screamed in a proud tone. All Iruka could think of was oh shit as he pushed Naruto out of the way and was hit by ten kanai. Ha 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 Naruto give me the scroll, Mizuki said in a sickly tone that would even but a evil snake bastard to shame. Naruto, don't give him the scroll he was only using you, you have to get out of here and keep the scroll away from him. Aruka shouted desperately. Naruto he doesn't care about you he just doesn't want a demon to have that scroll. 
Once he gets the scroll back from you he's just going to kill the demon that killed his parents. The white-haired Chunin snickered. W. What are you talking about? Naruto stuttered not knowing if he really wanted to know. No Mizuki, Aruka shouted. You are the container of the nine-tailed fox that almost destroyed Konohagakure and killed the fourth, you killed your own sensei's parent and your hero. The white-haired man snorted. No, Naruto screamed. All of a sudden all the questions that he's been asking himself since he was two was answered the blonde Jinchuriki just snapped. Die, Mizuki shouted as he took off and threw his Fuma shuriken at Naruto. Naruto saw the shuriken coming at him but couldn't move. All he could think of was how everyone would be happier with him dead. So he just closed his eyes and awaited the pain. But the pain never came, when he opened his eyes all he saw was Aruka with a shuriken in his back. Aruka saw the confusion on the blonde's face and started to cry. I'm so sorry Naruto I should have been there for you. I should have done more. I should have told you this a long time ago. I will never saw you as a demon fox. I only saw what you truly are. A boy I consider a son, a hero. And the future Hokage. Naruto I believe in you. As Naruto heard this he tried not to cry but he just couldn't hold back the tears. He finally found someone that acknowledged him. He finally found someone that truly accepted him. Mizuki started to clap. Oh how touching, too bad you have to d. Before he could finish Naruto need him in the face. Don't you dare touch Aruka sansei. As Naruto said those words something inside him awoke. All of a sudden he felt stronger than he has ever felt in his life. Aruka was speechless. The young blonde boy's body had white lighting surrounded him. If that wasn't enough of a surprise for him, the next thing that happened surely was. Cage Bunshin no Jutsu, after that there were 200 Naruto's. They all screamed at Mizuki, I am going to kick your ass for hurting Aruka. About 30 seconds later a big heap of pounded flesh that used to be Mizuki laid in front of Naruto. Naruto gave Aruka the good guy pose and told him, I did it, that was the last thing he said before he passed out. Aruka caught him. After that Aruka took off his headband and slid it onto Naruto's head and whispered to the exhausted blonde, Yes you did Naruto. You made me proud and you pass with flying colors. I'm completely positive you will become the greatest Hokage ever. Before Aruka picked up the young boy he noticed the boy was smiling the first real smile he has ever seen on the boy. The next morning Naruto woke up to the smell of ramen. Right when he woke up the memories of the night before rushed back to him. He still couldn't believe it. The demon fox was inside him. Finally all the question he's been asking himself were answered except one. Why him? After the smell of ramen reached his nose again all of his thoughts went away. Yay ramen where's the ramen I need ramen, the blonde Jinchuriki screamed. Oh Naruto you're up. I made us some ramen for breakfast as a celebration of you graduating, Aruka announced. Aruka I passed I'm a real ninja now. He told himself still not really believing it. Yay 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 I'm one step closer to being Hokage. Naruto screamed while jumping up and down and also flexing. Aruka couldn't help but smile at the boy's antics. He was truly glad to see the boy actually happy for once. Naruto stop jumping around and finish eating we have to go and talk to the Hokage before we go to the academy to see whose team you are on. Alright Aruka ni san, so do you know who my team is? Please tell me I'm not with Sasuke Teme. Aruka smirked before replying to the blonde, you'll just have to wait and see. Now come on we're going to see the Hokage now so get dressed. Hi, the blonde shouted. At the Hokage's office the old man was just smoking his pipe thinking about his past and his past mistakes. He couldn't help but feel he failed the fourth but most of all Naruto himself. Irashi you would be ashamed of this village. I know you wanted them to see Naruto as a hero but their ignorance is blocking their view. All they can see is the demon fox not a 12 year old boy. I'm also sorry I should have done more to help the boy but the council wouldn't let me do anything, those fools. But the funny thing Irashi, is that when I look at that boy I see more than just a 12 year old kid. I don't know exactly what it is but whenever I look at him I see a Hokage who will surpass us all even you. But that's not the only feeling I get from that young boy. I also get an overwhelming feeling of pride, to see such a young boy go through so much pain but still never giving in to that pain. He's even willing to sacrifice himself for this village that has done nothing for him but cause him pain. Arashi I see what you wanted the village to see. Naruto truly is a hero and he is truly your son. As the old Hokage's thoughts began to overwhelm him he saw two people walking though the door. 
Hey Serutobi Gigi was up, the blonde shouted. Aruka slapped Naruto on the back of the head, Baka be more respectful to the Hokage. Ouch alright Aruka sensei, Naruto blurted out. The old man couldn't help but smile as he watched the two argue with each other. It seems Naruto has finally found someone that cares about him beside me. Alright you two. I have something I wanted to tell the both of you, he paused for a couple of seconds for the dramatic affect. First off good job on defeating Mizuki and getting the scroll back, he pulled out an envelope full of money and gave it to Aruka. That is for the both of you. But forget that for now there's something else I wanted to ask you. Aruka in your report you said that before Naruto used Cage Bunch and No Jutsu that there was some sort of white lightning that was wrapped around his body, is that correct? Yes, it was amazing I've never seen anything like it before. The most outstanding thing was that the lightning was protecting Naruto not hurting him at all. Aruka proclaimed in a surprised tone. Oh, I see in Naruto when all this happened what did it feel like? The old man asked. I don't remember exactly what happened but I do remember seeing Aruka sensei hurt and I wanted to protect him with all my might and then I felt like something inside awoke and I felt stronger than I ever did before. That the only way I can describe it Gigi, Naruto answered. I see well isn't that interesting, the old man was talking to himself but everyone else heard. What's interesting Gigi, Naruto asked. Well my teacher the first Hokage told me a story about a clan from the country of the Whirlpool. He told me that they had this elite clan that had a bloodline limit called the Heavenly Bodies. Their bloodline was that their body could awaken four different elemental bodies. Their body would become that element. But my teacher told me that for the people in that clan had to do something to earn each body before they could use the bodies. And that there were very few who could even awaken more than one. The Hokage said in lecture mode. Wow, Aruka and Naruto both yelled at the same time. That not all. You would think that you would have heard of such a powerful clan but they were wiped out. One of the clan members was able to awaken all four bodies but this man was pure evil and his bodies changed into demonic bodies. With his demonic bodies he wound up awakening a fifth body that combined all the bodies together and destroyed the country of the whirlpool and his clan fearing that someone from there might find a way to defeat him. After that his power scared all the hidden villages so they had all of their cages go out and face this man. It took all five cages from each nation to finally kill him. My teacher told me of the fight and told me if they lost that battle that man would have destroyed everything. The old man continued. Wow Hokage that was an amazing and unbelievable story but how does that relate to Naruto? Aruka asked. From what I heard from the two of you I believe that Naruto is an ancestor of this clan and that the white lightning you saw was in fact him awakening his first body. Serutobi told him in a completely serious tone. What I have a bloodline. Gigi is there anyone else left with it besides me? Naruto asked. I'm sorry Naruto you are the last of your clan. The Hokage said with sadness in his tone. It's alright Gigi thanks for telling me, Naruto said with a hint of sadness in his eyes. Now there's something I want to give you Naruto and there is also something I want to ask of you Uruka. The Hokage told them while puffing on his pipe. Yes Hokage-sama, Uruka said proudly. Here you go Naruto consider this a graduating present, Serutobi said as he pulled out two scrolls and a pair of katanas. Thank Gigi you have no idea what it mean to me to actually get a gift from someone, Naruto shouted while crying. Then he took the two katanas and looked at them. One of the katanas was pure black with an inscription on it in red that said, the will, and the other katana that was pure red that had an inscription on it in black saying, of fire. He just stared at the sword for a couple minutes before looking back up at the Hokage. Naruto I give you these swords because I believe you are a person, no a ninja who represents everything that, the will of fire, means. Serutobi pronounced. After hearing that Naruto ran up and tackled the Hokage into a hug, Aruka couldn't help but smile at the scene. After a long hug with the Hokage Naruto looked at the scrolls. One was a scroll containing the taijutsu style Gukan Ryu, the Iron Fist, and other one containing the techniques Raryu no Tatsumaki. Lightning Dragon Tornado, and the Kenjutsu style Makadzuki no Mai, Dance of the Crescent Moon. I gave you these to help you on your way to be Hokage and to be able to retire sooner, as the old man said this everyone broke out laughing. But right after that the Hokage became serious again. Now Aruka I can tell by just looking at you to that you both care for each other deeply and I was hoping you could become Naruto's legal guarding since he has been alone for a long time it hurts me deeply to see him by himself, the Hokage asked with sincerity. 
Iruka was shocked by this question but answered right away anyway, I would love to I already think Naruto is a son. Naruto looked at both the Hokage and Iruka and asked both of them, do you guy really mean it? They both said, yes with all my heart. After that everyone woke up in the village hearing some shouting, yes. As they got up and left the old man he whispered to himself, take care Uzumaki Naruto. Twenty minutes later, hey Naruto hurry up I'm buying you some new clothes before we go to the academy to find out your team, the Chunin exclaimed. Hey what wrong with my cloths now, Naruto asked, they look like shit I mean honestly why orange, Aruka said. That's mean and orange is a great color it's also the color of ramen, the blonde Jinchuriki shouted. Oh Kami you and ramen ha ha, come on Naruto just shut up we're getting new clothes, Aruka proclaimed. Thirty minutes later Naruto walked into the academy wearing black cargo pants and a red shirt with a black whirlpool on the back and black flames on the side. Right when everyone saw Naruto walked in everyone was shocked. Not just shocked because he passed but also the way he looked and the two katanas on his back. When Ino saw him she thought wow is that really Naruto he actually looks kind of cute. Wait Naruto cute no way the only one who's cute is Sasuke. But even as she said this to herself she still slightly blushed at the sight of Naruto. Naruto saw all the people staring at him. Damn I must look good. Definitely better than Sasuke. As soon as he thought this Uruka walked in and yelled, now I'll be telling you guys your teams and sensei's first team 1. Yay just gonna skip don't feel like making up fake names. Team 7 Uchiha Sasuke, Inazuka Kiba, and Haruno Sakura with Sensei Hitaki Kakashi. Sakura yelled, yes I'm with Sasuke, true love conquers all. Kiba growled, oh Kami why do I have to be with the greatest emo of all and emo pants obsessed fangirl. All the guys laughed at that except emo pants and all the girls just glared at him. Then Ino yelled, why Sakura on his team this is so not fair. After everyone quieted down Aruka went on until he reached team 10, alright team 10 Yamanaka Ino, Aburame Shino, and Uzumaki Naruto with Gekko Hayate as their sensei. Everyone heard Ino scream, no, she just couldn't believe her luck that Sakura was on Sasuke's team and she got him. The Dobi, the dead last, she got Uzumaki Naruto. After waiting for 10 minutes their sensei arrived. Yamanaka Ino, cough, Aburame Shino, and, cough, Uzumaki Naruto meet me up at the roof. On the roof, so you guy are my team. Hum these kid look like an interesting bunch. I think it's best to introduce ourselves and also tell each other our likes dislikes and dreams. I'll go first my name is Gekko Hayate I like swords, I dislike medical shots, Iwa Nins, and germs, my dream is to become recognized as a swordsman better than the seven swordsmen of the hidden mist and to find a doctor that can keep me from getting sick, cough. Now how about the lady go first. I'm Yamanaka Ino I like flowers and Sasuke Kun, I dislike Mrs. Forehead Sakura and Uzumaki Naruto. My dreams are to become a kunoichi greater than Tsunade. Hayate just shook his head seems like she's more interested in boys than being a ninja. Alright next up the quiet one. My name is Aburame Shino, I like learning my clan's jutsu, I dislike bug spray, my dream is to make my clan known throughout the world, Shino said without even making any facial expression. Hum seems like this one only wants to make a name for his clan. Alright last up you blonde. Oh isn't that the Jinchuriki boy and he also got some nice swords on his back. Hum I think I think I'm going to have fun with this one. My name is Uzumaki Naruto, I like ramen Uruka sensei and ramen, I dislike Sasuke Teme people who hate other for something they can't control in the three minutes it takes to make instant ramen, and my dream is to become the greatest Hokage ever and have everyone acknowledge me. It seems he grew up in a interesting way. Alright everyone meet me at training ground 10 at 6 am tomorrow for your genin test. Ino asked, but sensei didn't we already take the genin test? Hayate just shook his head. No that was just to teat if you were actually ready for this test. And just to tell you this test has a 66.7 chance of you failing. Alright see you guys tomorrow. The three genin just looked at each other before screaming, oh shit. Right after Hayate left, Naruto ran home as fast as he could. He grabbed the scrolls Serutobi gave him and a couple of instant ramen packages. A couple for Naruto is like 30, before rushing out of his apartment. The whole time Naruto was getting his stuff Iruka just looked on in amazement with how fast the blonde could get ready. But he shook his shock off and asked Naruto, hey you idiot where are you going? 
Naruto shouted back, going training, my sensei giving my team another genin test and I don't want to be the reason my team fails. Don't worry about it, you're a lot stronger than you think. Aruka said in a fatherly tone. Thanks Aruka Nissan, the 12 year old genin replied. Oh yay one more thing before you go. The chunin went into his closet and brought out two pairs of chakra weights. Here you go, these should help with your training. What are these Aruka sensei, Naruto asked, those are chakra weights. If you put some chakra in them they will gain weight, but you also can get rid of the chakra in an instant so pretty much you can get rid of the weight real quick. Aruka went on in his lecture mode that he usually spoke to a class with. I suggest you start out with 50 pounds on your arms and 75 pound on each legs. Also wear them around all the time and add 10 pounds to them each week. Don't take them off unless you're in a fight with an enemy ninja. A light Aruka can I go now? Naruto said in a mock annoyance. Yay yay get out of here you smart ass, the young Chunin yelled. Oh yay there is one last thing I got to do before I go. Oiroke no jutsu. Naruto turned into a beautiful blonde hair babe. As Naruto did this all Aruka could do is fly back with a major nosebleed. Ha ha works every time. Alright see you later. Naruto laughed the whole time until he slammed the door behind him. Naruto, Aruka screamed at training ground 10. Ha 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 I can't believe that gets him every time. Oh shit I'm here already. Alright let's see what I should do first. Oh yeah I got to put the chakra weights on. He puts the weight on and immediately feels the strain on his body. Damn this shit is heavy. Alright before I start learning any techniques I got to get us to these weights. Hum I want to get at least a lil stronger by tomorrow. I guess I better go hardcore with training tonight. Let's see I'll run 5 laps around Konoha, I'll do 500 push ups and sit ups. Then I'll punch and kick the training post 500 time each arm and leg, then I'll finish with 1000 up wards and down wards swing with my swords before I start learning these jutsu. About 3 hours and 3 destroyed training dummies later Naruto finished his warm up. Damn that was a lot harder with these weights on. Alright come on this is nothing. It's time to try and learn those techniques old man Gigi gave me. Naruto reached into his bag and looked at the three scrolls. He wanted to try and get the basic down on all three but he knew he could probably only get one done by tomorrow until he thought of something that might make his training go faster. Cage Bunshin no Jutsu, Naruto shouted and two more Naruto's popped out. Alright you take the scroll that has Gukin Ryu, the Iron Fist, pointing to the clone on the right, and you take Makadzuki no Mai, Dance of the Crescent Moon, pointing to the clone on the left, while I take Raryu no Tatsumaki, Lightning Dragon Tornado. The first clone he slowly opened the scroll with the Gukan Ryu style in it. The clone read Gukan Ryu is a style made up of pure speed and brute strength. It is a style that deals major external damage on you opponent unlike the Jukan Ryu, gentle fist style, that does internal damage. That style is mainly used by the Hyuga clan. You could say the Gukan Ryu style is like the Jukan Ryu big brother. Now to master the Gukan Ryu you first need to learn the basic techniques Konoha Senpu, Leaf Whirlwind. To perform this technique you need to build up speed then jump up and do a roundhouse kick but you must also spin with enough velocity to make the a whirlwind that also hits your opponent. The next basic technique is Konoha Repu, Leaf Violent Wind, you move low to the ground and do a sweep kick to knock your opponent of their feet. Now the last basic technique is the Konoha Reiken, Leaf Thunder Fist. Now this will be more difficult than the other two. You need to spin yourself to gain momentum and lay a powerful strike to whoever faces you. Once the clone was finished reading the basics of the Gukan Ryu he put the scroll away in his bag and began practicing the techniques. The clone trained for 7 hours before finally learning all 3 techniques. But before the clone could celebrate he poofed out of existence due to using all of its chakra. The second clone the second clone put down his swords next to the scroll and began to read. The Makadzuki no Mai, Dance of the Crescent Moon, as a sword style in Konoha. It is one of the few sword styles that can match any of the seven swordsmen of the Hidden Mist. As the ninja charges at his opponent, he creates multiple shadow copies to confuse his opponent. Using the confusion, the real ninja will attack from the opponent's blindside. This next technique is a begins with the first par of the Makadzuki no Mai but instead attacking close up you push chakra into your sword and stab it into the ground causing the ground to explode where your opponent is. This technique is called, Dance of the Crashing Dragon. 
After reading the first section or the scroll the clone Naruto picked up his twin blades and went to work. He practiced both techniques for seven hours before poofing away from lack of chakra. Naruto didn't master these techniques, hell he didn't even come close but he knew it would take more than one night to get the techniques down. But he could do a basic version of each technique and that was good enough for the test tomorrow. The real Naruto Naruto watched his clones run off in different directions before he grabbed his scroll and started to train. He opened it and saw Gigi writing. Hey Naruto I gave you this technique also because of your first elemental body is lightning. This jutsu should be a perfect match for your body. But be careful this isn't a rank jutsu. Good luck. Naruto whispered to himself, thanks old man. Naruto looked down a little farther and found the jutsu. The Raryu no Tatsumaki, lightning dragon tornado, as a very powerful lightning jutsu that creates a large dragon made up of lightning that is swirling around like a tornado which gives the attack more power and speed. This technique will take a good amount of chakra to work. Naruto put the scroll away and began training like there was no tomorrow. After about seven hours he stopped feeling that his clones disappeared. He was able to make a miniature dragon that was about six feet tall. It was a good start. After his last attempt of the Raryu no Tatsumaki he decided to go home. As he started to leave something hit him. He hasn't practiced activating his bloodline. After remembering that he got a new feeling of determination. He went back a trained for another two hours before he was finally able to awaken his bloodline again. But when he finally activated it was different than the time with Aruka. It was stronger. The first time he used it the white lightning only wrapped around his body but this time his whole body was made up of white lightning. It was amazing. That was so ko, before Naruto could finish he passed out. Little did Naruto know that there was someone watching him train this whole time. Earlier that day there was Junin in green spandex walking around Konoha talking to himself. Ah what a youthful day in the village of Konohagakure. Hum what should I do on such a youthful day? Oh I know I'll do some training. The Junin known as Maida guy walked into training ground preparing to train but when he got there he saw a young blonde Jenin training. Hum looks like there's a young shinobi training. I guess I'll just come back in a couple of hours. Guy came back five hours later and to his surprise the blonde Jenin was still there. He's still here, this boy is something. Well he can't be here to much longer so I guess I'll just wait and see what he's trying to learn. As Guy watched the boy train he realized that there was three of him. Oh this boy no cage bunshin no jutsu at such a age. Man the fire of youth sure does burn brightly in this one. He just sat there and watched for a little while before he noticed what one of the Naruto was practicing. Holy shit that's my style the Gukan Ryu. I can tell by looking at him he just started learning today but this boy's determination is making him learn it at a ridiculous rate. This boy is just like Lee he may not be a protege but he is a genius at hard work. Guy continued to watch Naruto in awe as the hours went by. He was finally about to leave until Naruto activated his bloodline. What is that, his body just turned into white lightning. I must find out who this boy is. Guy walked over to the sleeping boy and took out a blanket and laid it over the tired blonde. I got to talk to the Hokage. Hopefully he'll let me train him. Hokage's office guy came bursting through the door running on his hands, hello my youthful Hokage. The old man responded in an aggravated tone, will you just shut up and tell me what you want, oh Kami just what I need this late in the morning. Of course Hokage-sama, guy responded. Well when I went training I saw this amazing blonde shinobi and I was wondering if. He was cut off by the Hokage, did you say a blonde ninja, a blonde ninja, he couldn't mean. The Hokage was flung out of his thoughts by the man with huge eyebrows. Yes I observed a blonde genin training, and it was truly amazing. Amazing you say? How so, Serutobi asked, well sir let me put it this way after he trains twice as hard as I do. Guy said with shock in his voice. After hearing this Hokage almost fell off his chair. Are you serious I watched one of your training session and it was ridiculous. I know sir but it's the truth, and the boy is also learning my style too. Guy answer. Hum I see so this boy has blonde hair, learning your style, and has a determination that surpasses my own. The Hokage said to himself but Guy heard. Yes sir but that's not it at the end of his training session the boy's body became a body of white lightning. It was the most amazing thing I have ever seen. The green spandex wearing man said while replaying the image in his mind. The boy's name is Uzumaki Naruto, the old man said with pride in his voice. 
That's the boy with the nine tails sealed inside him isn't it, Guy asked. Yes, wow that boy just keeps on amazing me, Guy smiled. The Hokage smiled back, yay he has that effect on people, he truly is amazing. This village has treated that young boy horribly, but instead of hating this village or wanting to destroy it, he wants to protect it. His dream is to become the Hokage so that he can protect his village and prove to them that he is not a monster but a leaf shinobi. That boy is stronger than I ever could be. Wow. Hokage-sama please let me help train this boy. After hearing what this boy has gone through I want to help him achieve his dream. Guy asked filled with hope in his voice. Well he already has a team and a sensei but I believe Naruto will flourish if someone like you helped him train. So I'll assign you to train him on the weekend and the days his team are off. Hokage said with joy in his voice. Guy screamed, yes now I have another youthful student. Lee will be overjoyed to hear this. The Hokage could just laugh at Junin with the humongous eyebrows antics. The next morning at the Yamanaka house ring ring the alarm clock kept ringing until a young girl shut it off. Damn I'll never get used to waking up early. Plus I got to go and take some hard as test with my new team. Oh god my new team how'd I get stuck with loud obnoxious Naruto and Sakura gets the beautiful Sasuke it's just not fair. After her little tantrum in her head Ino went downstairs really annoyed. When Ino sat down for breakfast her mother could tell there's something's wrong. Ino moms asked in a motherly tone, what's wrong honey? It's just not fair mom, Ino complained, what's not fair honey, Ino's mom asked. Sakura got Sasuke on her team and I got Nar, Naruto, Ino whined. Oh thank god, Ino's mom whispered, what was that mom, Ino asked. Nothing dear, hurry up and get ready or you'll be late, Ino mom sternly suggested. Yes mom, Ino kissed her mom before running in the shower. Oh thank god she didn't get Sasuke. God I hate that arrogant brat. Knowing he's not on her team will make me sleep easier. I can't wait till Ino see what he really is. Uchiha either become great protectors or dark murderers and Sasuke is already sliding to the darker side. But knowing Naruto's on her team makes me feel even safer. He'll protect her no matter what just like before. Flashback there was a young girl getting beaten up because of her blonde hair. Hey blondie why don't you try and find a flower in this? The boy threw a rock at her and when it was just about to hit her someone caught the rock in his hand. All Ino could do was say thank you before passing out. There was a young kid with blonde hair and blue eyes staring down on the three boys. If you want to throw rock at someone threw them at me but not her. All the boys shouted, okay, and started winging rock at the young boy no older than seven. The blue-eyed boy didn't move he just stood in front of Ino blocking her from getting hit. That lasted a couple of minutes before Mrs. Yamanaka showed up and chased the kids alright. Once the kids were gone Naruto fell over in pain. Thank you so much for sticking up for my daughter. Are you her friend? Ino's mom asked. No just met her right now. Naruto smiled but Mrs. Yamanaka could tell it was just a mask for her benefit. Then why did you take such a beating for someone you don't even know, Ino mom asked. Because I can't stand people getting hurt or crying. I'm used to getting beaten up so I decided I'll take on all the bullies and let them all beat me up so everyone else can be happy. No one deserves to be picked on or beaten up. Naruto said while making a smiling and showing all his teeth. But what about you? You don't deserve it either. Ino's mom pleaded with a boy who was way too mature for his age. It's all right ma'am my dream is to become a Hokage greater than the fourth. I want to protect everyone. I want to make sure no one ever has to go through what I have to. I will gladly risk my life for anyone who lives in Konoha. I don't care what happens to me. I also believe I am not that important but what is important is this village and everyone in it. So no matter what I'll protect Konoha with my life. Naruto shouted the last part. Ino's moms just looked at him before walking away from him so he couldn't see her crying. She picked up Ino and started walking home. But before she left she turned around and looked at Naruto, good luck and become a Hokage like no one's ever seen. Naruto just smiled and walked away. The whole way home I couldn't stop thinking. The boy everyone thinks of as a demon is actually a hero trying to protect everyone. What a kid. End of flashback after remembering that Mrs. Yamanaka started crying. She couldn't believe a boy could suffer so much and persevere. Now that the kind of person I wished my Ino liked. Ino was about to leave until he saw her mom crying. Are you okay mom? She replied, yay I'm fine. 
Um Eno I just wanted to tell you that you might be upset that Naruto's on your team but he will protect you no matter what. Eno was confused. Mom what are you talking about? Oh never mind just go or you're going to be late, she said. Okay, Eno ran out the door very confused about what just happened. Naruto please protect my little girl. I know you will. I believe in you. That was the last thought that went through Mrs. Yamanaka head before she went to her bedroom and fell asleep. I believe in you Naruto, protect her Hayate was just waking up. Look likes today is the day I become a sensei. Yay that's going to take a while to get used to. I just hope these kids empress me I don't want to be teaching some crappy ass ninjas. Hum I guess I'll just have to wait and see. He got up took a shower sharpened his blade and then left to meet his team. He looked down on his watch hum 5.30 I guess I'm a little early. Hayate decided to take a walk through the more isolated part of training ground 10. The farther he walked back he started to see more and more destruction. Looks like someone was doing serious damage. He walked by a training post and saw that the training dummy was messed up. It had fist imprints and blood all over it. Damn whoever did this must have the determination of a demon. He kept walking until he stopped by two more training posts one had so many different slashes in it. Then he looked over to other post with was singed over and over and it still had shock of electricity going through it. Damn looks like there was a kenjutsu user, a taijutsu user, and someone who could manipulate lightning. Damn whoever those three were that trained here sure went all out. He was about to go back to where he was going to meet with his team until something caught his eye. There was a blonde boy sleeping in the middle of scorched earth. There was still electricity sparking around him. Just like the other training post. There's no way that it was just this boy that did all this he was thinking as he approached the genin. When Hayate saw who was his mouth dropped to the ground. Uzumaki Naruto I thought he was the dead last in his class. I guess the Hokage was right he is the most hyperactive surprising ninja you'll ever meet. I guess I don't have to worry about if my team's going to be interesting. Damn I knew I was going to like this boy. Hayate was snapped out of his thoughts when he heard his watch ring. Shit it's 5.45 I better wake him up and go. Hayate shook him for a while before he finally got the blonde to wake up. Um ramen god come to me, Naruto said while still wiping the crust out of his eyes. The sick junin just shook his head, come on Naruto wake up or you're going to miss your genin test. Man this kid loves ramen he even dreams about it. After hearing Hayate voice the blue eyed genin popped right up. Oh sensei was up. Um what time is it? It's 5.45. Um Naruto do you mind me asking why are you sleeping here? Hayate asked. Naruto just rubbed the back of his head and gave his sensei one of his fake smiles. Oh yeah I was training to get ready for today's test and I guess I went a little overboard and passed out. Oh well let's get going I don't want to be late. Are you shitting me a little overboard? This kid is ridiculous. Damn this is going to be fun. Ten minutes later Naruto and Hayate walked out of the woods to see that Ino and Shino are already there. Yes sensei you're here. Ino looks at Hayate then Naruto, oh you're here to Naruto. Yay yay I'm here. Naruto said trying to get Ino off his back. Whatever, she replied, you guys wait here while I set something up. Hayate said while he was walking away. All three of the genin were just sitting there thinking about their upcoming test except Ino. She was just staring at Naruto. Flashback Ino was about to leave until he saw her mom crying. Are you okay mom? She replied, yay I'm fine. Um Eno I just wanted to tell you that you might be upset too oh that Naruto's on your team but he will protect you no matter what. Eno was confused, mom what are you talking about? Oh never mind just go or you're going to be late, she said. Okay, Eno ran out the door very confused about what just happened. End flashback that was so weird. Why did my mom say that Naruto will protect me no matter what? As if Naruto could ever protect me I'll probably wind up protecting him. But my mom said it in her tone which means that she completely believes in what she's saying. Ah it's so confusing. As Ino was having a fight in her mind Naruto saw her confused state and got worried. Hey Ino you alright, you don't look too good. Yay I'm fine, she said. How could he tell there was something up with me? Shino the most observant person in her class couldn't even tell. HMPH he probably just got lucky and noticed it by chance. Ino was thrown out of her thought when Hayate came back. Alright we're about to take your official genin test. What do we have to do sensei, the blonde boy asked. Well I'm glad you asked that. 
You guys well each have to fight me and if you can at least impress me a little you pass. But if any of your teammates fail the whole team fail. Hayate explained. Naruto you better not mess up or I'm going to kill you. Ino yelled in a dangerous tone that told Naruto if he messed up she would actually kill him. Naruto started to sweat after receiving a glare from Ino. Um don't worry Ino I'm going to be Hokage someday so this won't stop me. Just shut up. Ino shouted why me I'm on Naruto's team so of course we're going to fail and I have to go back to the academy to never see my Sasuke-kun again. Hayate just shook his head how little does this girl know if she saw what happened to the area Naruto was training and I think she would stop worrying about him passing and start worrying about herself. Alright Shino you're up first show me what you got. Shino walked out onto the training area and got himself into a fighting stance. Alright let's see how good his tracking skills are. A right Shino come and get me after saying that Hayate just vanished. Holy shit Ino did you even see him move? Naruto asked while his eyes were popping out of his head trying to find his sensei. No holy shit none of us stand a chance against him. She said while rubbing her eyes not really believing what she just saw. Naruto saw the concern in her voice and decided to encourage her a bit of course you have a chance. You were the strongest Kunoichi in our class anyway if you fail here you will lose that Sasuke bastard to Sakura forever. I know you don't want that so just believe in yourself. Damn straight I'm not losing Sasuke to Sakura. I'm gonna kick this sick sensei's ass and become a genin. Damn Naruto may be an idiot but he does know how to make people feel better sometimes. Wait a minute this is Naruto I'm talking about. Damn I must be going crazy today. Thanks Naruto. No problem. Naruto smiled at the blonde girl. Hayate heard the whole conversation from where he was hiding and couldn't help but smile. He worries about other before himself. He also gave Ino more confidence in herself. Looks like this kid is just going to keep surprising me. Soon after Hayate was thrown out of his thoughts when he heard Shino scream. Mushi Yos no Jutsu, Insect Gathering Technique. Bugs started to come out of Shino's hands and were attached by chakra strings so once one of the bugs found Hayate, Shino would know right away. Ah, Ino screamed and jumped on Naruto. Naruto blushed having Ino on him. Damn I didn't realize before but she's really hot. Even hotter than Sakura. After a little while Ino realized she was hanging on Naruto. She looked straight into his blue eyes and blushed. But before Naruto saw the blush she punched him on the top of the head and screamed, pervert. Holy shit I was blushing why was I blushing it was Naruto. Naruto snapped out of his daze from being hit, what the hell was that for you jumped on me. Naruto just shut up you arrow baka, Ino proclaimed. If I was a pervert why would I look at you? I thought perverts like girls with big chests. And it seems to me you're still a little underdeveloped. The blonde genin smirked while saying this. Naruto I'm going to kill you. Ino launched herself at Naruto. Oh shit. He screamed while running away from a very pissed Kunoichi. Five minutes later and one pummeled Naruto, Shino's bugs found Hayate. Right after the bugs found him Shino threw a kanai with an exploding tag where their sensei was hiding. After the tree explode the sick Junin popped out in front of Shino. Nice job finding me. Let's see how good you are at combat, the sick man shouted while charging at Shino with great speed. As Hayate was about to bring his sword down on Shino. Shino took out a kanai and barely blocked the sword. After that they both jumped back and gained distance from one another. Hmm this kid's pretty good to be able to find me and block my sword let's see what else he can do. The sick sensei started to do hand seals and shouted Enden, fireball, a fireball shot of his mouth. It came way too fast at Shino so he couldn't dodge. The fireball then engulfed Shino. Once the fireball was gone Hayate realized Shino wasn't there it was just burnt insects. I see so that was the Mushi Bunshin no Jutsu, insect clone technique, very clever. I wonder where he's going to attack M. He was thrown out of his thoughts when he was hit by three kanai in the back. Shino was thinking. That was too easy to be true. Right on cue Hayate turned into a log. Shit he used Kawarimi no Jutsu, change of body stance technique. Where is he? Right when Shino thought that Hayate was above him getting ready to slice down on Shino with his sword. But right before it could hit him Shino did Mushi Cave no Jutsu, insect wall technique, a vortex of bugs surrounded Shino blocking Hayate's sword. When Hayate came back down to the ground he told Shino, you pass, this kid's good but he relies on his clan's techniques too much. He'll have to teach him some techniques that don't use bugs. 
Shino just walked back to where Naruto and Ino were sitting. He didn't even show any emotions from passing. Right when Shino got back Naruto yelled, Good job Shino I always knew you were strong.0. After hearing Naruto say that Shino couldn't help but smile, thanks Naruto. No problem, Naruto replied right after that Hayate walked in front of them and said, Okay Ino it's your turn come on let's go. As Ino started to walk away Naruto shouted, Good luck Ino I know you can do this. In truth Ino was feeling really nervous about it being her turn but once she heard Naruto say that all of her tension went away, she whispered, thanks Naruto, but he heard her and just smiled. Once they were a good distance Ino got into a battle stance right away. Her sensei though look like this one is anxious to kick my ass. After seeing her sensei in thought Ino shouted shuriken bunshin no jutsu, shuriken clone technique, Ino threw four shuriken but it looked like she threw a lot more. Hayate was impressed but he could tell which ones were the real ones and he just blocked him with his sword. This girl has great chakra control. Hayate thought that was the end of Ino's technique. Oh was he wrong? Ino shouted, Sushuha, manipulate advancing blades. The shuriken Hayate blocked were coming at him again. This surprised the sick Junin but he was able to weave out of the way. After dodging all the blades he cut the chakra ropes connecting to the shuriken. Damn that was close she almost caught me off guard. He then looked over to Ino and saw that she was sweating and breathing heavily. I see she might have great chakra control but she has a low chakra capacity. I'll have to build it up. Ino good job you pass. Damn I'm tired I hope that was enough to pass. Right after thinking that she heard what her sensei said and passed out. Hayate picked her up and brought her back to where everyone else was. When Hayate was coming back Naruto saw Ino passed out and being carried by him. He got really worried and ran over to his sensei. Is she okay? Naruto asked. Hayate heard the worry in his voice and answered quickly, she's alright just exhausted so let her sleep. Once Naruto heard that he felt relieved, hi sensei. Naruto began to smile again but Hayate could tell it was just a mask hiding his true feeling. It seems he hides the pain in his heart so others won't worry themselves. He carries such a great burden all alone. Naruto from this day on I promise I will help you carry that burden. Soon Hayate realized it was time for Naruto to take the exam. Okay Naruto it's up to you if you pass your team passes if you fail they fail, show me what you got Uzumaki. Hi sensei, Naruto s aid this while he got into his fighting stance. From what I saw in the training area he was practicing taijutsu, kenjutsu and some sort of lightning attack. Let's see if I can get him to use all three. Alright Naruto let's start this off with just taijutsu. Hi, was all he said before he ran up to Hayate with speed that surprised Hayate and Shino. Naruto first went for the Konoha Repu, leaf violent wind, and tried to sweep his sensei off his feet but Hayate saw this and jumped into the air. But as soon as he did this Naruto went into his second taijutsu technique rich away. He used the Konoha Reiken, leaf thunder fist, and tried to hit Hayate in the chest but he blocked it with his forearms. But before Hayate could do anything else Naruto hit him with the Konoha Senpu, leaf whirlwind, right in the face. Well what the blonde genin thought was his face but it was actually just a log. Damn he must have used Kawarimi no Jutsu, change of body stance technique, right before I hit him. Damn I was close. Hayate was standing on the ground looking up at Naruto. Damn that was close. I was going easy on him but that was still amazing for a genin only a day out of the academy. I knew he was stronger than what his grades showed me but I didn't think he'd be this strong. From what he just showed me I should pass him right now but I have to see what else he can do. Someone else was having the same thoughts as well. Shino just saw Naruto do stuff that he would have never guessed Naruto could do. Holy shit is that really Naruto the person who was supposed to be the dead last in our class. He's at least as strong as I am. And I had some of the top scores in the class. If Ino was up I think she'd die of shock. Naruto is actually a lot stronger than any of us thought. And that was only taijutsu I got to see what else he can do. Alright Naruto that was enough taijutsu, now let me see what you can do with those red and black swords of yours. The always sick Junin yelled as he charged at Naruto while trying to slice our hero in half. Naruto was barely able to pull out his sword in time and block Hayate's attack. Hayate struck with such force it drove Naruto a good 20 feet back. After a little bit more of Hayate attacking and Naruto barley blocking. Naruto smirked and decided to start attacking himself. 
The blue-eyed boy shouted, Makadzuki no Mai! Dance of the Crescent Moon! Naruto was only able to create one after image but he didn't care he just charged at his sensei. Holy shit that's my style. Well a basic version of my style but still impressive. Hell yeah I'm so glad I decided to become a Junin sensei. Hayate then decided to charge at Naruto with the same technique. The sick Junin shouted, Makadzuki no Mai, Dance of the Crescent Moon. A couple of seconds later the two collided with each other. After the attack you could see that Naruto had cuts all over his body while Hayate only ha a little nick on his face. Wow I'm surprised he actually able to cut me at all. Man this boy keeps surprising me. Alright I can't wait anymore I have to see that lightning jutsu he was practicing. Alright Naruto here's the last part of your test. Try and hit me with you best ninjutsu. Naruto just shook his head up and down in understanding. Okay sensei I haven't mastered jutsu yet but it is the strongest one I got. Naruto started doing hand seals then shouted Raryu no Tatsumaki, lightning dragon tornado, a six foot lightning tornado that was shaped like a dragon came at Hayate. Hayate had no chance to dodge so he just pushed all of his chakra to his feet and his arms so that he could stick to the ground and have enough strength in his arm to block the jutsu. The sick Junin was able to block it but it took a shitload out of him. Damn that was a strong attack and that probably wasn't even one fourth of the power it was supposed to be. Damn this kid's going to grow and become a great ninja. Hayate looked at Naruto with pride in his eyes before he shouted, Great job Naruto you pass. Yay yay yay, Naruto shouted as he ran around the training field and flexed at the same time. Hayate just shook his head and whispered to Shino. Damn that kid has a ridiculous amount of energy. Shino shook his head along with Hayate before replying, I know he has an enormous amount of energy and strength. After hearing Naruto's outburst Ino woke up from all the noise. Damn what with all the shouting. She was asking herself more than someone else. But Shino answered anyway, Naruto passed the test so we're all officially genin. Ino was surprised she really didn't think that Naruto was going to be able to pass. So that idiot actually passed I can't believe the dead last manage. I'm sorry Ino but you're wrong it seems that Naruto is a lot stronger than any office believed him to be, Shino said. Are you serious? Ino asked not really believing what Shino was saying. Yes I'm completely serious, it seemed that Naruto hides things from people. I don't think the loud obnoxious carefree Naruto is the real Naruto. The genin with the shades pronounced. What do you mean Shino? She said this while looking at Naruto like she was trying to figure out a great mystery. I mean that the Naruto we see every day is not who 20 he is. He seems to be this happy carefree idiot but when I look into his eyes I can tell he is in great pain but he hides it from people so they don't worry about him. I can tell he's had a hard life but he doesn't wallow in pity he tries to change it for the better. Shino answered. After hearing Shino's words and remembering what her mom said she couldn't help but think about the blonde hair idiot. She just looked at the blonde before whispering to herself, who are you Uzumaki Naruto? The day after the exam. So Hayate this is team 10. Very nice to meet you. The old Hokage greeted the three teens. Yes sir. I think this team will one day be of great use for Konoha, Hayate answered his superior. I see, the old man then looked at Naruto. I see you passed your sensei's test, so how did you do? I did amazing I kicked six sensei's ass, damn I'm just awesome, the blonde idiot shouted. Right when Naruto closed his mouth Ino gave Naruto a vicious uppercut sending Naruto into the wall. Will you please be more respectful? Naruto slowly got up and was about to say something to Ino, but before he could open his mouth, Shino placed his hand over it. If you say what I think you're going to say, she'll make sure you'll never be a real man ever again. Naruto imaged Ino castrating him and decided to shut up for a little while. Hayate and Serutobi both sweat dropped at the scene. It was a few more seconds before the Hokage finally spoke up. All right, here is Team 10 first mission. You guys have to clean the Inazuka clans suck. Aw oh, this sucks we got to wash some stinky dogs all day, all three said simultaneously. Team 10 was just about to walk out the door before the old man spoke up again. Naruto Hayate there's something I would like to talk about with you too. He then looked at Shino and Ino, you two are dismissed. Ino whispered into Shino's ear as they walked out, what do you think the Hokage wants with our blonde idiot? Shino answered. I have no idea, back in the room once the Hokage was sure that Ino and Shino were gone he started talking. Naruto do you remember the Taijutsu scroll I gave you? 
Of course I just started learning it the other day. Naruto answered. I see very good. Naruto there is an expert in the Gukan Ryu style, the Iron Fist, who saw you training the other day and saw potential. Right when the old man said this Naruto got really curious. Who is he? Naruto asked before the Hokage could reply Hayate spoke, Hokage-sama please tell me it isn't who I think it is, the old man simply nodded telling Naruto it was who he thought it was. Oh Kami. So what does he want with Naruto? Well he wanted to know if he could help train Naruto. He would train him on the weekends while you train the idiot on the weekdays with your team. He then looked over at Naruto. If that alright with you Naruto. Hell yeah if he can help me get stronger so I'll be able to protect my precious people. Yes I would love to be trained by him. The blonde Genin practically shouted. Sarutobi just laughed at the blonde's outburst. Ha I thought you say that. He then looked over at the door and said, you can come in now. A green spandex wearing Junin walked in the door and shouted, Oh Hokage sama you look as youthful as ever. Thanks guy, Serutobi replied Naruto just looked at the man. Well he was looking at the man's eyebrows more than the man himself. Damn those thing are massive. Gigi who's fuzzy brows over there. Hayate and the Hokage both laughed at the nickname he gave guy. Once the Hokage was able to catch his breath from laughing so hard he answered Naruto. That is the taijutsu expert that will be helping you with your training. Naruto just stared at the old man, not really believing that guy was a strong ninja, but he quickly dismissed any theory about gut not being strong when he saw the scars all over his fist from training. So you're my new sensei. Well, I'm truly glad I someone like you could be teaching me. Hayate was shocked to see Naruto showing anyone respect, but he just did to a green spandex wearing ninja. Holy shit, Naruto actually showed guy some respect. The shocked sensei whispered into the Hokage's ear. It might surprise you but Naruto can tell Guy is somewhat like him. Serutobi whispered back. Wait how are they alike besides being loud as hell, Hayate asked. They both train harder than anyone ever should. Their reason are the same to prove people wrong who thought they were worthless ninjas and to protect everyone they care about. The Hokage sighed. Hayate took a second to look at both of the ninjas standing in front of him before saying anything. I see what you mean Hokage-sama. After letting Guy and Naruto talk a little the Hokage spoke up. Alright Naruto I want you to meet up with Guy at training area 10 when you're finished with your mission. Hi, was all Naruto said before he started walking to the door. Before Naruto left Hokage threw a scroll at Naruto. Take this Naruto. Guy going to help you with your taijutsu, Hayate going to be working with you on kenjutsu and this should help you with ninjutsu. Thanks Gigi. Naruto shouted before he left. Right when he got out of the Hokage's office he opened the scroll. It had the old man handwriting on it. Hey what's up you little brat. I gave you these jutsu because I believe they'll help you master the Raryu no Tatsumaki, lightning dragon tornado. They're pretty strong lightning jutsu themselves but once you master both you'll be able to do the Raryu no Tatsumaki with ease. Alright brat the first one is the Sanda Saburu, Thunder Saber. This is a great technique for you to use with your swords. This jutsu will cover your swords with lightning. So even if your enemy is able to black your sword they'll still feel the electricity shock the shit out of them. Your next technique is the Torunido Raideningu, Tornado Lightning. This jutsu creates a tornado of lightning that you send at your enemy. It's quite destructive but easy to dodge. Naruto screamed, thanks Gigi. The Hokage heard this from his office and just smiled. Two hours later at training area 10 Naruto sat down Indian style waiting to hear what type of trainings he was going to have to do for Guy. Alright Naruto I saw that you wear chakra weights. How much do they weigh right now? Naruto answered, 50 pound on each arm and 75 pound on each leg. Guy nodded to himself before speaking to Naruto again, that good but I want you to double both pairs. Holy shit this is going to blow almost as much as Sasuke does. Naruto laughed to himself before upping the weights. Once Naruto finished with adding the weight guy spoke again. Alright now I want you to run 10 laps around Konoha then do a 1000 push ups and sit ups, then punch and kick the training post another 1000 times, and after all that I will teach you a couple of more techniques. If you can manage both of those techniques today it'll teach you another one, but if you do manage to learn the last one a kinjutsu, I'll talk to you more about once you get there. Now get going. I wonder if he'll be able to manage to do this training session. This is what I did when I was a chunin, but from how much Naruto has already surprised me maybe he can do it again. 
Three and a half hours later Naruto finally finished his workout and was now waiting for Guy to teach him the new techniques. Guy just looked at the boy in utter shock. How the hell did he do that? That quicker than Lee does it and Lee been doing the same thing for a year. This boy's stamina is ridiculous. Then Lee took a closer look Naruto was shaking from exhaustion he looked like he could pass out anytime. Holy shit this boy has great stamina but he passed the limits of his body a long time ago. He willed his way through that whole workout. It looks like this kid's flame of youth burns brighter than my own. Alright Naruto since you finished the workout I'm going to show you two more techniques. If you can get these two down in two hours I'll teach you one more alright. Hi. The blonde Jinchuriki shouted guy just smirked. Alright the first technique is the Dynamiku Entori, Dynamic Entry. You throw a kanai to distract your enemy then you blindside him with a flying kick. Now the second technique is the Dynamiku Akushin, Dynamic Action. You will launch yourself at your opponent catching him off guard then you will release a flurry of strikes. Now get going and practice. Two hours later damn this kid did it again he learned both techniques but does he have enough left to learn this last one. Alright Naruto here's the last technique it's called the Omoto Renge, Front Lotus. This taijutsu technique which was forbidden due to the strain it puts on a ninja's body. By opening the first of the celestial gates, the initial gate, the ninja is able to release the restraints in the brain and push the body farther. You first loosen the bandages around your arm. With a quick dash you are suddenly below you target and a quick upward kick sends your opponent skyward. You then jump into the air to place your chest to the back of your opponent. You then wrap your arms and the bandages around your opponent to prevent escape. As the pair begin their fall back to earth, you begin to spin down wards at a high rate of speed, driving your opponent head first into the ground. At the last moment you release the bandages and jump to the clear. Though this technique injures your opponent, it also takes its toll on your body as well. Do you understand? Hi sensei, Naruto shook his head up and down showing Guy he understood. Naruto I only want you to use this attack if two things happened, Guy said in a dead serious tone. What two things fuzzy brows? Naruto asked, hey shut up my eyebrows express the amount of youth I have. Guy retorted to the fuzzy brows remark. Sure. Just tell me what two things, Naruto asked again. The first reason to use this technique is that you have to protect someone precious and the second reason to use Omoto Renge is to protect your way of the ninja, Guy said. So I can use that move to keep a promise to someone and to prove everyone that I'm not a demon. Naruto said not sure if that was the right thing to say. Yes Naruto but don't forget there one more thing in your way of the ninja, the man with huge eyebrows said. What did I forget, Naruto asked clearly confused by what Guy said. The thing that makes you so determined the thing that won't let you give up no matter what. Guy paused for a couple second before blurting it out, your dream to become Hokage. Hi, Naruto only smirked at what his sensei just told him. Two hours later Naruto was finally getting the basics of Omoto Renge down when Guy called out to him. Alright Naruto training's done for today come on let's get some ramen. Guy pronounced. Yay yay ramen ramen ramen. As you would say Guy ramen flames of youth burns brightly. Naruto shouted with joy. Guy Zhu chuckled at the blonde's outburst but it was short lived when Naruto passed out from exhaustion. Guy immediately ran over and checked on him. Oh thank Kami he's alright. He then looked at Naruto. I don't know how you do it but you keep surprising me. After that though Guy took Naruto home for much needed rest. One month later in that one month Naruto has grown stronger. He mastered Omoto Renge he was much faster and now he wore 200 pounds on each arm and 300 on each leg. He's not even close to mastering the Makadzuki no Mai, Dance of the Crescent Moon, but he was steadily improving. He also mastered the Sanda Saburu, Thunder Saber and the Torunido Raideningu, Tornado Lightning, he almost perfected the Raryu no Tatsumaki, Lightning Dragon Tornado, he could make a 30 foot dragon but it just couldn't get it to stay stable. Also Naruto and his team have been doing a bunch of different gay D rank missions and he was getting sick of it. Hokage's office, so you guys finally caught Tora, she's a feisty cat. The old man with the pipe stated, div. That bitch cat almost killed me, I think we should roast it. Naruto said while rubbing his hand in an evil kind of way. Soon after Naruto said that he was drop kicked in the face by Ino. Naruto Yubaka how the hell could you say that about a cute innocent cat? As she said this the cat just had an evil smirk on his face. 
Eno then grabbed the cat and started petting it. How could anyone think of doing such a thing to such a cute cat? As Eno said this the cat stuck its tongue out at Naruto. Naruto then pointed to the cat, did you see that? That thing is evil pure evil. Will you shut up Naruto this cat is too cute to be evil, Eno proclaimed. You're being tricked Eno I must save you, Naruto then dove after the cat but instead of grabbing the cat, he caught Eno's foot to his face, owww. Serves you right, Eno said while admiring the footmark she made in the blonde genin head. Iruka couldn't help but laugh to himself. It seems Naruto really likes this girl he just hasn't realized it yet. Wait a sec I think I'm forgetting to do something. Oh shit their mission. Shut up for a second, Aruka said with a booming voice. As soon as he said that Eno and Naruto both closed their mouths right away. Alright good your next mission is a C-class mission you have to escort a bridge builder named Tazuna to the country of the wave and then protect him till he finish the bridge. Please come in Tazuna. An elderly man chugging a bottle of sake walked in, so I'm going to be protected by three little brat. I mean the shortest one doesn't even look like he's capable to be a ninja at all. After hearing this comment Naruto went berserk and charged at Tizuna but he was held back by Hayate. Come on sensei let me kill him. No Naruto you can't kill the person you're supposed to protect anyway if you kill him now you won't be able to prove him wrong. He said to Naruto before turning his attention to Tizuna. Tizuna I assure you they're all capable ninjas and I'm a junin so you don't need to worry. Tizuna was about to sigh in relief but Hayate spoke up again. I wouldn't underestimate that one, he pointed to Naruto, he might act like an idiot now but when he get into a fight he'll show you his real self. Naruto didn't hear what Hayate said but Ino and Shino did. Shino what did Hayate mean by showing Naruto real self? Ino asked. Shino replied, I told you before that the happy-go-lucky Naruto isn't the real Naruto. Once you see him fight someone strong you'll see. You won't believe what you see at first but it's the real Naruto. Shino paused for a second to think before he spoke up again. I think Naruto only lets his mask down when he's fighting. It's the only time he doesn't hide his felling to protect people. What do you mean by that Shino? Ino asked while staring at Naruto. He might not tell you or anyone else he cares about them to protect himself from being hurt. But when a fight begins he'll protect you no matter what because he rather die than see anyone he cares about die. The bug user answered. My mom said the same thing that hell protect me no matter what but I don't understand why Naruto would do that. I've only been mean to Naruto. I've been mean to him since I was eight so why would he protect me, Ino was trying to reason with herself. Shino simply stated before leaving to get ready for the mission, because he's Naruto. Ino ran out after him to get ready herself. As she was leaving she whispered to herself, because he's Naruto. Team 10 stood out in front of the Konoha gates waiting for their loud blonde teammate. About 10 minutes later they heard a all too familiar voice scream, I'm coming don't leave without me. A slightly pissed Ino yelled at him, we're not going to leave you. You baka. She said the last part with emphasis. Hayate saw Ino yell at Naruto again so he decided to speak up before Naruto got his ass kicked again. Come on guys the sooner we get Tazuna to the wave the sooner we'll get home. He paused for a second and then looked at Naruto, the sooner you'll be able to eat Ichiraku ramen. Naruto of course ran ahead of everyone trying to get them to hurry after hearing Hayate say that, come on let's go. Will you shut up you're the one that was late and now you're telling us to hurry up, Ino yelled. What did you say Ino? I don't speak dumb blonde, he said while giving Ino a evil glare. Naruto you're dead. Let's just say when Ino gets made fun of because of her hair she loses it. About five minutes later Hayate was dragging a beaten Naruto behind him. Hayate just smirked at the two blondes. I guess that idiot will never learn. He then thought about the way Ino's been acting around Naruto. Ino's been acting a little different around Naruto lately. She acts like she's trying to figure him out like he is a puzzle. Three hours later the whole group was walking to the wave without a real care in the world. Well except for Naruto who always seems like that but really he has more on his mind than the Hokage sometimes. As they walked Hayate noticed a puddle with two chakra sources in it. Why are enemy ninjas attacking us? Tizuna must have lied on his mission request. I have to make sure though that he's the real target. I just hope nobody on my team gets hurt. Right when that crossed his mind two pairs of chains wrapped around him. Before they ripped him into two he was able to say, protect them Naruto. Right when this happened everyone was shocked and scared about what just occurred except Naruto. 
When Naruto saw what the two ninjas did to his sensei he didn't feel scared. No he felt angry but not at the ninjas who killed his sensei. He felt angry at himself for not being able to protect him. He almost lost himself to his anger until he realized that he couldn't fail his other friends to. One of the mist nins were charging at Ino who was protecting Tazuna. Oh shit I'm going to die. I'll never get to see Sasuke's face again. She was trying to picture Sasuke coming to her rescue but she couldn't. Right after that Ino closed her eyes expecting to die but death never came to her. When she opened her eyes she first thought that somehow Sasuke has come and saved her. But when her eyes fully opened she realized it wasn't Sasuke who saved her but her blonde teammate Naruto. 30 seconds earlier Naruto realized that Ino was going to die if he didn't do anything. So he released his chakra weights and sprinted over to her. The mist Chunin didn't even know Naruto was anywhere near him until he heard the blonde Genin yell, Konoha Senpu, Leaf Whirlwind, right after hearing that the mist Chunin got roundhouse kicked in the face. It took him a couple of seconds before he was able to stand up again and look for who kicked him. When he saw that it was Naruto he threw his chain at Naruto. Naruto was able to block it with one of his swords but the chain wound up wrapping around the sword. You idiot now I'm going to break your little sword then I'm going to kill your girl free. The Chunin never got to finish his sentence before Naruto cut him off. Sanda Saburu, Thunder Saber. Naruto's sword was engulfed with lightning before he sent the lightning through the chain. Oh she, was all the Chunin got to say before Naruto light him up like a Christmas tree. The other Miss Chunin saw what happened to his partner and started charging at Ino and Tazuna. Naruto saw the Mist Nin coming after them but he didn't have enough chakra to stop him. But before the Mist Nin could get there he was hit in the back of the head by the blunt side of a sword. It was Hayate. Sorry for being late, Hayate said, I thought you died, Ino shouted while tears came down her face. No I used Kawarimi no Jutsu, change of body stance technique. He paused for a second before he spoke again. I'm sorry I should have helped sooner but I had to see who they were after. Anyway you guys did great for your first actual fight with other ninjas. He then looked over at Naruto and saw he had a gash on his hand. Oh shit Naruto you got cut by one of their claws we got to get you to a hospital soon. Why it's just a scratch, Naruto asked. Their claws had poison on them if we don't get rid of the poisoned blood you could die. He took a second to catch his breath. Tazuna you lied on your mission application and one of my ninjas are hurt. I'm sorry but we have to abandon this mission and go back to Konoha. No, Naruto shouted. Naruto what are you talking about you could die if you don't get treatment, Ino shouted while tears started coming down more fiercely than ever. It's alright Ino, Naruto said before taking his kunai and stabbing it into his hand so that all the poison would bleed out. I swear on the pain in my hand that I won't need anyone's help that ill become strong enough to protect the people I care about. I swear on this pain that ill never give up that ill never run away. That'll be my ninja way. I will not be a burden. Let's finish the mission. Tazuna just looked at the boy he thought was the weakest ninja ever. Holy shit does that boy have no fear. Shino just stared at someone he used to think was just a happy idiot. I don't know what drives you to push yourself so hard Naruto. I might not know what drives you but I do know you are one amazing bastard. Ino just stared at the boy she used to think was a loser and a dropout. Why do you keep protecting everyone? Why are you always getting hurt for others? Why do you spill your blood for me? All three of them were thrown out of their thoughts when Hayate spoke again. All right Naruto but wrap up your hand before you die of blood loss. Hi sensei, Naruto shouted, all right guys we better get moving but before we go I need to ask you something, he said while looking at Tizuna. Yes Hayate, Tizuna said nervously, why are ninjas after you I thought you only needed protection from bandits. Hayate demanded an answer. I'm gonna skip the whole explanation why Tizuna is being chased by Gato. The next day right outside of the wave country. Everyone was on edge since the demon brothers attacked them. So when Naruto threw a kunai at something everyone got startled. What the hell are you doing you idiot, Ino shouted. I thought I heard something, he answered. When Ino saw that it was a bunny she immediately started pummeling Naruto, what the hell are you doing it was just a rabbit. Stop trying to act cool. Hayate laughed at seeing Naruto get his ass kicked by Ino until he saw that it was a white bunny. Shit this is a snow rabbit but it's spring so that mean this creature was held captured and used for body switching. There's a powerful 20 ninja lurking nearby. Right then a huge ass sword came flinging at him. Everyone duck, 
everyone fell to the ground right away and the huge sword missed them and was implanted in a tree. He 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 I see that Hayate of the crescent moon is the one guarding Tazuna. Now I see why the demon brothers were no match for you. The man standing on the huge sword smirked. Oh if it isn't one of the seven swordsmen of the hidden mist Momochi Zabuza. I always wanted to show the world that I'm a better swordsman than them. Hayate replied in a dark threatening tone while he pulled his sword out of his sheath. Naruto wasn't going to let his sensei fight by himself so he charged right at Zabuza preparing to attack him but stopped when Hayate put his sword in his way to block him. Sensei. I'm sorry Naruto you are nowhere near ready to handle someone of this level. Stay back and don't worry about your sensei, Hayate smiled at Naruto. Yo Siki are you done babysitting or should I just leave and come back, the nuke nin said sarcastically. Hayate quickly jumped up in the air and did a jackknife movement in the air before slashing down on Zabuza. Zabuza was able to block it pretty easily but was still surprised by Hayate. Alright I'm ready now, let's start you massive eyebrow freak, Hayate screamed. Holy shit those things are bigger than Guy senseis I didn't think anyone could have bigger eyebrows than him, the blonde idiot said while pointing at Zabuza's eyebrows. Zabuza quickly turned around to the noisy leaf nin, shut the hell up you little bastard before I impale yo. He didn't get to finish his sentence because the sickly junin managed to hit the nuke nin in the face with his sword hilt. Maybe you should fight me instead of talking to one of my students. Alright Hayate let's start Karigakur no Jutsu, hidden mist technique, Zabuza shouted. Mist started to cover the whole area. No one could see in front of their faces. Hayate knew that Zabuza was a master of the silent kill. The sickly Junin let out a burst of chakra to blow away some of the mist so he could see his team. Listen protect Tazuna no matter what and don't make too much noise. Zabuza is a master of the silent kill. It looks like you've read my profile in the bingo book I'm very impressed, the crazy mist nin said while standing directly in front of Tazuna. He began to swing his sword to cut Tazuna in half with his kubikiri haucho, head cleaving sword. Once Hayate saw what was going on he sprinted full force at Zabuza with speed that no one knew Hayate possessed. He caught Zabuza of guard and stabbed him in the gut. That was quite amazing but I'm not that easily defeated, as he said this the Zabuza that Hayate stabbed turned into water. Oh shit it was just a Mizu Bunshin no Jutsu, water clone technique, Hayate cursed at himself for not seeing it before. Zabuza then reappeared above Hayate preparing to slice the leaf Junin in half. But before he could connect with his sword Hayate jumped out of the way and landed into a lake. Shit why can't I get out of the water it's so goddamn heavy. I thought I could use the water as cover but looks like I was wrong. Why was I so careless? Hayate cursed at himself again. Ha ha you idiot you just lost. Suro no jutsu, water prison technique, a prison of water surrounded Hayate. Shit I didn't expect him to be this good. Run get Tazuna away from here his Mizu Bunshins can't go far away from his body. Just run away it'll be fine. Hayate shouted at his team. Team 10 was shocked at what just occurred. But they listened to their sensei and were about to run away with Tazuna until they heard Naruto shout. No I can't do that. Ino screamed at him. Naruto what the hell are you thinking he's a Junin we don't stand a chance against him. Even Sasuke who was the best Genin in the leaf couldn't win against him. Naruto turned around and looked Ino directly in the eyes. Ino for the first time saw him with his mask pulled off. She finally saw what his blue eyes really looked like. She could see the pain in them but she also saw the fire in them too. The fire that would never let him run away. Holy shit that was the real Naruto. Why was there such pain in his eyes? Naruto saw Ino's reaction to him and quickly put his mask on again. Don't worry Ino it'll be fine I'm much stronger than Sasuke Tem anyway, Naruto smiled before turning his attention back to the nuke nin. Yo Fago I'm going to show you how to slay a demon. Heavenly body Raiden, lightning. Naruto quickly turned into a body of white lightning to the amazement of everyone there. Shino looked on at Naruto in amazement. Wow Naruto I always knew there was something special about you. Zabuza smirked at what he saw. Looks like this one is a bit different from the others. Ino's mouth dropped at the sight of Naruto. What is this? There is no way that the dumb, dead last, idiot Naruto I know could ever be this strong. Is this really Naruto? 
Yo sensei I can't control this technique perfectly yet so brace yourself for a bit of a shock. Rariu no Tatsumaki, lightning dragon tornado. Naruto shouted while a 30-foot dragon of lightning shot out at Zabuza. The dragon went right through the Mizu Bunshin of Zabuza. It didn't stop there though. It kept going to the real Zabuza that held Hayate captured. Shit I can't dodge I'm going to have to break my jutsu. I'm gonna kill that kid. Zabuza jumped out of the way releasing the jutsu that held Hayate. Kid you're ing dead. Zabuza charged at Naruto preparing to make his sword live up to his name of Kubikiri Haucho, head cleaving sword. But before he could reach Naruto Hayate kicked him in that back of the head. Your opponent is me you dumb shit. Hayate cursed at the mist nin. It's your turn to die die endin, great fireball. A giant fireball shot out of Hayate mouth. It came at Zabuza so fast he couldn't dodge all he could do was put his sword in front of him hoping it would take enough of the impact of getting hit by a fireball away so he could survive. He did survive but barely as he was thrown against a tree trunk. Prepare to die Zabuza. Hayate prepared to deliver the final blow with his sword. But before he could deal the blow to Zabuza he got hit by three Sinban right in the neck. Thank you for fighting him you saved me a bunch of trouble. A hunter nin from the hidden mist said. I must thank you also. You saved us a lot of grief. Another hunter nin th it was behind the first one said. Hayate checked Zabuza pulse to make sure he died. He's dead all right. No problem. The hunter nins took Zabuza body away and left team 10 to talk about what happened. Naruto what happened to you? Why did your body turn into white lightning? Ino asked. Yes Naruto what happened I'm also curious. Shino also asked. Well, he didn't get a chance to explain because Hayate passed out from exhaustion. Shit we got to get him to Tazuna house. He'll explain what happened once we get there. Naruto picked up his sensei. You better Naruto. Ino threatened. I will I will just don't kill men. Naruto said while shaking at the thought of what Ino would do to him if he didn't tell her. Tazuna just looked at Naruto with amazement. What the hell is this kid he stood up to Zabuza by himself? He didn't even show any fear at all. I was wrong about this crazy blonde idiot. He is an amazing ninja. Tazuna was shaken out of his thoughts when Naruto asked him where his house was. Yo old man where's your house? Tazuna just shook his head to think straight again. Oh yay just follow me. As they made their way to Tazuna's house Ino just stared at Naruto. I'm finally going to find out a little bit about who you are. Ino did you see his eyes today? Shino asked shaking Ino out of her thoughts. Yay they were so different. Ino exclaimed. I know. It was like we got a glimpse at what makes him tick. Shino said. Makes him tick. What do you mean? Ino asked. When I looked into his eyes I saw that he was battling something inside himself. But I also saw that he was hurting a lot because of it but he never gave up. By looking into his eyes I think I found out what makes him want to protect everyone so fiercely. Shino paused for a second to catch his breath. He wants to make sure whatever happened to him never happens to anyone else. I also fear that he think it's his responsibility to deal with so much pain so that no one else has to. Ino started to cry hoping that Shino was wrong and he was just overthinking it. She didn't know why but she didn't want to see Naruto hurt at all. Why do I care about who the real Naruto is? Why do I care? Why do I care so much if he gets hurt? It's not like we're really friends. I used to hate him. Then why do I care about him? Why is it when he smiles I smile? What is it about Uzumaki Naruto that makes me feel like this? Everyone was sitting at the table still on edge because of what happened the day before. Hayate just woke up 10 minutes before and wanted to talk to his team. But before he could open his mouth Ino asked a question that was on everyone's mind. Naruto I think it's time you told us what happened to you yesterday. I mean your body turned into lightning I think we deserve an explanation. Ino demanded more than ask Naruto for an answer. Yes I agree with her I'm your sensei Naruto and I have no idea what you did. I honestly never seen anything like it. Hayate spoke up. Shino do you wish to know too? Naruto asked his silent friend. Yes Naruto I would like to know too. Shino replied. Okay well the day I graduated from the academy I awoke my bloodline limit. Naruto started saying but was cut off by his teammates scream. You have a bloodline limit. 
All three screamed in surprise even the quiet Shino screamed. Yea I know what a shock it shocked me to at first. Naruto waited a couple of seconds to let his team shake themselves out of their stupor before he continued. The Hokage told me that I have the bloodline limit that's called the heavenly bodies. He said I must be a relative of a clan from the country of the whirlpool that has supposedly been extinct for 50 years. Wow, was all Ino could say. Naruto exactly what does your bloodline do? Hayate asked his student. Well all I know is that I can form up to four elemental bodies if I prove myself. Naruto answered his sick sensei. What do you mean you have to prove yourself to use your bloodline? It was Shino this time that asked the question. From what old Manjiji told me is that I have to earn each body. He said that each body has a mind of its own and that it only lets those who prove themselves worthy of it to use it. Naruto said while trying to remembering everything the old man told him about his bloodline. So you proved yourself to one of those bodies so far? Hayate asked his blonde-haired companion. Yes, the blonde-haired blue-eyed Genin answered. How did you prove yourself worthy? Ino managed to ask after finally waking up from her stupor of finding out Naruto had a bloodline. I wanted to protect someone that is important to me with all my being and then all of a sudden my body turned into lightning and gave me the power to protect him. The blonde-haired idiot told his team. Naruto do you know what elements your bodies will be made up of? The sickly Junin asked. No the only thing I know is what I just told you. The young Jinchuriki answered. I see, Hayate replied. Naruto why did you have to protect someone? Because as far as I know this is the first time any of us has actually had to fight another ninja beside Hayate, the stoic Shino asked. I don't want to talk about it. Naruto said this while thinking of that fateful night when he found out he was the container of the demon fox Kyuubi. Naruto why don't you want to talk abo? Ino was cut off by Hayate. Ino don't. Ino I am sure Naruto will tell you guys when he's ready. It's just a difficult thing for him to talk about. All right sensei. Ino replied. She didn't show it but she was worried about the blonde haired idiot. All right Naruto if you're done explaining there's something I need to talk to you guys about. The sick Junin said trying to change subjects. Yay I'm done. Naruo fake smiled. No one caught it but Shino. Why does he always do that? I can tell that smile was fake. He always smiles like that. Why does a kid who always acts happy have a sad smile like that? Shino was taken out of his thoughts when Hayate started to talk again. All right guys I think we need to get some training done before Zabuza comes back. What do you mean before Zabuza comes back? Didn't those missed hunter nins kill him? The female blonde Genin asked. No. Hunter nins are supposed to dispose the bodies right on site not take them away and the weapon that Mist Nin used could easily put someone in a near death state. Hayate explained. Shit what are we going to do that could attack anytime and you haven't fully recovered yet, Ino started to panic. Calm down Ino it's alright. Zabuza won't be healthy again for about a week. I should be fully healed by then. I am sorry but Zabuza a Junin. How's training for a week going to help us be a match against him? Naruto asked, I don't expect you to fight Zabuza leave that up to me, but I will need you to help me out with those two fake hunter nins. The sick Junin reasoned with his team. Alright so what are we doing for training? The unusually calm Naruto asked. Well I'm glad you asked. Hayate had an evil smile on when he said this. Fifteen minutes later, your training is climbing up a tree with no hands, he demonstrated by walking up a tree. You have to make sure you put a certain amount of chakra into your feet to make you stick. He then threw three kanais at them. Use those to mark your progress. All three started running up the tree. Naruto got about five steps up the tree before eating it. Shino got about one fourth up the tree. Ino did the best and got halfway up the tree. Ha ha you idiot looks like I'm better than you and if I'm better than you that means Sasuke is way stronger than you. Ino laughed at Naruto. Shut Eno I am way better than emo god Sasuke. Naruto shouted back at his blonde haired teammate. Eno took an acorn of the tree and nailed Naruto right in the face. Shut up you dumb ass. Don't make fun of my Sasuke. Um your Sasuke. I don't think Sasuke's a possession. Shino jumped into the conversation. Shut up Shino. Eno glared at the bug user before jumping off the tree. Naruto moved closer to Shino so he could whisper something into his ear. 
Damn say anything bad about Sasuke and she becomes Terminator Ino. Shino couldn't help but laugh at what Naruto said. Ino heard them laughing and gave both of the a glare that would put a certain snake bastard to shame. Shut up you guys and start training, Hayate yelled at his team. Hi sensei, they all quickly answered. I knew it, Ino has the best chakra control out of them all. But I need to work on her chakra capacity. Shino pretty balanced, he has good chakra control and a good amount of chakra. Now Naruto his chakra control is just plain horrible but he has more chakra than I do. If I can just get his chakra control decent he could become a chunin level ninja in no time. But I still need to do a shitload of chakra control before that. Hayate contemplated about his student's performance so far. Nightfall 4 hours later, Ino finished the tree climbing exercise about an hour before. Shino had just finished it and Naruto was about halfway up. All right guys that's enough training for today. Tomorrow I'll be teaching Shino and Ino new technique each. Naruto I have a technique for you too but you have to finish the tree climbing tomorrow first before I teach it to you. Okay, was all Naruto could say. Hayate, Ino, and Shino started walking to Tazuna's house before they realized that they were short one hyperactive blonde. Hayate turned around and saw Naruto still training, hey Naruto we're done for today. You can stop training. Hayate I'm going to train for a little longer it'll be done in a little bit. Naruto shouted so Hayate could hear him. All right but don't train for too much longer. Hayate allowed. Sensei why are you letting Naruto train more he could seriously hurt himself. Ino was worried about Naruto but she would never admit it. Not even to herself. Because there's no stopping him anyways, Hayate gave Ino a simple answer. Ino just shook her head before turning around and looking at her blonde haired blue eyes teammate. Why are you pushing yourself so hard? Two hours later, Naruto finally came back just before dinner was ready. Let's just say this pissed of Ino. You idiot you said you were only going to train for a little bit more. That was two hours ago. Sorry, Naruto breathed heavily because of the training. After Ino yelled at Naruto for a little bit more everyone sat down at the table. After a little while Naruto saw a picture of Tazuna's grandson and someone else but that side of the picture was ripped off. Who's this with Inari? Tazuna replied, well I'm skipping the story about Inari's dad you guys knows what happens anyways. 15 minutes later at dinner, everyone was still sad about Inari's dad's story, so everyone eat in silence. Naruto just put his head down from being so tired from training. Inari saw how tired Naruto looked from training so hard decided to let his felling outs. You idiot you're going to die. There's no way you can beat Gato no matter how hard you try. Inari started to cry in the middle of his outburst. I am not like you. So I won't die. Naruto said but didn't lift his head up. Inari started crying even more fiercely. Of course you're not like me. I see you smile and laughing all the time. You have no idea how tough and sad life can be. After hearing that Naruto lost it and punched the table, shut up I definitely know how tough and sad life can be better than you'll ever know. But I'm not like you I'm not going to sit around crying all day. I'm going to get up and fight for a better life crybaby. Naruto stopped. Ino screamed at her teammate. I'm going out. Naruto walked out of the house. Once the door closed Shino asked Hayate a question nobody was expecting. Sensei what did Naruto mean he knows how sad life can be. Hearing Shino say that got everyone's attention especially Ino's. Hayate sighed. Well Naruto's had to deal with a lot of crap in his life. Put I really don't think it's my place to tell you guys this stuff. Sensei he's our friend we deserve to know, Shino said. I won't tell you everything that Naruto's gone through but I will tell you that he's never had a family, Hayate said while having a sad look in his eyes. I know he was an orphan didn't anyone adopt him? Ino asked not really knowing if she wanted her sensei to answer it or not. No no one ever adopted him. He was kicked out of the orphanage at the age of five and had to live on his own and take care of himself since then. He didn't have anyone who cared about him until recently. The worst part is that isn't anywhere near the worst things that has happened to that young man, Hayate answered Ino. That can't be, that horrible, Ino started crying. After comforting Ino for a little bit Hayate turned his attention to Inari, 
Now Inari I'm sorry for what Naruto said but that's probably what he's told himself countless times. For as long as I've known Naruto I've never seen him wallow in self-pity. He always fighting for people's acceptance of him never giving up. After hearing everything about Naruto Inari started looking at his life differently. How could he have had it so rough? I mean he always seems so happy all the time. It's just a mask he puts on to hide his true feelings. He does it so that we don't worry about him. It was a crying Ino who answered Inari. After Ino said that Inari ran upstairs to think about everything he heard about the blonde leaf nin. Shortly after Inari went upstairs Shino decided to go look for Naruto. But before he could go after him Hayate stopped him. Hayate why are you stopping me? Because he needs to be alone right now. He just needs some time to himself. Also I don't want you telling Naruto about this conversation. Hayate coolly explained. Why sensei? The bug user asked. Naruto doesn't let people know his feelings or what going on with him for a reason. He does this partly because he doesn't want his friends and the people he cares about worry about him. The other reason he hides his emotions is that he feels if he does let his true emotions out someone might get hurt because of it. The sick Junin explained. Sensei what is it you're not telling us about Naruto? Ino managed to stop crying to ask her sensei this question. Nothing Ino. Hayate lied. God damn it Naruto why are you always hiding things from us? Ino yelled to herself. Because he's scared you'll leave him. Hayate whispered to himself. What was that sensei? Shino asked thing hour heard him say something. Nothing. Hayate replied. Eight hours later in the forest. Naruto decided to train some more after getting into a fight with Inari. He was finally able to finish tree climbing a few hours before. He wound up passing out from exhaustion before he could make it back to Tazuna's house. A girl about a year older than Naruto picking herbs saw him passed out and decided to check to make sure he was okay. Naruto's head popped up right when the girl touched him. Scaring her. Oh I am sorry my name's Naruto what's yours? The cute girl answered. My name's Haku. That's a nice name. So what you doing in the woods? Naruto smiled. Haku smiled. I was picking herbs. She then saw his headband and asked, So are you a ninja? Yep. The blonde haired Jenin simply replied, Wow, you're incredible. So why are you training out here? Haku asked, Because I want to be stronger. Naruto smiled again. Hum, so do you have someone important to you? The girl asked, Huh, what do you mean? Naruto got confused by what the girl said. Well when someone has something important to protect that is when they can become truly strong, Haku explained. Naruto took a second to think about everyone he cared about before answering, I know what you mean pretty well. He then changed topics, you know you're really pretty, Haku's actually a girl in this story. She blushed slightly before getting up and leaving, thanks, she paused for a second and looked directly into Naruto's eyes before saying, you will become strong hopefully we can meet again. Hopefully. Naruto told himself before passing out again. Three hours later, Ino, Hayate, and Shino went to the area they trained before to learn some new techniques when they found Naruto sleeping next to a tree with a shitload of kanai marks that went all the way up to the top. Holy shit he got to the top, Ino shouted in surprise. Ino shouting wound up waking Naruto up, hey guys was up. As soon as he closed his mouth Ino punched him in the back of the, Baka we were worried about you why didn't you come back to Tazuna's last night. OWW oh, I'm sorry I kind of just got caught up in training and wound up passing out, Naruto rubbed the back of his head. Baka. Ino shouted at him. Why is she so upset? So sensei what new techniques you going to teach us? Naruto asked his sick sensei. He's doesn't understand girls at all. Well I guess that's just Naruto being Naruto, well actually I am teaching you each a different jutsu. Hayate explained to his student. Cool. Naruto shouted. Ino wound up punching him again. Stop shouting you baka. While Ino managed to call Naruto a baka three times in one minute. That's got to be a record. The quiet bug user thought. Hayate just shook his head at the antics of the two blonde genin before he started speaking again. All right, Ino, I'm going to show yours first. Hayate started doing hand seals and flower petals surrounded Ino, and Hayate looked like he was flowing in the portal of flowers, confusing Ino, 
This jutsu is a genjutsu called Hayakaryorin, many flowers in bloom, you can use this to confuse your enemy and attack from different angles. It should be a very useful jutsu for you, after showing Ino the necessary hand seals he went on to Shino. After moving away from Ino Hayate started doing hand seals, this technique allows the ninja to control nearby stone and rock. When the ninja forms the needed hand seals and slams their palm to the ground, surrounding rock will begin to churn and twist up crushing all those trapped within it. It called Ritsudo Tenshao, revolving split earth palm. Shino moved to a different area and began training to learn Ritsudo Tenshao, revolving split earth palm. After he made sure Shino was squared away he turned his attention to Naruto. He then threw a scroll at Naruto. Guy told me to give you this if you had time to train on this mission. I can't really help you with those techniques so you're on your own. Sorry. Don't worry about it. Naruto opened the scroll. It had the technique Konoha Dai Senpu, Leaf Great Whirlwind, this technique is like a normal Senpu it just that you need to create more force when you do the roundhouse kick. Konoha Cage Buyu, Leaf Shadow Dance is a taijutsu technique that is used to position a ninja's opponent into a vulnerable aerial position. The ninja will first quickly appear below their opponent, then with a switch upper kick they will launch their target into the air. The ninja will then jump into the air to shadow the target with the target's back to their chest. After finishing reading the scroll Naruto formed two cage bushes and went to work. Hayate woke Ino and Shino up at the crack of dawn because they had to guard Tazuna today. You're probably wondering why Hayate only woke up Shino and Ino and not our favorite blonde Naruto. Well Hayate tried to wake him up but Naruto was out cold. He was exhausted from overtraining. While they were leaving Hayate looked at Tsunami and waved, see ye later. Tsunami saw that they were one blonde short and asked, what about Naruto? The sick Junin just shrugged and replied, he's been training himself to hard lately so he needs his sleep. He should be out most of the day. The woman answered, okay. Twenty minutes later at the bridge. As Tazuna and Team Ten made their way on to the bridge they all got a tingle down the back of their necks telling them something's not right. Once they reached the center of the bridge they saw on of Tazuna workers badly beaten. They all rushed to him. Ino took the mon's head and placed it on her lap. When the worker saw Tazuna he used all the strength in his body to say, he's a demon. He's a monster swordsman. Right when the worker said this everyone thought the same thing but Ino was the only one to say it, oh shit Zabuza. Come on you don't have to say my name with such venom in your voice, Zabuza appeared in front of them. He wasn't alone either he brought the two phony mist hunter nins with him too. Zabuza then glared straight at Hayate, these two are here to keep your friends out of our fight. The mist nin then realized that the blonde who annoyed the shit out of him wasn't here. Damn I really wanted to kill that brat. Hayate just stared into the swordsman eyes before speaking up. I think you should be a little more worried. Zabuza sneered at that remark, why should I be worried when I have my pals over there to help me? The sick Junin chuckled, I think you're underestimating my team. Ino over there has the potential to surpass Yuahi Kuranai the Genjutsu mistress of Konoha, he then looked over at his sunglass wearing student. Shino is a genius who will be able to surpass everyone in his clan, he paused for a second and thought about Naruto, and then there's Naruto the show off, hyperactive, number one loudest ninja ever and the most surprising. The mist swordsman just shrugged, yea sure whatever, he then looked over to his comrades, Shinji Yo take the boy in the glasses Haku you take the girl with the blonde hair. They both answered their master right away, Haizabuza sensei, then they all shunshin no jutsu, body flicker technique, in front of their enemies. Zabuza smirked before drawing his sword out, let's begin Hayate. Hayate then unsheathed his sword, let's. Back at Tazuna's house. I'm skipping the samurai scene with Inari, Naruto woke up from his sleep finding that no one was there. Damn it I got left behind. I'm so gonna get Hayate sensei back for this. While Naruto was thinking of ideas for his revenge against Hayate he looked outside his window and saw Inari charging to samurai that had his mom. Oh shit. Inari was just about to get sliced and diced by the samurai. He saw it coming and closed his eyes preparing for pain. But it never came. When he opened his eyes he saw Naruto with his black and red sword blocking the two samurai's swords. Naruto looked down at Inari, hey Inari nice going but I got it from here. The two samurai backed up and prepared to charge. 
Don't take a slight L. He never finished his sentence because two cage bushins of Naruto appeared behind the samurai and gave both of the a roundhouse kick straight to the face. After tying the samurai up Naruto walked over to Inari, nice job Inari. Inari looked up at the blonde haired genin holding back his tears, I was so scared they were going to hurt your mom. Naruto looked directly into his little friend's eyes, I know and I'm proud of you. Inari looked shocked, you're proud of me. Naruto gave him a real smile, yea I'm proud of you. You were scared but that didn't stop you from trying to rescue your mom. He paused a second the started talking again, Inari your dad would be proud also. You were one strong kid. Inari started crying, crap I told myself I wouldn't cry anymore. Naruto put his hands behind his head and said, it alright to cry when you're happy, he then realized he had to get to the bridge where the rest of his team was. I got to go I'll see you when I get back. Inari just smiled. All right Naruto. The little boy then looked up to the sky. Dad you're not the only hero I know, anymore. Back at the bridge Shinji versus Shino. Okay little leaf nin let's begin, Shinji got into a battle stance. If you guys are wondering Shinji looks like a miniature Zabuza without the huge ass sword. He also has red hair. Shino just nodded and got into his stance. The bug user was eyeing up Shinji trying to figure out how strong he was. Shinji saw Shino sizing him up and decided to attack trying to catch Shino off guard. Mizoropa, violent water wave, a strong jet of water shot out of Shinji mouth at Shino. Shino saw the jutsu coming at him and knew he couldn't dodge so he started doing hand seals as quickly as he could. Just before the jet of water hit him he called out. Mushi cave no jutsu, insect wall technique, insects shot out of Shino hand creating a vortex that blocked the water. Shinji saw his just su blocked. As the bugs went back into Shino's arm Shinji chuckled slightly. He's an insect user this is going to be interesting. Shino just stared at his opponent. This guy's good and he's a water jutsu user. This is not going to be fun. Shino was shaken out of his thoughts when Shinji started to hand seals again. Shinji shouted. Taihouden, large projectile, a large ball of water shot out at Shino. This time Shino didn't have time to do anything. Shino was engulfed by the ball of water. The Zabuza look-alike was surprised when he saw nothing but a bunch of bugs shaped like a body falling apart when the jutsu died down. Shit that must have been a Mushi Bunshin no jutsu insect clone technique. Shino then appeared behind Shinji and tried to stab him in the neck with a kanai. He was a bit too slow though and Shinji was able to duck under the kanai and kick Shino in the gut. Nice try bug boy. Shinji laughed evilly while staring at the bug user. All of a sudden Shino turned into a pile of bugs. Shinji's eyes showed his fear. I didn't try. Shino said behind Shinji. The sunglass wearing leaf nin started doing hand seals. Ritsudo Tenshao, revolving split earth palm, Shino slammed his palm to the ground and the rock near Shinji broke apart and caught Shinji in the earth. Then all for a sudden the rock clamped down on Shinji crushing him to death. Shino was about to go help Ino with her fight but before he could get to her he felt an awful chakra presence. Holy shit what is this chakra and who does it belong to? 20 minutes earlier Ino versus Haku. Haku appeared in front of Ino and got straight into her battle stance. Ino did the same. Haku decided to be the aggressor and charged at Ino. Haku tried to punch Ino in the face but the blonde genin was able to move her head out of the way just in time. But Haku was much faster than Ino and caught her off guard with a roundhouse kick to the face. Ino flew back a good couple of feet. Ino rubbed her cheek where she got kicked. Damn that hurt. The blonde leaf nin got up and started doing hand seals. Hayakaryorn, many flowers in bloom, flower petals started swirling around Haku. Ino was about to sneak up behind Haku and stab her but before she got the chance Haku started doing hand seals. Haku shouted. Sensatsu Susho, death by a thousand flying water needles, a thousand water needles shot out in all directions. Haku got lucky and one of the needles hit Ino's leg causing her to dispel the genjutsu. Before Ino could regroup herself Haku started doing hand seals again. Maku Hayusho, demonic ice crystal mirrors, a bunch of ice mirrors surrounded Ino. All Ino could think of was oh shit. Hayate vs Zabuza. Hayate glanced over to where Shino was fighting and saw that he was winning. He then glanced over at Ino and saw Haku's ice mirrors. 
Shit that girl has a bloodline limit doesn't she Zabuza? Hayate shouted at Zabuza with venom in his voice. Ha ha yes Haku's a special little weapon. She has the bloodline limit to control ice. Zabuza disappeared after saying that. But I think you should focus on our fight not theirs, Zabuza reapered behind Hayate. Hayate quickly turned around and slashed Zabuza in half. It wasn't Zabuza though, I turned out to be a Mizu Bushin water clone. The real Zabuza was a few feet in front of Hayate. Zabuza started doing hand seals and shouted, Swiryuden no Jutsu, water dragon projectile technique, a large water dragon shot out at Hayate. Hayate couldn't dodge and it looked like he was swallowed by the water dragon. Zabuza thought he killed Hayate but that was mistaken. He heard a poof and realized it was just a cage bushin. Hayate reappeared behind Zabuza and started doing hand seals of his own. Enden Fireball and Gukaku no Jutsu, Great Fireball Technique. Hayate first shot out a fireball at Zabuza and the he breathed out a steam of fire which was shaped like another fireball. Zabuza was able to dodge the Enden Fireball, but he wasn't able to fully dodge the Gukaku no Jutsu, Great Fireball Technique. He got his leg caught in the stream of fire. With a hobbled Zabuza Hayate started forming hand seals again. Cage Bunshin no Jutsu, Shadow Clone Technique. One cage Bushin of Hayate popped out. The cage Bushin grabbed the injured Zabuza from behind to held him so that he couldn't escape. Hayate was preparing to deliver Zabuza the final blow. All of a sudden though both Zabuza and Hayate felt an awful chakra presence. They both thought the same thing oh shit whose chakra is that? Ten minutes earlier Eno versus Haku, I'm sorry I don't want to kill you but I have to do this for Zabuza-sama. Haku was in awe of the ice mirrors and lifted her head out so that she could throw a Sanban needle at the blonde Kunochi. Before she could throw the needle at Eno she was hit in the face with a shuriken. She fell out of the mirror and cracked her mask. Eno didn't know what happened until she felt someone touch her shoulder. When she turned around she realized that it was Naruto. Eno told Naruto, be careful she's strong. Naruto looked at Eno and smiled. Don't worry Eno the great Uzumaki Naruto has arrived. Eno just shook her head at her blonde teammate. Damn he's acting like an idiot in a situation like this. I hope his stupidity doesn't get him hurt. Eno didn't realize it but she was more worried about Naruto than herself. Haku got back up into one of her mirrors and looked at Naruto. If she didn't have her mask on you could have seen her smiling. Now Naruto show me how strong you were when you're protecting someone precious to you. Naruto got into his battle stance and shouted, Cage Bunshin no Jutsu, Shadow Clone Technique, 20 Naruto's popped out. They all charge at a different mirror each and shouted, Konoha Senpu, Leaf Whirlwind, he hadn't mastered the Konoha Dai Senpu, Leaf Great Whirlwind, so he had to rely on it baby brother. All 20 Naruto hit the mirrors with a strong roundhouse kick but it didn't even crack the mirrors. Haku then threw a Sanban needle at each clone dispersing them. Haku then shouted at Naruto, that's not good enough to destroy my mirrors. Naruto shouted back, alright let's try this heavenly body Raiden lightning. Naruto body turned into white lightning again. He then started doing hand seals. Tornado Raidoningu, Tornado Lightning, a large tornado made of lightning shot out at the ice mirrors. It hit the mirrors full force but still didn't do anything. Haku threw a Sanban needle that hit Naruto right in the leg. That was good but still not good enough. Naruto stumbled a little bit. Should I have to protect Ino? Let's think all I have been doing is attacking the mirrors. Let's see what happens if I attack the one Haku's in. Naruto then pulled out both of his blades and shouted. Sanda Saburu, Thunder Saber, his swords became engulfed with lightning. He then charged at the mirror with Haku in it but right when he slashed down on the mirror Haku jumped to another mirror with speed that would match Hayate. After realizing he missed he jumped backward to gain some distance between him and Haku. Haku shook her head at Naruto, is this all the strength you have Naruto? If so I'm sorry but I'm gonna have to end this. Nato pointed his finger at her and shouted. I'm not going to let you hurt anyone else. I still have a few tricks left up my sleeves that can kick your ass. He started doing hand seals, Raryu no Tatsumaki, Lightning Dragon Tornado. A large lightning dragon tornado shot out at the mirrors. The jutsu was so strong that it cracked most of the mirrors. Haku was surprised by the force of the jutsu. Shit he damaged my mirrors. I don't have much chakra left. 
I got to end this quick. I'm sorry Naruto but I have to end this now. I also have someone precious to me to protect. Sensatsu Susho, death by a thousand flying water needles, a thousand water needles shot out at Ino not Naruto. Naruto realized what was happening and ran to try and protect Ino. He got in front of Ino just in time and prepared to take the full force of Haku's jutsu. Just before the needles reached him he felt something inside of him awake. Shit what's this feeling? It's the same feeling I got before I awoke my bloodline. But this feeling a little different. When the needles hit him it didn't hurt at all. He opened his eyes and realized that his body was made of black ice. Haku looked at Naruto with utter shock. After that Naruto looked behind him to make sure Ino was okay. What he saw was something Thar tore at his heart. He didn't block all the needles a couple of the wound up stabbing into Ino's legs and side. Ino was alright but she passed from the pain. Naruto knew she was still breathing but seeing Ino hurt like that made Naruto pissed. His rage consumed him. The black ice broke off his body and replacing it was a red demonic chakra. The angry leaf Nin turned his head around and glared at Haku. You bastard I'll kill you. Naruto shot out at Haku that would have impressed Guy. He punched a ice mirror shattering it. Haku tried to jump into another mirror but Naruto caught her foot and threw her a good 20 feet. Haku slowly stood up. Holy shit where did all this strength come from? The rouge mist Nin saw Naruto charging at her again. She knew she couldn't dodge so she accepted her fate and just stood there. I'm sorry Zabuza this boy is stronger than me. I'm sorry I can't be your weapon anymore. Naruto was about to kill Haku until her mask broke apart and fell of revealing her face. Naruto stopped inches away from her face. Haku was shocked. Why did you stop I hurt one of your precious people? Naruto was also shocked. You're that nice girl that was grabbing herbs. He shook his head trying to understand. Why is a nice person like you a weapon for Zabuza? I know you don't like to kill but you do it anyway just for a man like Zabuza wishes it. Why? Haku looked at Naruto with great sadness in her eyes, because I'm skipping Haku's past you guys already know it anyways. She let a tear escape, you see Zabuza was the only person who ever care about me. I wanted to help him achieve his dreams. That was my dream, it looks like my dreams are dead though. I can't help Zabuza anymore so I ask that you kill me. Naruto shook his head, I can't kill you. You're not a bad person. Haku looked directly into Naruto's eyes, I can tell by the look in your eyes that you've had a pass like mine. I know you understand my feelings. You know what you must do. Naruto spoke with deep sadness in his voice, yes I know. He then charged at Haku with the intent to kill her. Haku accepted her death awaited for the final blow to come. But in the corner of her eye she saw that Zabuza was in trouble, I'm sorry Naruto there's one last thing I must do. Haku then disappeared right before Naruto could hit her. Two minutes earlier Hayate vs. Zabuza. Hate got worried when he realized who the chakra was coming from. Shit I've felt this chakra before. It's the Nine Tails Fox Chakra. Shit the seal must have broken. The sick Junin was about to run over to where Naruto was until he felt the awful chakra die down. Oh thank god the seal didn't break. It must have weakened a little bit. He then turned his attention back to Zabuza. I can't let you live any longer. Your dream is too big and has harmed innocent people. I'm sorry but you must die. I'll kill you with one of my strongest jutsu to honor your strength. Hayate the began to form hand seals again, Karyu and an fire dragon flame projectile. A huge fire dragon shot out of Hayate mouth. The dragon was about to engulf Zabuza but before it could someone jumped in front of it saving the mist swordsman. When the jutsu died down you could see who jumped in the way. All you could see was a burnt lifeless Haku. Zabuza smiled. Thanks Haku that was a good way for a weapon to die. Naruto ran over to where Zabuza was and punched him square in the face. Haku cared about you so much and all you think of her was that she was a good weapon. She hated killing but she did it anyway for your sake. For your dreams. Did you even care about her at all? After hearing Naruto heartfelt plea something in Zabuza changed. Zabuza started to cry, you don't need to say anything else. I do care about Haku. I see now how much pain I caused her. He then looked up at the sky, I'm truly sorry Haku. All of a sudden someone started clapping. It was Gato with a 100 bandits behind him. That was truly touching. 
It looks like all you guys are worn out. It looks like I can kill all of you now and save the money I was going to pay you Zabuza. Zabuza turned back into the demon of the hidden mist after hearing this, Hayate let me go I'm not your enemy anymore. Please let me go so I can kill that man. Hayate nodded and made his cage bush and disappeared. When Zabuza was let go he became a madman and charged straight into the group of bandits. When Zabuza was finally taken down he had killed 50 bandits and Gato. The rest of the bandits were about to attack Team 10 until a whole army of people from the wave led by Inari came. When the bandits saw the town's people they all ran for it. Hayate grabbed Zabuza's body and placed him right next to Haku. Zabuza then looked up at Naruto, thank you boy. Now I can die and meet Haku once again in a better place. With that said the demon of the hidden mist died. A week later, Team 10 injuries has all healed and Tazuna finally finished building the bridge. With their mission done Team 10 was saying goodbye before they left to go home. Tazuna spoke in a proud voice to all of Team 10 inches I'm very proud that I got to meet you guys. You guys saved this town and taught me to never underestimate a ninja from Konoha ever again. I am forever grateful to you for. Naruto scratched the back of his head, thanks it was great to meet all of you. Especially you Inari. Inari was trying to hold back his tears, I'm not going to cry. Naruto looked at his little friend, it's alright to cry sometimes. Inari then looked at the boy he considered a hero, you can cry to Naruto. Naruto turned around real quick so that no one could see him cry. Goodbye everyone. Ino just shook her head at the blonde genin. He's such an idiot. Ino then heard something that made her pissed. Naruto shouted, Come on let's hurry up home so I can kick Sasuke Tem ass. Ino grabbed Naruto and threw him off the bridge, Don't you even dare touch my Sasuke. The group back at Wave just laughed at the blondes until Inari asked, So grandpa what are you going to name the bridge? Tazuna thought for a second before answering, Let's name it the Great Naruto Bridge in hope that this bridge may never be le just like that young boy's will. Maybe one day it will be named after the Hokage of Konoha. Tsunami chuckled. Yay I think that's a good name. A tired Team 10 walked into the Hokage's office to talk about their mission report. The old man read the report and was surprised with everything that happened. He looked at Hayate and asked Hayate in a serious tone, so a C rank mission wound up becoming an a rank and you guys actually completed it. Sarutobi placed his hand on his chin, it seems to me that you guys deserve a reward for your achievement. Naruto looked at the Hokage with bug eyes, what the reward going to be are you going to give us coupons for free meals at Ichiraku Ramen? Now that would be a great reward. Ino gagged, Iuhu would want coupons for ramen. A real reward would be a date with Sasuke. It was Naruto's turn to gag this time. When Ino heard Naruto gag she got really pissed and punched him on the back of his head. Shut up Sasuke is amazing and you're just a baka. The old Hokage smiled. He was glad to see that Naruto liked his team. He then got back to his original train of thought. No it's not ramen or a date with Sasuke. Ino and Naruto both grunted. The old man couldn't help but laugh. Once Sarutobi was done laughing he got serious again. I've decided to give you guys two jutsus each. The justus will be different from one another's. All three went into a state of shock. They managed to ask the same thing at the same time, really. Sarutobi just smiled again, yes really, he then reached for a scroll and pointed at Shino to come forward. In Hayate's mission report it stated that he taught you a dodenjutsu, earth, is that correct? The bug user just shook his head up and down. Alright good, the Hokage then threw the scroll he brought out at Shino. This scroll contains Doryu Heki, earth style wall, a jutsu which creates a strong defensive wall of rock to protect you it can withstand some strong ninjutsu. This scroll also contains Shinju Zanshu no jutsu, double suicide decapitation technique, this jutsu allows you to travel underground and sneak up on your enemy and pull them down into the mud with only their head hanging out. Shino looked at his skull with awe, thank you so much Hokage-sama. The old man just nodded and then pointed at Ino to come towards him. Hayate told me you are gifted at genjutsu and have excellent chakra controli. The old man reached under his desk and pulled out another scroll. He then tossed it at her. In this scroll is a genjutsu called Kasumi Jusha no Jutsu, Mist Servant Technique, that creates false attackers to delay and confuse the enemy. 
Though these servants are not real, the actual ninja is able to remain hidden and throw kanai and shuriken matching the movements of the servants. This makes it appear the false servants are capable of attacking. When the enemy attempts to attack the servant, they will merely disrupt the servant's illusion body but not destroy it. He took a second to catch his breath. I also believe with your great chakra control you will be a perfect Sweden water jutsu user. So I am also giving you the Debakufu no jutsu grand waterfall technique. It is a just su it will form a column of water that will circle the ninja and then a large force of water will erupt to hit the attacker. Due to the force of the water the target will be fully enveloped by the water and at its mercy as it pulls them away. Ino shouted in joy, hell yeah watch out Sakura, Sasuke's mine. Hayate just shook his head at his student. She's too obsessed with Sasuke to even realize she likes someone else. Naruto shook his head also. Why does everyone love that stuck up brat Sasuke but they hate me? I just don't get it. Sarutobi knew what Naruto was thinking and decided to cheer him up by giving him his reward. Naruto it's your turn now. Naruto quickly put his mask back on and ran up to the old man, so Gigi what jutsu am I going to get? The old man slightly chuckled seeing Naruto get so exited. From what Hayate told me it seems you awoken your second elemental body. What did your body turn into this time? Naruto took a second to think before he answered, my body turned into black ice. Sarutobi placed his hand on his chin, hum interesting. That mean you should be able to use Hayaten ice jutsu then. The Hokage quickly got up and disappeared for a few minutes. When he returned he was carrying a very old scroll. He then gave it to Naruto. I had to dig a little bit to find some Hayaten ice jutsus. In this scroll Naruto there are two techniques. The first one is Haru Muko, destruction dragon fierce tiger, creates an ice tiger that will rise from the ice to strike out against its target. Its cold nature can freeze any nearby water, and its large mass can cause a large amount of damage when it impacts. Naruto just stared at the Hokage dumbfounded, damn that sounds strong. The Hokage started talking again, it is Naruto but it is very difficult to learn. The next technique will be even harder to learn. The second jutsu is the Kokuryu Bufusetsu, Black Dragon Blizzard, you will thrust your arm to send out a black ether-like dragon to strike your opponent. As it flies through the air it will begin to turn, when it hits the target it will use its motion to launch the opponent high into the air and then come down on your opponent smacking them into the ground. All Naruto could say was, wow. Hayate then addressed his team. All right that all the Hokage wanted to talk with you guys about, today. I have a meeting today so you guys can have the day off. I'll see you later. We have a team meeting at 8 am tomorrow. All three genin screamed with joy to finally get a must needed day off, hi sensei. Later that day at the chunin and junin meeting. The hokage was addressing the higher ranking nins about missions and other political stuff. It was the end of the meeting and the hokage only had one more thing to discuss. All right now that all the boring stuff is out of the way let's get to the chunin exam. This year we're holding them. Now first off are there any rookie teams that their Junin sensei would like to nominate? A tough looking man with a beard and a cigarette in his mouth named Asuma was the first one to step up. I nominate team 8 consisting of Hayuga Hanada, Nara Shikamaru, Amkachi Choji. Everyone clapped because not many Junin sensei nominate a rookie team. No one clapped as loud as Yuahi Kurenai the Genjutsu mistress of Konoha. She was dating Asuma. Next to step up was a man in black with a mask covering up one side of his face. The masked nin started talking. I Hitaki Kakashi nominate team 7 consisting of Inzuka Kiba, Haruno Sakura, and Uchiha Sasuke. Everyone clapped even louder than they did for Asuma because the Uchiha was on that team. Everyone thought that was it but then Hayate stepped up. The sick Junin was the last to step up. Igeko Hayate nominate team 10 consisting of Aburame Shino. Yamanaka Ino, and Uzumaki Naruto. Everyone was stunned. Nine rookies were partaking in the Chunin exam including a Uchiha and a Jinchuriki. Kakashi spoke up to his friend Hayate, are you sure your team's ready? I mean I read their academy grades. I mean Naruto's had the lowest grades in the class. Hayate was about to speak but was cut off by a green spandex wearing nin, Kakashi my internal rival I think you are underestimating Naruto. Guy how can someone with those grades ever complete a chunin exam, Kakashi asked. 
Just trust me on this when you see Naruto fight you'll know exactly why Hayate nominated this team, the man with huge eyebrows told his rival. It was Hayate's turn to speak this time, Kakashi I know my team better than anyone. Trust me they're ready especially Naruto. The Hokage spoke up right after that, now that the rookies team have been nominated I, listen to all non-rookie nominations now. The next day at training ground 10. Ino and Naruto got to the team meeting early and were just chilling until a squared shaped rock tried to sneak up on Naruto. Naruto just shook his head, come on when has a rock ever been a perfect square? All of a sudden three ten-year-old kids popped put of the toy rock. There was a lot of smoke. The sickly looking one coughed, damn Konohamaru I think we used too much smoke. Oh I'm Udon the genius tactician. Then a girl a popped out. I'm Moge the most beautiful Kunochi in Konoha. Finally Konohamaru jumped out in front of them doing a pose. I'm Konohamaru leader of the secret Konoharmaru Corps. Ino and Naruto both thought the same thing how can it be secret if you just told us. Konohamaru jumped onto Naruto's back, he Naruto ni san you promised us you'd play ninja with us when you get back from your mission. The blonde leaf nin scratched the back of his head, Ham I guess I did didn't I? Ino just laughed at Naruto, I can't believe a ninja is going to play ninja. Konohamaru looked at the blonde girl that looked at Naruto, is she your girlfriend? Ino and Naruto both screamed, no. Konohamaru smiled, good she kind of bitchy and you should have a girlfriend with much bigger anyway. Naruto knew what was about to happen and tried to save his little friend, run. Run away as fast as you can. Ino scream in anger. Naruto you and your little friend are going to die. Naruto got real scared, oh god Konohamaru run for your life. They both were sprinting away from one very pissed of Ino until Konohamaru accidentally ran into a man with face paint on. The man with face paint picked up the little kid and started to shake him, you little brat you should watch where you're going. Naruto got pissed off seeing his little friend being handled like that, you douche put him down. All of a sudden the girl that was with face paint boy spoke up, come on Kankiro let the kid go what do you think he'll do if he catches you messing around with little kids. Shut up Tamari I do what I want, Kankiro took something big that was wrapped in bandages off his back. He was about to unwrap the object until he was hit with a rock by Uchiha Sasuke, I think you should put the kid son sand nin, the sand nin dropped Konohamaru. Naruto was happy that Konohamaru was let go but he was mad that Sasuke showed up damn it he always got to act so cool when he does anything. Ino just smiled oh yes Sasuke comes to save the day again. Yes I agree with the leaf nin you should stop fooling around brother before I kill you. A scary sand nin appeared right next to Sasuke. Kankiro seemed to get real scarred, I'm sorry Gara. Gara had a sick smile on his face, you better not do it again or I'll kill you. Gara then turned his attention to the leaf nins, I'm sorry for my brother. Sasuke then leapt down of the tree and asked, I would like to know your name. Gara replied, Gara of the desert I would also like to know your, to be able to hit Kenkiro with a stone like that is impressive he must be skilled. Uchiha Sasuke, Sasuke said with confidence. Gara turned and looked straight at Naruto I don't know what it is but I can feel that this one is hiding his true strength. I would also like to know yours. Uzumaki Naruto. Naruto smiled. Sasuke was surprised why Gara would want to know the Dobi's name. Hey Gara, why do you want to know the Dobe's name? He's nothing special. Gara had another twisted evil smile. I'm afraid you're mistaken. I can tell he's strong, he's just hiding it. Sasuke got real confused. He couldn't believe that Naruto could actually be strong. The three sand nins were about to leave until Ino finally spoke up. I know we're allies with the sand but you guy can't just come here freely. So then why are you her? Tamari answered the blonde kunochi, man you konoha nins are slow. You guys are holding this year's chunin exam and we're here to participate in it. Ino was surprised, shit at that time of the year already. Tamari answered, yes, the sand nins left soon after that. Both Naruto and Ino headed back to meet with their sensei. When they got there Shino was already sitting down. But before Naruto could even say he Hayate showed up. I am sorry but I don't have much time I have a mission of my own to get to. I have nominated you guys to partake into the Chunin exam. He then handed them a piece of paper. 
Give this to a guy in room 301 at the Ninja Academy in exactly a week. That's all. I got to go sorry, Hayate then proofed away. Naruto was the first to speak after Hayate left. Phew he left quickly. Shino spoke this time, yay he did. Naruto then held up the piece of paper Hayate gave to him. The Chunin exams here I come. Soon I'll prove to everyone I'm not a monster. I'll show them that I'm Uzumaki Naruto Ruka had already left to go teach at the ninja academy. Naruto just awoke rubbing the crust out of his eyes. Damn a week went by fast I can't believe it's time for the Chunin exams already. Then he thought about all the ridiculous training he put himself through. God damn it I killed myself all week and I haven't even come close to figuring out how to do the Haryu Muko, Destruction Dragon Fierce Tiger, or the Kokoryu Bufusetsu, Black Dragon Blizzard. Naruto then slapped himself in the face. I can't be thinking like that I'll defiantly get it right soon and when I do I'm going to take a picture of Sasuke's face when he realized just how powerful I am. The Leaf Nin then took a shower got changed, sharpened his swords, and put on his chakra weights. The weights still weighed 200 pounds on each arm and 300 pounds on each leg. Guy told him that was enough weight for now. After all that our hero left to become a chunin. Same day Eno's house. Eno had gotten had already showered and gotten ready for her day. Moshi was just eating breakfast with her mom. Eno should have been thinking about what the exams would be like. But she wasn't. She was thinking of our favorite blonde Jenin. Since the mission in the country of Wave I haven't really seen Naruto. I guess he was training. I just don't get it. I never really thought Naruto was strong at all. He acts like an idiot all the time but when anyone he knows about is in danger he become a different person. I just don't get it he's always getting hurt trying to protect people who used to make fun of him. I just don't get it. That's not the worst of it. Whenever he gets like that and I see his eyes they become different too. His eyes look very sad. He's always smiling and acts like he doesn't have a care in the world but his eyes tells a different story. Why? Eno's mom saw the look on her daughter's face and decided to find out what was wrong with her. Honey what's the matter you look like something's troubling you. Eno was shaken from her thoughts by the sound of her mom's voice. Mom have you ever had a friend who hides his feelings from everyone around him? I see she must be talking about Naruto. Hmm maybe she's starting to like him instead of that Uchiha. What do you mean honey? Eno told her mother. I have a friend who's always acting happy and smiling but when you look in his eyes you can tell he carries great sadness in them. In her motherly tone Eno's mom answered. Eno I would have to say you friend is trying to protect something by hiding his true feelings. This person could be protecting you a friend or himself by hiding thing. I believe if you give the person time he'll tell you one day honey. Eno replied. Yes mom. She then left her house to go to TH Ninja Academy. Once Eno left Mrs. Yamanka started thinking about the blonde I. Also from what my daughter said it seems that Naruto is in more pain than I thought. But maybe just maybe my daughter can rescue him from it. The Ninja Academy. Our three heroes start making their way up to the third floor. They get stopped however when they see a fight happening right outside door 301. Two genin are beating up a kid that looks unusually similar to Guy. The two blocking the door start yelling. How can I let you take the Chunin exams if you're so weak? You should consider this a favor. The kid hit the green spandex wearing kid one more time. Naruto looked at the kid and thought of his crazy teacher. He looks exactly like Guy and he even has the ridiculous eyebrows like him too. He must be Rock Lee his prize pupil that he never shuts up about. He's defiantly not that weak. He must be hiding his true strength. Naruto was about to go help Guy until Sasuke showed up and started a fight. He tried to push the two genins out of the way, get the hell out of my way I'm looking for room 301 not 201. He then started to chuckle, to think people could be fooled by this lame ass genjutsu. Ino had heart flying around her head. Damn he's so amazing and cute. One of the genin guarding the door got pissed and charged at Sasuke, Sasuke does the same. But before they can connect a flash of green step in between them. It was Rock Lee. Lee released their arms and went back to his team. The one with white eyes started yelling at him. Lee what the hell was that for I thought we were supposed to hide our strength. Lee just put his head down. A cute girl in their group finally spoke. Come on Neji he did what he thought was right. 
The boy named Neji shouted, Shut up Ten Ten you don't always have to stick up for him. Our blonde haired hero just looked at the three ninjas. I see so that's Guy's team. We better be careful with them. Any team taught by Guy must be strong. Naruto was going to go over and talk to them but he was beaten to the punch by a fuming Sasuke. Why the hell did you stop me from kicking that kid's ass? Lee just looked straight at him and said, that fight had no point. I'll show you no point. Sasuke reaches back and was about to slug Lee until someone caught his hand. Sasuke calmed down he didn't do anything wrong. It was Naruto's hand that grabbed him. Dobi get the hell out of me and I'll do what I want I don't have to listen to a dropout loser like you. Sasuke yelled and stormed off. Ino for the first time got kind of mad at Sasuke why the hell did he say that Naruto didn't do anything bad to him. Wait a second it's not just Sasuke who acts that way around him almost everyone does. He only tries to help but gets stomped on for it. But why? Naruto just scratched his head at Sasuke's remark and started talking to Guy's team, well I guess you guys just meet the king of all douches. The Great Uchiha Sasuke. Ten Ten and Lee started cracking up but the stoic Neji reacted a little differently. Shut up I can tell just by looking at you that you are weak. You're just a loser like the Uchiha said and the Hyugas don't talk to losers. Rock Lee shouted at his teammate, hey what the hell was that for? Just like Sasuke Hyuga shouted, a Hyuga doesn't have to answer to you, then the Hyuga stormed off. Ten Ten tried to apologize. I am so sorry he just acts like a jerk to everyone so don't take it personal. The blue eyes Genin just waved his hand, it's alright I'm used to it. Both Ino and Ten Ten thought the same thing why would he be used to getting treated like that. Naruto then started talking to Lee, hey Lee how's guy been haven't seen him in a couple of days. He's doing good just training us to get ready for this exam, then Lee realized that Naruto knew guy. Wait you know guy sensei. Before Naruto could answer Ino spoke up, um who's guy Naruto? Oh Ino he's a friend of mine who helps me with my taijutsu from time to time. Naruto answered. Both Lee and Ten Ten said in surprise, are you serious guy sensei teaches you? Naruto kind of chuckled, yay old fuzzy brows is great guy. He only teaches me sometimes whenever he has a chance and isn't helping you guys. You know he thinks very highly of you Lee. Lee got in his good guy pose, that because we both have the flame of youth. Naruto slapped his forehead, Okami not only do you look like guy but you act like him too. Yea that was my reaction to when I meet him, Tei Ten said jokingly. In Ino's mind damn this guy sound like an interesting character I hope I can meet him. Ino's wish was granted as Gain came running down the hall on his hand, Lee what are you doing the first exam is starting soon, he then looked over at Naruto. Oh my other youthful student Naruto. You must go to you don't want to miss the exam. Hi guy. Naruto screamed and ran down the hall to the exam room while Ino and Shino trailed behind him. Ten Ten then spoke to her sensei, so what can you tell us about Naruto? We might have to fight him to get past this exam. Guy turned and looked right at her. All I can tell you guys is to be careful of him. Ten Ten was surprised Guy would never say anything like that unless he truly meant it, Guy I know he's a nice guy but I heard he was the weakest of the rookies. It was Lee that answered not Guy, sorry Ten Ten but you wrong about him. I could feel it Naruto was hiding his strength. Guy smiled, yes that is true Lee, I'll tell you something else he earned his power. Lee was confused by that, Guy sensei what do you mean? Lee this might surprise you but Naruto trains harder than even you. Guy answered his youthful student. Ten Ten was shocked, is that even possible I've seen Lee train there's no way anyone could train harder than him. Lee was shocked as well but he knew the answer to Ten Ten's question, there's only one way a person could push themselves that hard. Only if someone has lived a life where everyone hated them for no reason and thought they were weak. A person who trains to prove everyone wrong about him, I know because I'm like that. But for Naruto to train harder than me the must mean he has to prove himself to a lot more people. Guy just shook his head up and down to show that Lee was correct. Ten Ten couldn't believe it. He seemed so happy. He must have been hiding himself. If the happy Naruto isn't the real him then who is? Who is the real Naruto? Back to Team Ten. Our three heroes had just walked through the door of 301 and met the other rookies. 
They also meet another older leaf genin named Kabuta. Kabuta told the rookie nine he had information on anyone taking the Chunin exams. Uchiha took an opportunity to find out more about Gara and Lee. Hey Kabuta do you think you can check out a San Nin by the name of Gara of the Desert and Rock Lee of Konoha? The man with glass gladly replied, sure no problem, he took out a stack of cards and applied chakra to it. Two card pooped out, okay let's see Rock Lee is a student of Meida Gai. He seemed to excel in Taijutsu but sucks in Ninjutsu and Genjutsu. He then looked at Gara card, holy shit you guys better watch out for this one. It's sad he excels in ninjutsu and has come back from every mission he's done even unharmed. This shocked everyone. Well is there anyone else you'd like to see? Sasuke then thought of a way to embarrass Naruto. Yay I want to see Uzumaki Naruto's of the leaf. Man this should be funny. The normally quiet Shino stared to laugh. Haha you guys are in for a surprise. Even Ino slightly chuckled which caused Haruno Sakura to get interested. What do you guys mean we're in for a surprise? Shino stopped laughing and became his serious self again, you'll see. Kabuto then looked at the card with surprise, holy crap this card says that Uzumaki Naruto used to have the worst grades in your class but has gotten much stronger since then. Sasuke smirked, you got to be kidding me we're talking about the Dobi here. There no way that dropout is strong. Kabuto just shook his head, I am not kidding it say here he excels in ninjutsu is above average in kenjutsu and taijutsu. It also say that he awoke some sort of bloodline. The card compares him to the others in your class and it show that with Naruto strength that it is now. He close to being as strong as you Uchiha. Everyone was in a state of shock except for Ino and Shino. Uchiha started laughing though, ha 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 that's funny your little card say Naruto is almost as strong as me that's ridiculous. Naruto started to get angry at Sasuke. Why can't I be strong is that so hard to fathom that the idiot Naruto might actually be strong. Naruto was so angry he was about to unleash his heavenly bodies and fight Sasuke before the exam even starts. Ino saw Naruto reaction and couldn't help but feel mad at what Sasuke said also Sasuke has no right to make fun of Naruto. Naruto is strong and hell prove it to everyone. She then realized that Naruto was about to star a fight with Sasuke, she didn't even thin she just wrapped her arms around him from behind. Calm down Naruto, I know you're strong, just calm down and prove it to him by becoming a chunin. Naruto was able to calm down when he heard Ino say I know you're strong. Once he calmed down he kept replaying those words over and over in his head I know you're strong. She actually cares about me and thinks I'm strong. I'll show Sakuk I am strong. I'll also prove to everyone that Ino is right about me. Naruto was shaken out of his thought when a tall man wearing a black bandana appeared out of nowhere. Hello I'm Morino Ibiki and I'm here to give you your first torture. Oh I'm sorry I mean first test. After hearing that everyone in the room thought the same thing oh shit. The man named Ibiki spoke in front of hundreds want to be chunins, alright guys this test will be a written test. Naruto started to sweat, he sucked at taking written test. Naruto getting a good grade on a test would be like a certain white haired Sanin seeing a beautiful girl and not go peep on her. It's just not going to happen. The only thing that ran through our hero's mind was I am so screwed. Ibiki started talking again, this test will have some rules. The test is composed of 10 questions 10 points. If one of your teammates scores a zero on the exam the whole team fails. Also there will be a two point deduction for every time we catch one of you guys cheating. If you're caught cheating five times you and your team fails. Lastly the tenth and final question will be given to you once 45 minutes have passed. Alright guys begin. Everyone was nervous at what Ibiki said. Especially Naruto. Shit I can't fail or I'll let Shino and Ino down. I guess I'll just skip the hard ones and try to do the easy ones. He quickly scanned the paper to see which ones were easy. Naruto started sweating even more when he realized that there were no easy ones crap I'm so screwed. I have to cheat. Right then the girl next to him spoke up. It was the shy Hanada. Hey Naruto you all right? She blushed the whole time saying it. Naruto just looked at the Hyuga and smiled. Nah I'll be okay I hope. Damn I didn't even realize she was there. She's nice though nothing like Neji. Maybe not all Hyugas are so stuck up. Hanada blushed an even deeper shade of red when Naruto smiled at her, um Naruto you can look off my paper if you want. 
Naruto started to thank Kami for giving him this opportunity to cheat. But right before he looked over a kanai whizzed by his head. A Chunin proctor called out, Team 98 fails. Naruto realizing that he can't get caught quickly decide to deny the Shai Hayuga's offer, I'm sorry Hinata but I can't do that. I wouldn't be much of a ninja if I had to resort to cheating. Hinata just smile, sorry Naruto I guess you're right, he's so amazing. Naruto didn't think he was amazing though, god damn it, that was probably my only chance to get answers. And now that I let my pride get in the way I am so screwed. I guess there's only one thing left to do is bet everything on the 10th question. Ino was also worried about our hyperactive blonde, should we have Naruto on our team? He couldn't pass a test if his life depended on it, knowing him though he sure as hell would try, if not for himself then for me and Shino. Oh it looks like big brain soccer is done, I guess it's time for me to get some answers. Ino quietly said, Shintenshin no jutsu, mind body change technique. Ino wound up transferring her subconscious into Sakura. Alright I got to memorize these questions quick. It looks like the 45 minutes are almost up. Right when Ino released the jutsu and finished copying down answers the 45 minutes were up. The man known as Morino Ibiki spoke up. Alright 45 minutes is up. It's time for me to give you the 10th question. But before I can do that I must tell you that the 10th question has some very special rules. Tamari asked. What rules? The special Junin gladly answered, you have the choice of taking the question or not. If you don't take it your score will be reduced to zero and your whole team would fail. A genin in the back screamed, of course we'll take why wouldn't we? The Junin started to laugh evilly, because if you get the 10th question wrong you can never take the Chunin exam again. Right when he said that everyone in the classroom thought the same thing oh. Slowly more and more people started to raise their hand and quit. Ino saw the people quitting and though Naruto should do the same thing. God damn Naruto don't be stubborn quit. Don't worry about me or Shino. Worry about yourself for once. If you fail now your dreams will be shattered. Ino then thought back to all the times Naruto said he was going to become Hokage. I used to think you were an idiot with a dream that could never come true. But the more time I spent with you I started to realize that you one day might actually become Hokage. I know you'll probably had me for this but I can't let you lose your dream. Ino started to slowly raise her hand until she saw that Naruto had already raised his. All of the rookie nine were completely shocked about this. They would have never believed that Naruto actually gave up. At the Junin lounge, Asuma, Karani, Kakashi, and Hayate were all sitting around wondering how their teams were doing. None more than Hayate. Asuma saw Hayate beginning to get impatient. You can calm down Hayate our teams will be back with us soon. Hayate was confused by what Asuma said, what do you mean? The nicotine addicted Junin answered, the person giving the first exam it Morino Ibiki. Kurinai never heard that name before and decided to ask, who's he? Kakashi answered, he's a special Junin who specializes in torture and information gathering, he can find a weakness in anybody and bring it out. Hayate started to laugh which stunned everybody. Kakashi was confused and decided to ask what was up with our favorite sickly Junin, did your cold go to your head? Why are you laughing? The sick Junin quickly became serious, it looks like I'm not going to be busy for a while. Asuma asked, what do you mean? Hayate spoke with pride in my voice, my team will be fine against Ibiki's methods. Especially Naruto, Naruto would never give up it could hurt someone else, he's a kid that can endure any kind of pain life throws at him. Kakashi smirked under his mask. No one knew this but Kekashi had always liked Naruto. He believed the same thing that the Hokage believed. That Naruto was a hero. You're probably right Hayate. Back at the ninja academy. Everyone was still in shock at seeing Naruto's hand up. Ibiki was about to call team's 10 name, but didn't get the chance. Naruto slammed his fist down. When he did this he let a little bit of his lighting element out creating sparks when his hand hit the ground. I don't give a shit what you do to me, I am taking this question. Even if I fail and never become a chunin it doesn't matter because I'll become Hokage anyway. I can't give up and I never will that is my way of the ninja. Ino couldn't believe it. God he's such an idiot. I can't believe he worried me like that. I should have known. 
Uzumaki Naruto will never back down from anyone or anything that stand in the way of his dream. Ibiki was slightly stunned, he looked at a classroom of students that were once tense and scared but now are completely confident. I can't believe it he made everyone more confident. Man this Uzumaki Naruto is an interesting guy. Alright this is the last time I'm going to ask is there anyone that would like to quit, no one raised their hand. I guess it's useless to wait any longer. Alright everyone here passes. The whole room fell off their seats and screamed, what? You could say that the last question was a two-choice question. In the world of a ninja you can't give up just because the outcome might become bad. A true ninja has the guts to face any outcome of a mission. Hum looks like 26 teams pass, more than I expected. Ibiki then turned his head to the window. A kanai flew through the window and a lady wearing fishnet stocking came flying in right behind it. The lady looked back at Morino Ibiki while twirling a kanai around her finger. You let 26 teams pass Ibiki, you must be slipping. The torture expert replied, or it could be that this group is rather exceptional. The crazy lady started laughing, hello guys my name is Mitarashi Anko and I'll be your second exam instructor. She then licked her lips, just to warn you in my exam more than half of you will fail. Everyone was scared shitless by the crazy women named Anko. Shino and Ino were scared shitless for other reasons. Holy shit she has the same personality as Naruto. When those two meet face to face all hell is going to break loose. Before Anko left she said one lost thing, the exam starts tomorrow at 9am. Your Yoni senseis will tell you where to go. Well okay bye bye. Anko leapt out the window. All Naruto could think of while watching Anko was this isn't going to be a fun exam tomorrow. Five minutes later everyone left to go meet their Junin senseis. Ninja Academy one hour later. The room that had once held so many genin earlier was now empty. The only one left was a man named Morino Ibiki. He was picking up all the tests. But he stopped when he came across one test that had the name Uzumaki Naruto on it. This was the boy who changed everybody minds test. I wonder how he did. He quickly scanned over the sheet to find that there was nothing but a name on it. Ha 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 what an interesting kid. He stood up to me and bet it all when he didn't even know any of the answers. I wonder how much farther you will get Naruto. The next day at the forest of death, Mitarashi Anko stood in front of 78 Genin and started to explain the second exam, all right you little shits, it's time for the second exam. We will give each team a scroll. There are two scrolls, the scroll of earth and the scroll of heaven. To pass this exam you must defeat another team and take their scroll. If you do not have one of each scroll you fail. Once you get both scrolls you have to get to the tower in the center of the forest of death. You have a time limit of 5 days. Alright guys this is a survival test. I expect that at least one of you will probably die. With that said come get your scrolls. Out of the 78 genin participating in this exam only one wasn't freaking out. Hey crazy lady you don't scare me. I kick ass in this exam. Our favorite blonde screamed. Oh really? Anko threw a kanai which flew by his head scratching his cheek. She then reappeared behind him and licked his cut, um. This freaked out Naruto beyond belief. But what was more interesting was how Ino felt about it. At first she thought it was funny but when Anko licked Naruto something inside twinged with anger get the hell off of him. Ino didn't know why she felt so angry about what happened. Why do I care it's just Naruto? It's just Naru. Ino's thoughts were interrupted when a very feminine looking grass nin snuck up on Anko. The weird guy gave Anko her kanai back but not before Anko threatened to kill him a good five to six times. Once Anko got through threatening everyone she gave out the scrolls. Ten minutes later, Team 10 had received the heaven scroll and had just entered the forest of death. Within the first five minutes of being in there they heard someone scream. In got a little freaked out and jumped onto Naruto. Let's just say when that happened Naruto became red as a tomato from blushing. When Ino figured out that she was hanging onto Naruto, she turned to look at him. She was planning to yell at him even knowing it wasn't his fault. Before she could open her mouth to yell she looked directly into his blue eyes. Ino blushed worse than Hinata usually does. She didn't know what came over her but she started to slowly move her face closer to his. She was about an inch away when Shino spoke up. 
Um I hope I am not interrupting anything but I am going to use my bugs and try and find a team nearby. Mushi yo no jutsu, insect gathering technique. The bug user interrupted our two blondes. Shino's voice and bugs was enough to shock Ino out of what she was doing. She quickie jumped of Naruto and drop kicked him in the back of the head. Let's just say Naruto went up up and away. Pervert, you're such an arrow baka. Holy crap I almost kissed him but why? I am in love with Sasuke-kun. When Naruto finally got back up from the dropkick he was kind of confused, you jump on me and it's my fault. Did she almost kiss me? I don't know what it is about her but whenever I get close to her my heart starts pounding. Before Naruto could figure anything out, Shino's bugs found someone. Someone familiar. Shit guys I found team 7 but it seemed that the weird grass nin is attacking them. He's not going after the scroll he's trying to kill them. Right when Shino finished talking they all heard a female scream. Ino knew that scream. She had to go help. Shit that was Sakura. Naruto we need to help them. Naruto took one deep breath before agreeing, alright Ino let's go help. I just hope we get there in time. Our three heroes started jumping from tree to tree. They were still a little while away when Ino heard Sakura scream again. This freaked her out. She started to shake and worry. I don't know what I'll do if Sakura gets hurt. I know we fight all the time but she's one of the few really good friends I have. Naruto reached over to Ino and tried to comfort her. It's alright Ino. I won't let her get hurt I promise and you know me with my promises. I always keep them because that's my way of the ninja. He then gave the worried girl one of his real smiles. Ino just smiled. Thanks Naruto. Our hero just smiled back. No problem. Naruto started to pick up speed. They were really close to where Sakura's scream came from. Right before they got there Ino just stared at her blonde haired blue eyes teammate. I don't know what it is but whenever Naruto smiles like that it seems to calm me. Ino wasn't calm for much longer. Team 10 arrived on the scene right when the grass nin bit Sasuke on the neck and gave him something called the cursed seal. Before jumping down to help, Naruto quickly looked around to see if he could find Sakura and Kiba. He found them bloodied and beaten a couple feet from where Sasuke was. But right when Naruto saw them the grass nin was charging at them ready to kill. The blonde genin throw a couple of shuriken. The shuriken flew right in front of the grass nin, stopping him in his tracks. The grass nin looked up at team 10 and licked his lips, I see some fresh meat wants to join the party. Team 10 quickly jumped down in front of Sakura and Kiba. Ino then went over to check on team 7 while Naruto and Shino made sure the grass nin didn't attack. Ino took out a first aid kit and started treating Sakura's wound. Sakura woke up right when Ino started treating her wound, OMG it you Ino. Are we safe is that monster gone? She then looked over and saw Sasuke on the groan and the grass nin not too far away. Oh god he managed to beat Sasuke where dead for sure. Ino tried to calm down the hysterical girl. Calm down. Don't worry we're here to help. Naruto and Shino will take care of him. Sakura was still a wreck. How can Naruto and Shino beat him? Sasuke lost and he was the strongest genin in the leaf. Ino grabbed her into a hug. You'll be fine. Naruto promised me. So you don't have to worry. The one thing that you know about is that he never breaks a promise. Sakura knew that was true and calmed down a little. She just held on to Ino as tight as she could, tears flowing from her eyes. I know I know but I am so scared. Ino turned away from a crying Sakura and looked at Naruto. Please Naruto find a way to beat him. Now let the action begin, the grass nin had an evil smirk on and stared at Naruto and Shino, alright boys let's have some fun. Shikumi no Jutsu, Death Viewing Technique, Killing Intent. Naruto and Shino saw images of their own death in painful ways. Shino was frozen stiff and terrified. Naruto was alright though, he hasn't figured out that Jutsu doesn't work with me. I'll just play along and maybe I can catch him off guard. The grass nin was laughing evilly, ha ha that was too easy. He pulled out two kanai and threw them at Shino and Naruto. Ino saw what happened but Sakura was still holding her so she could help them, guys what are you doing? Move goddamn I. Naruto waited till the kunai were inches away from them before he dodged. He took Shino and jumped out of the way. He then took Shino over to Ino, that asshole over there messed with his mind. Try and snap him out of it I'm going to need help. 
He then turned around and stared at the grass nin with hatred in his eyes. The grass nin was a little surprised that a genin could break away from his jutsu so easily, how did you break my jutsu? I gave you both a jutsu that simulated a painful death. Your friend over there is still messed up but you're fine. How? Naruto pulled out his twin blades and replied with hatred in his voice, a jutsu like that won't work on me. My life has been far more painful than that jutsu. That answer surprised everyone especially Sakura and Ino. The both looked at each other with worry in their eyes, what did he mean by that? They both asked each other. The grass nin was surprised also, interesting. Well let's begin. Daitapa, great breakthrough, a huge gust of wind blew Naruto into a tree. The impact caused the blonde genin to cough up blood. The blue-eyed ninja wiped the blood of his mouth and stood back up. Let's get wild. Heavenly body Raiden, lightning, Naruto's body turned into white lightning. The grass nin was utterly shocked, what the hell type of bloodline is that? Naruto screamed, well why don't I show you? Torunido Raidoningu, tornado lightning, a tornado made up of lightning shot out at the grass nin. The grass nin saw the tornado coming and bit his thumb, Kuchio's no jutsu, summoning technique. A 15 foot snake took the blast head on and protected the mysterious nin. The blast hit the snake dead on but it didn't do too much damage. Ha ha let's see you play with my snake for a little bit. The huge snake came charging at Ino and everyone else not Naruto. Naruto saw what the snake was after and got scarred. He released his chakra weights and sprinted in front of the snake. Sakura and Ino were scared to death they each closed their preparing for death. When the snake was a couple feet from them Ino opened her eyes. She didn't see a snake all she saw was Naruto, standing between them and a 15 foot snake. Don't worry Ino I won't let anything happen to you. Heavenly body high out in ice. He then started to do hand seals. Please Kami let this work. Haru Muko, destruction dragon fierce tiger, Kami answered Naruto's plea for help. A 25 foot ice tiger came flying out at the snake. The grass nin was standing on top pf the snake's head and saw the icy beast coming right at him. Oh crap he can use high out in jutsus. Right before the ice tiger hit the snake the grass nin jumped out of the way avoiding danger. Well the snakes wasn't so lucky the ice tiger made a hole straight through the giant snake. Ino and Sakura were shocked. Naruto actually managed to stop the giant snake. Naruto wasn't done yet. Yo freak let me introduce you to a technique I created myself. High out in Saburu, ice saber, ice covered Naruto blades making them two times harder and sharper. Let go you little snake freak Makajuki no Mai, dance of the crescent moon. Naruto made three shadow copies of himself and charged at the grass nin. Right before he reached the grass nin Naruto jumped up in the air. The grass nin seemed to know which on was the real Naruto, I'm sorry little leaf nin but you made your final fatal mistake. Senei Jishu, hidden shadow snake hands. A couple of snakes shot out of the grass nin's arm. Naruto was able to dodge by doing a corkscrew in the air. When Naruto was inches away from coming down and slicing the grass nin in half. I mean mere seconds before Naruto's blades touched the grass nin. A sword came flinging out of his mouth. I stabbed straight through Naruto. He then pinned Naruto up against a tree. Ha ha so how do you like my kusangi grass cutter? Ino watched in horror as Naruto spat up blood. No it can't be. He can't die. He hasn't become Hokage yet. Ino burst into tears. Sakura joined her. Ino just let tears fly freely why did I make him promise to save us? He fought so hard to protect us. Why does he always do that? He always gets hurt so others won't have to. Naruto please don't die. Ino screamed. Naruto. The grass nin smirked. You seem to have an interesting bloodline. Maybe it'll make you my backup plan. He then tried to bite Naruto on the neck like he did Sasuke. Even if he was impaled with a sword, Naruto wasn't going to let the crazy snake nin bite him. Get the hell away from me you freaky bastard. Heavenly body Raiden, lightning. He turned his body into lightning. When the grass nin tried to bite him he got a little shock. The shock of lightning that hit the grass nin's face seemed to singe off his face. The grass nin had a different face. His true face showed a much older pale skin ninja. Feisty aren't we? It doesn't matter the Uchiha was stronger so I really don't need you. Ino couldn't just sit there and watch anymore. 
She pulled soccer off of her and pulled out a couple kunais. She was about go until someone grabbed her arm. It was Shino. He seemed to finally snap out of the jutsu the pale skin nin placed on him. Wait up I. LL help. Naruto's one of my few good friend I can't just sit here and let him die. Ino just nodded. They both started to run at the grass nin. But before they could even get close Naruto yelled at them. Don't even think about fighting this guy. He'll just kill you. Ino pleaded with her blonde hair teammate. But if we work together we might be able to save me. Naruto coughed up some more blood. No, just leave me. Take Sasuke, Kiba, and Sakura and get the hell out of here. Ino started to cry again. She couldn't stand seeing Naruto hurt like that. Naruto I can't just leave you here to die. Please Naruto let us help. Shino started to tear also. Naruto I can't leave you either. You're one of the few people who accepted me right away even knowing I was a little different. A single tear trickled out of Naruto's eyes. Thanks, but I'd rather die than see you guys get hurt. I'm sorry but you guys are going to have to finish this exam without me. He then pulled the sword out of his stomach and threw it to the ground. I'll hold him off for a little while but you guys got to go. Now. Ino started to cry even harder. No Naruto I can't do that. She was cut off when Shino grabbed her arm and started to pull her away. Shino what the hell are you doing he's going to die. Shino pulled down his sunglasses and showed Ino his eyes for the first time. There were great saddens in them, it is his last wish that we survive and I plan to honor it. Ino understood. Naruto picked up his blades again and looked at his teammates. Thanks Shino and make sure you protect Ino. Shino picked up Sasuke and Kiba before turning back to look at Naruto, I'll protect her no matter what. He took a second to wipe the tears out of his eyes before he started to run. Ino looked back at the boy she used to think was a loser. Naruto you truly are strong. She then grabbed Sakura and tried to catch up to Shino. Oh how touching but I think it's time you died. The pale skinned ninja threatened. Naruto just glared at the older nin, I don't think so. Naruto tightened his grip on his swords and with his last bit of strength charged at the grass nin. The pale skinned nin started to laugh evilly, Kanashibari no jutsu, temporary body paralysis technique. This jutsu stopped Naruto in his tracks, can't move can you? Well that's too bad, the grass nin proceeded to take Naruto's swords out of his hands, nice swords. He then looked at the engravings on both swords, hum the will of fire, what a sack of shit. He then started to laugh again, haha I guess I should tell you the name of your killer it's Orikiramaru former Konoha nin. He then stabbed Naruto in the stomach with his own swords. As Naruto's world started to fade into blackness all he could think of was. At least Shino and Ino are safe. It doesn't matter if I die as long as they're safe as Naruto's world started to fade into blackness all he could think of was. At least Shino and Ino are safe. It doesn't matter if I die as long as they're safe. Back at the woods, Ino and Shino kept running until they were sure they got far enough away. They both exhausted from carrying everybody. They placed Sasuke and Kiba underneath a tall tree. While Shino, Ino, and Sakura leaned up against a huge boulder. They just sat there in silence for a few minutes before Ino just started crying. How could we just leave him there to die? Why does he always put himself in so much danger just to save me? Someone who used to make fun of him. This time Sakura was the one comforting Ino. Shino let a single tear drop from his eye because you are precious to him. He would put his life on the line to help anyone. But he was willing to die for us. His friends. He truly is a hero. Ino just latched onto Sakura and poured her eyes out. I'm so scared. Ever since we became a team I felt like we were a family and now it seemed like it's going to be destroyed. Shino walked over to the his blonde haired friend and placed his hand on her shoulder. It won't be destroyed. Naruto would never let that happen. Ino shouted. How can Naruto do that if he dies? If Naruto dies I don't think I'll ever forgive myself. Shino stood up and looked up at the sky. You won't have to. Naruto will survive. You know him just as well as I do. That guy will never die until he achieves his dream. Hearing that Ino stopped crying and actually smiled. You're right Shino. Naruto will come back alive. Shino smiled back at his teammate. Alright I guess that's enough rest let's go. They were about to leave until a team from the hidden rain pooped out of nowhere. 
They all had scuba-like mask on. The one with bandages around his eyes spoke up. Oh it looks like two teams are here. Well you guys look pretty beaten up why don't you just give up your scrolls before we kill. All of a sudden a sound team came flying out of nowhere. The kid with bandages wrapping around his face except his eyes spoke in a dark tone. I don't give a shit if you kill them, but the one named Sasuke is ours to kill. The rain team looked at each other before the one named Kagari, that's fine with us. There's two teams here so that means a scroll for each of us. Shino, Sakura and Ino all looked at each other then at the two team before all shouting in unison, shit. Back to Naruto, Orokiramaru walked up to the young genin and licked his face, him you are quite an interesting boy. It seems to me that you are also the container for the demon fox Kyuubi. It's such a pity if you didn't have that thing inside of you I would use you as my backup body. He then grabbed Naruto's head and raised it so he could get a better look at the boy. Truly such a waste, ah whatever I have the Uchiha to look forward to. With that said the snake nin left her hero. Ten minutes later, Naruto was inches from death. All around him was darkness. He wasn't scared he was actually kind of glad. I guess a lot of people will be happy with me dead. Maybe my death will do some good. Naruto was about to give up for the first time in his life. He was about to let himself fall into the darkness. All of a sudden a scream echoed throughout the forest, shit. Naruto knew those voices, it was Ino, Shino and Sakura. His determination started to return to him. Shit that was my friends. They must be in trouble. Red chakra slowly started to pour put of the genin's body. Shit I can't die, I have to help them. I must survive and keep fighting. Not for myself but for everyone I care about. Naruto opened his eyes and grabbed the hilts of his swords and ripped them out. He fell onto his knees. As he started to rise more red chakra started to come out. When he finally got to his feet he let out a primal howl. I'll never give up because that's my way of the ninja. Our hero started to jump from tree to tree trying to find his friends. Deeper in the forest. The Rain Nins and Sound Nins threaten Team 10 and Team 7 inches if you don't hand a Sasuke and your scrolls you will die. Ino and Shino both pulled out kunais. Ino then looked at Sakura, protect Sasuke and Kiba. Me and Shino will handle these guys. The Sound Nin named Dosu pulled up his sleeve revealing a weird shape weapon on his arm and chuckled. I was kind of hoping that was going to be your answer. He was about to charge at the Leaf Nins but a Rain Nin stopped them. What are you doing? Kagari stated, let us fight them. A sound nin named Zaku spoke up, Dosu let them fight them. The only one that I, know I mean we want to kill is Sasuke. Once they're done with them we'll finish our job. Dosu slowly walked back to his team, do what you want. The rain nin were preparing to fight until they heard some sort of howl, should we better do this fast, we don't want the animal that made that noise finding us. Shino and Ino were both startled by the howl. Ino looked at her bug user friend, for some odd reason that howl sounded familiar. Shino nodded his head, yes it did, but we can't think about it now. We got to fight these rain nins. Ino nodded in agreement, she then started to do hand seals, hyakaryor and many flowers in bloom. A whirlwind of flowers surrounded the rain team. Ino started to flow through the flowers and threw a couple of kanai at the rain nins. The rain nins were able to block the kanais. They then started laughing, ha ha we're genjutsu specialist, this can't hurt us. Kai, release. Ino jutsu completely disappeared, but before the rain nin could attack Shino spoke. This might though Ritsudo Tenshou, revolving split earth palm. The earth split apart right where the rain nins were standing. The first two were able to jump out of the way but one of the rain nins weren't so lucky. He fell in and the earth started to come back together crushing the rain nin. The two rain nin screamed, you bastard killed our brother. Now you die. The both threw five shurikens at Shino. Shino saw them coming and quickly did hand seals. Doryuheki, earth style wall, a wall of earth came out of the ground to block the shuriken. Kagari shouted, I'm not done with you yet. Kokuin no jutsu, black clouds technique. A black cloud formed over Ino and Shino's head. Oil started to come down like rain from the cloud. The other rain nin then threw a kanai with an exploding note onto the black oil. When it exploded the oil set on fire. The fire was spreading towards Ino and Shino. When the fire was getting to close for comfort Ino screamed, 
Debakufu no Jutsu, Grand Waterfall Technique, a column of water shot out in front of them. The water completely engulfed the fire, immediately putting it out. The rain nin were about to attack until they realized that Shino disappeared. Where the hell the one with the sunglasses go? The rain nin got his answer a second later when he heard the young bug user scream, Shinju Zanshu no Jutsu, Double Suicide Decapitation Technique. The rain nin got pulled down into the ground. Only his head was above ground. Shino then quickly pooped out of the ground and stabbed a kunai right in the rain nin's eye. Killing him instantly. Kagari saw his partner die and knew he was in trouble. Oh shit I better get out of here. He started to run away. But he didn't get too far. Zaku screamed. Zankuaha, decapitating air waves, a powerful sound wave blast shot out of Zaku's hand and completely obliterated the rain nin. Pathetic weakling. Dosu started to laugh. Ha ha nice job Zaku but he wanted to kill them. The female nin in their group called Kin also had a sick smirk on too. Ino looked at Shino and said, These guys are crazy. Shino answered, Yea I know but be ready you'll never know what a crazy person might do. Zaku laughed, Ha so true. Zankuaha, decapitating air waves, he shot out his sound wave blast again. Shino grabbed Ino and did hand seals as quickly as he could, Mushi Cave no Jutsu, insect wall technique. A vortex of bugs surrounded Ino and Shino, protecting both of them from the Zaku's Jutsu. As soon as Shino vortex of bugs disappeared Dosu appeared next to him out of nowhere. You're pretty good but not good enough. Kumizen, vibrating sound drill. He then punched Shino in the face. At first Shino was alright but then he fell over and started to puke. Dosu started to laugh. With this sound amplifier on my arm I can use sound waves to disrupt your balance and weaken you. Now Zaku if you may kill them. Ino screamed. Shino, you got to be okay. First Naruto now you. Please get up. Zaku sneered at her. Shut up women at least die quietly. Zaku was preparing to deliver the final blow until he felt a powerful and sinister chakra source. I think you should die screaming though. It was Sasuke he had some weird black marks on him. Dosu lost his cool. Shit Orikiramaru gave him a curse seal. Yo Zaku we better get out of here it's getting too dangerous. Zaku started to laugh evilly. I am not leaving yet till I kill this bastard. Zankyokukuaha, extreme decapitating air waves. A huge sound wave blast shot out of his hands at Sasuke. When the attack was done there was a huge ass crater in the earth. Looks like that bastard got obliterated. Ha ha I am way too powerful for a weakling like you to kill me, Sasuke said behind me. He the grabbed both of Zaku's arm, you cherish your arms don't you? Well let's see how much you cherish them when I rip them off. Sasuke started to pull on Zaku's arm. The bones broke almost instantly. Sasuke would have ripped them off if Ino hadn't screamed, stop it Sasuke. This can't really be my Sasuke. Sasuke supposed to be my hero not a crazy killer. Hearing Ino call out to him made Sasuke let go of Zaku and start walking over to her. Oh Ino you sure are beautiful. I think it's time to make you mine. He was about to grab Ino until Sakura grabbed his hand. Sakura pleaded with the person she loved, please Sasuke stop this isn't you. Sasuke threw her hand of him and slapped her. He slapped her so hard she fell to the ground. He then looked at her with venom in his eyes, oh but it is me you stupid women. He then made his way towards Ino and grabbed her by the hair and started to pull her towards him. He started to make her face move closer to his own as in looked into the eyes of the person she thought she loved. I always wanted him to make me his, but not like this. This is just wrong. I always imagined Sasuke as a hero in my dreams. But it's turning out to be that he's the villain. First I lose Naruto now Sasuke I can't take this anymore. Ino was about to stop struggling and give up until she heard a familiar voice. Put her down you emo freak. Sasuke and Ino both turned and looked to see who it was. When Ino got a glimpse of who it was she started to tear up. Naruto. It was Naruto Barley able to stand with blood all over him. He's alive. Oh thank Kami. Sasuke also realized that it was Naruto and got pissed off, so the Dobi has come and pretend to be the hero. Ha ha it's so sad. He was about charge at our hero but was stopped when Sakura sneaked up behind him and hit him in the back of the head with a rock, knocking him unconscious. Before anyone could relax Dosu spoke up. 
It seems my mission has changed. I'm going to be leaving now. But before I go her are my teams and the rain team's scrolls. Don't think I'm being kind it's just I want to make sure I fight you guys again in these Chunin exams. With that said Dosu grabbed Zaku and left. Naruto just smiled. I wonder who stuck a stick up the mummy dude's ass. Ino just stared at the bloody Naruto and started to cry. Naruto you idiot why you scare me like that. I thought you died. She then ran up and grabbed Naruto in a bear hug. Naruto squealed in pain. Ouch Ino that hurts. You're kind of squeezing me where I got stabbed with a sword. Ino quickly loosened up her grip but never broke it. She then looked up into Naruto blue eyes. Naruto please promise me you'll never do that to me again. Naruto looked into the blonde haired genin eyes. I promise I'll never die until I'm sure you're safe. Ino heart started beating faster. She was unreliably happy to see Naruto safe. I'm so happy you're back. Before Ino could finish her sentence Naruto passed out. Naruto. She started to shake him. She got so scared that she lost him. She would have kept shaking him if Sakura hadn't stopped her. Sakura smiled. He's okay Ino. He's just sleeping. I don't know how he's alive though. I was definitely wrong about bout narrator he sure is strong. Ino took Naruto's head and placed it on her lap. She looked upon the person she used to think was a weak loser. We were all wrong Sakura. We were all wrong. Kiba and Sasuke awoke a day before. Sasuke apologized for his actions. He said that he couldn't remember anything that happened though. Sakura and Ino both believed him but Naruto wasn't sure if he was telling the truth or not but accepted his apology anyway. Ino gave Team 7 the heaven scroll they got from the rain nins because they already had a heaven scroll. A little bit later Team 7 left but not before Ino and Sakura gave each other hugs. Right after though they got into a fight over who Sasuke liked more. When Kiba and Naruto were finally able to pull them off each other, Team 7 left for the tower. Team 10 had the earth scroll that they needed but they had to wait an extra day before leaving. Shino was still unconscious and Naruto wounds were still really bad. Naruto heals fast but getting stabbed three times through the stomach takes more than a couple hours to heal. Shino woke up exactly two days after taking a punch from the mummy sound nin. Naruto was healthy enough to move but still had to be careful not to reopen his wounds. So as soon as they packed up camp they also left for the tower. Hour later, our heroes finally managed to arrive at the tower. The three leaf nins pushed open the doors and waited to find out what was going to happen next. They waited around for about 20 minutes inside until they came to the conclusion they had to open the scrolls. When Team 10 unwrapped the scroll, none other than Aruka popped out. Man you guys just made it by the skin on your teeth. You still made it though so I'm happy to say you all pass. All three of them fell over in relief. Eno was probably the happiest. Thank god it's over. Now I can finally take a bath. Naruto pinched his nose. Yay thank god because you sure as hell need one. Shino shook his head. Naruto I'll put flowers on your grave. Naruto looked at his sunglasses wearing friend. What are you talking about Shin? Ino punched him in the stomach with all of her strength. Ino just glared at the hunched over Naruto. You baka you should learn how to speak to a beautiful lady such as myself. Ino waited for Naruto to react but he never did. He stayed hunched over. Ino walked over and placed her hand on his back. Naruto are you alright? He wasn't alright though. The blonde haired genin coughed up blood and fell over. Ino screamed. Naruto. Shino and Aruka sprinted over right away. Shino looked at his friend and got scared. Should Ino you forgot about his wounds. Aruka was even more worried than Shino or Ino. He stared at the blonde haired ninja that he thought of as a son before asking. Naruto heals faster than anyone I have ever known. For him to be this hurt something really bad must have happened. What happened? Shino took of his sunglasses and stated, he fought a man by the name of Orokiramaru. This guy was clearly no genin but Naruto fought him anyway to protect us. Uruka fell over from hearing that name. Alright Shino I need you to tell me the whole story. 20 minutes later, Uruka couldn't believe it that the snake Sanin has returned. What was even more unbelievable to him was that Naruto fought him and survived. Uruka was about to say something else but was cut short when Naruto started to slowly get up. Ino yelled at her idiot teammate. What are you doing Naruto? You should be resting. 
Naruto just stood up and smiled. Don't worry about me I made it look worse than it really is. Ino slightly blushed. Damn it I can't yell at him when he smiles at me like that. No one else noticed Ino blush except Shino. He couldn't help but smile. Uruka then spoke up. Well I'm glad to see that you're alright Naruto. I am sorry but I have to go and report something. You guys should go to the arena now. They'll tell you about the third exam there. He took a second and then looked at Naruto. Good luck and don't do anything stupid. Naruto just gave him the good guy pose. Don't worry I'll make you proud of me. Uruka turned around and whispers to himself. I already am Naruto. Then he poofed away and Team 10 made their way to the arena. At the arena, when Team 10 found the arena they found out that six other teams had passed the second exams with them. The six teams consisted of Team 7, Asuma's team, Guy's team, the Sound team, Kabuto's team, and the powerful San team. They all stood around quietly until the Hokage finally addressed them. Congratulations on passing the second exam. This year seems to have so many promising shinobis. It seems to me that there are too many that passed this year. We're going to have a preliminary exam to lessen the numbers. Tamari screamed. What the hell do we have to do to pass this preliminary exam? The old Hokage just light up his pipe. I'm glad you asked. I'll explain. The Hokage was cut short when a familiar shinobi jumped in front of him. It happened to be Team 10's Gekko Hayate. I am sorry for interrupting you but maybe I should explain. The Hokage just continued to smoke his pipe, of course Hayate. The sickly Junin then started to explain, my name is Hayate and I will be the proctor for this exam. The preliminary rounds will be hold as a tournament. You will face another ninja in a match and whoever wins will pass and whoever loses will fail. The rules for the match are simple. You can lose three ways. You give up, knocked unconscious, or killed. However if I feel that the match is over before one of those things happen I will stop the match and announce a winner. Naruto shouted. Yo Hayate sensei when do I get to kick some ass? Shino just shook his head. He's really hurt but he doesn't care. All he cares about is proving himself. Hayate smiled at his student. You'll find out soon enough Naruto. Now everyone look up at the board. It will announce who you will be fighting when the time comes. Now for the first match. Before the board could pick the names Kabuto put his hand up and said, I'm sorry but I'm out of chakra and can't compete in a match so I'm going to have to give up. Everyone was surprised but Hayate spoke up, alright you may leave. Kabuto walked away, Hayate the looked up at the board. Humsa the first match seems to be Uchiha Sasuke and Akato Yoroi. Can't the two combatants report to the arena and can the other ninjas move up to the second floor to watch? Everyone did as Hayate told them to. Soon enough both Sasuke and Yoroi were standing in front of each other. Hayate signaled for the match to begin. Sasuke charged at Yoroi and tried to punch him put the Yoroi dodge and grab the emo king's face. He then yelled, Chakra Q in Jutsu, Chakra Absorption Technique. He then started to laugh, Ha ha soon enough I will have drained all your chakra and you'll be a dead little nin. All of a sudden Sasuke grabbed his hand and broke his wrist. The Sharigan user then punched the leaf nin in that face sending him back into the wall, before the Yoroi could get up Sasuke launched another attack, Gukaku no Jutsu, great fireball technique, a fireball then engulfed Yoroi. When the flame died down all you could see was a burnt and unconscious ninja. Sasuke just smirked, too easy for an Uchiha, every in the room except for the girls thought the same thing what a cocky bastard. Hayate raised his right hand, Uchiha Sasuke is the winner. The medics carried Yoroi out on a stretcher while Sasuke gloated. The girls would have gone over to congratulate him but before they could his sensei Hitaki Kakashi took him away. No one had time to think about where Sasuke was going because Hayate announced the second match. The second match will be between Aburame Shino and Zaku Abumi. Naruto patted his teammate on the back, good luck. Shino really didn't need it since Zaku had both his arms broken by Sasuke. Shino finished it right away with a Ritsudo Tenshou, revolving split earth palm. He could have killed him but made sure the jutsu just left him unconscious. Naruto couldn't believe it, holy shit Shino kicked his as in seconds. If I blinked I would have missed the whole fight. Dosu screamed at his unconscious teammate, you stupid idiot how could you get beaten that easily. Hayate called the match, 
Winner Abarame Shino. Great job Shino you're becoming stronger and stronger every day. Rock Lee walked over to talk to Naruto. Wow your teammate sure is strong. Naruto turned his head to look at the guy look alike. He sure is. I wouldn't want anyone else watching my back. Lee smiled. I see. Naruto I wanted to ask you since you've also trained with Guy Sensei. Do you think a ninja can become strong with hard work alone? Naruto smiled at Lee. Yes I do because I would be one sucky ass ninja if I relied just on natural talent. If you ask me I would always want someone who works hard than a genius anytime. Rock Lee gave Naruto a huge smile. Thank you Naruto. You truly are youthful. Naruto replied. Thanks I guess. Ten Ten saw her teammate talking to our blonde haired hero and decide to join the conversation. She walked over and waved to both of them, hey what's up guys? Naruto answered, nothing much just waiting for the next match how about you? Ten Ten smiled, pretty much the same, so how you like the forest of death? Naruto replied, well beside the huge ass bugs and ninjas trying to kill me I thought it was pretty cozy. Maybe I'll take a vacation there sometime. Ten Ten just laughed, ha Naruto you're too much. Ino heard Ten Ten laughing and looked over at her. When she realized that Ten Ten was with Naruto her stomach started to turn. What the hell is she doing talking to Naruto? Wait what am I talking about what do I care if she talks to Naruto? Naruto and Tenten kept talking and joking around until Tenten accidentally tripped and fell into Naruto. Naruto caught her. When she looked up they both looked at each other and blushed. Naruto asked while still blushing, are you okay? Tenten quickly let go of Naruto and continued to blush. Yeah I'll be fine. Ino saw the whole thing and became angry as hell. She didn't even think she just wound up punching a hole in the wall. Shino saw what was happening and chuckled. I guess Ino's finally realizing she has feelings for our blonde idiot. Ino turned around and glared at Shino. What the hell are you looking at? Shino started to sweat. I'm nothing. Nothing at all. The bug user stared to slowly inch away from the angry blonde reminder to myself never mess with an angry Ino. Defiantly bad for my health. Naruto and Tenten heard a loud noise and turned around to see Ino punching a hole through a wall and scaring the shit out of Ino. Tenten asked Naruto, what's wrong with her? Naruto answered, don't worry she's always like that. Ino was still fuming, who does that girl think she is? Touching Naruto like that. Ah I'm going to give her a piece of my mind. Before she could do that Hayate spoke. Alright the third match will be Ino vs Sakura. I am skipping this pretty much the same thing happens as in the manga. They wind up knocking each other out. Naruto had an unconscious Ino in his lap. Ino wound up waking up to Naruto's face. Hey Naruto how'd I do? Naruto smile. You did amazing. You and Sakura wound up knocking each other out. Ino gingerly sat up. I see so Sakura has been getting stronger and stronger and I have stayed the same. Naruto shouted, you're wrong, it's true Sakura has grown stronger but so have you. You're no longer a Sasuke obsessed fangirl. You were one of the strongest Kunochi the leaf has to offer and you never forget that. Ino shocked Naruto by hugging him, thank you Naruto you really are a great friend. I think I'm starting to have feelings for this idiot. Naruto couldn't help but blush. He returned the hug. You don't have to thank me I was just telling the truth. It was Ino's turn to blush. The intimate moment was broken up by Hayate. The fourth match will be Tenten vs. Gara. Naruto and Ino broke their hug and turned their attention to the match below. Naruto cheered for Tenten. Good luck and be careful. Tenten looked up at Naruto and smiled. Let's just say this pissed Ino off a little bit. Ino soon forgot her anger because the match began. Tenten pulled out a punch of shuriken and threw it at Gara. Gara didn't even move, a thing of sand protected him. Naruto looked at the sand nin with interest. I knew it this guy is strong. He's strong but I can feel that he's unstable too. Tenten smirked. Well if that didn't work why don't we try this? Sushoryu, twin rising dragons. Tenten used a summoning technique to take advantage of her deadly accurate ability to throw edged weapons. To begin, she removed her two scrolls and set them on the ground, after forming the necessary hand seals, the two scroll rise into the air and begin to swirl around a middle vortex. Tenten then used this space to launch herself into the air between the spinning scrolls. 
From these scrolls she summoned her weapons which she used to throw at her opponent. However none of her weapons made contact with Gara. His sand protected him from all of it. As Tenten was coming down Gara shouted. Nothing can penetrate my Suna no Tate, shield of sand. You can't hurt me but I can hurt you. Suna shuriken, sand shuriken. The sand nin threw hardened balls of sand at Tetan. They hit her right in the stomach and sent her flying into the wall. She was hit so hard she lost Konsunas. Gara didn't care. I'm not done with you yet. Shukaku no Hoko, halberd of Shukaku. He formed a halberd made of sand. He made the sand so hard that it was unbreakable. Time to die Leaf Nin. Hayate tried to stop him. Winner Gara. You've already won so stop. But the sick Junin was to late the crazy sand Nin already threw the weapon of sand. Naruto screamed. No ten ten. He quickly took off his chakra weight and jumped down to the arena. He managed to jump in front of the halberd before it hit ten ten. Everyone in the room screamed, well except for the sound and sand teams. Pretty much everyone screamed, Naruto. Right before the halberd hit Naruto he screamed, I'll protect her no matter what you bastard. I'm not moving an inch from this spot. Heavenly body high out and ice. The halberd hit Naruto right after. Ino couldn't bear to look. She fell to her knees and started to weep. Shino however never looked away. He called to Ino. Ino don't cry. Naruto's fine. She couldn't believe it but when she looked down at the arena she saw Naruto. Naruto's body was completely covered in black ice. The ice protected him and Shino from Gara attack. No one could believe it. The whole room just looked at Naruto in awe except Fogara. You got lucky today Uzumaki but I will kill you and that girl eventually. Naruto just stared at the sand nin with anger. Gara even if I die I won't let you touch her no matter what. With that said Naruto's body of ice started to crack and Naruto fell over in pain. Damn it he's a monster but I won't lose. Our hero slowly got up and walked over to Tenten. He picked her up and gave her to the medics. Rock Lee and Guy soon jumped down and stood next to Naruto. Naruto looked at them both and Tear fully hugged them both. I'm sorry guys but I promise that I'll stop him from hurting her ever again. I'll die before I let him touch her again. Guy and Lee both embraced the young Genin. We know you will Naruto. Ino and Shino then jumped down next to Naruto. Naruto let go of Guy and Lee and walked over to his teammates. But before he made all the way over he fell down in pain. Guy ran over to his youthful student. He checked on Naruto and saw his wounds from Orokiramaru. Naruto what the hell are you thinking? You shouldn't be able to move with wounds like that. Hayate walked over to his student. Holy shit Naruto. You need to quiet this Chunin exam. Naruto slowly got up and looked at all of them. I am not quitting shit. I am sorry Hayate but I rather die than quit now. Ino ran up and grabbed Naruto in a hug. Naruto you'll die if you continue. Naruto whispered in Ino's ear, I know but if I quit now Gara might attack Tenten again. If I do quit he'll try and hurt you to get to me. I would never forgive myself if you got hurt. He then broke away from Ino's hug and walked over to Hayate, please Hayate I must continue. Guy looked over to Hayate and nodded. Hayate talked with worry in his voice. All right Naruto but please be careful. Now go rest up and tell your match. Shino looked up at the board and spoke up. Shit Hayate I don't think he'll have time to rest up. The board said Uzumaki Naruto vs. Inazuka Kiba. When Naruto saw the board he admiately looked at Kiba and unsheathed his black and red swords. All right Kiba let's get wild. The board said Uzumaki Naruto vs. Inazuka Kiba. When Naruto saw the board he admittedly looked at Kiba and unsheathed his black and red swords, all right Kiba let's get wild. Kiba jumped down and stared at a beaten Naruto. Look Naruto I know you're injured but I'm not going to go easy on you. Naruto smirked. Oh puppy boy I would expect nothing less. Kiba got into a battle stance. I'm sorry Naruto but I'm going to end this quick. Shikyaku no Jutsu, four-legged technique, Kiba got on all fours and became more canine-like. He started to charge at Naruto. Suga, piercing fang, Kiba stared rotating and spinning. He became a small tornado. With great speed Kiba shot out at Naruto. Kiba was so fast Naruto had no time to move. Kiba hit our hero right in the chest sending him flying back into a wall. Naruto made a huge crater in the wall. Naruto's head slumped over. 
Hiba looked at Hayate. I think you should call the match now. He won't be getting back up. The sand team. Tamari looked at her brother Kenkiro. I can't believe he was defeated so easily. I mean a man that interested Gara couldn't be that weak. Kenkiro agreed with his sister. I agree with you, but I don't think the match is over just yet. Tamari looked at her brother quizzically. What are you talking about? He's knocked out. Kenkiro looked over at Gara. Look at his eyes Tamari. Tamari looked and shuddered at the sight. Oh Kami, he hasn't been this bloodthirsty in a while. Kenkiro closed his eyes. I know, he only gets those eyes when he sees someone really strong that he wants to kill. The dog boy is not the one that interests him. So this fight can't be over yet. Guy, Ino and Kakashi. Ino screamed. Naruto. Guy placed his hand on the blonde girl's shoulder. Don't worry Ino. He's not done yet. Kakashi came up and spoke to his rival, I'm sorry guy but it is over. Kiba's much too strong for a healthy Naruto to beat, so an injured one has no chance. Guy shook his head, I'm sorry Kakashi but you're all seeing Sherigan I missed something. Kakashi was a bit shocked at what Guy said, what are you talking about? Guy had a heart filled smile on his face, your eyes have never seen the true Naruto. The mask wearing Junin asked, true Naruto. Guy nodded, yes the true Naruto. The happy idiot isn't really Naruto. When he shows his true self he's on par with your Uchiha. Kakashi didn't believe it. That impossible. Sasuke was at the top of his class and Naruto was at the bottom. There's no way he could have caught up to him. Guy pointed to the arena floor. Watch and you'll see for yourself. The white-haired nin turned and watched. Naruto vs Kiba. Kiba was walking away when Naruto stood up and wiped the blood of his chin. Hey puppy boy running away already. Kiba turned around and barked. You idiot you should have just stayed down. Naruto smiled. Sorry but I just can't do that. I'll always get up no matter what. I will become Hokage and Hokage's never back down. Kiba started to laugh. Ha ha you becoming a Hokage what a joke. You're so weak I don't even need to use Akamaru to beat you. Naruto shouted, you're supposed to excel in taijutsu right? Well let's see if I can show you how qualified I am to be a hokage by beating you with just taijutsu. Kiba laughed even harder, that's even more unbelievable than you becoming hokage. Naruto shouted, believe it. He then charged at Kiba with speed that surprised everyone. Kiba couldn't even move before Naruto shouted, Konoha Dai Senpu, Leaf Great Whirlwind, our blonde haired hero gave Kiba one hell of a roundhouse kick that everyone heard. Kiba went tumbling backwards a good 15 feet. Kiba was tough and got up pretty fast but he was still a bit groggy from the kick. However before he could fully recover Naruto attacked again. Konoha Repu, Leaf Violent Wind, Naruto did a spinning sweep kick to Kiba. Kiba was barely able to jump over Naruto's kick but he was still cocky about it. You missed you idiot. Naruto looked up at Kiba and smiled. I won't miss this time. Konoha Reiken, Leaf Thunder Fist, Naruto sprang up at Kiba and started to spin. He gained a shit load of momentum and nailed Kiba right in the face with his fist. Kiba fell to the ground. He was hurt but not beaten yet. He started to slowly get up. Shit I can't believe this is actually Naruto. When did this idiot become so strong? I mean not too long ago he couldn't even do a correct transformation jutsu. Pretty much everyone in the arena was thinking the same thing. No one could really believe that was actually Naruto. Naruto walked up to Kiba, you shouldn't underestimate me. Maybe you should use your dog. Kiba barked at Naruto, you're an idiot. You might have gotten stronger but you're no match for me and Akamaru. He then signaled for Akamaru to come over. When he was close enough Kiba threw him a solider pill. Akamaru started to turn red and Kiba started to do hand seals. Jujin Bunshin, Beast Man Clone, Akamaru turned into another Kiba. Then both Kibas shouted Gatsuga, Dual Piercing Fang. Both of them became little tornadoes. They both shot out at Naruto. Naruto saw them coming in time and was about to dodge until his injured abdomen started acting up. Shit my injuries hurt so much I can't move. Because Naruto couldn't move he wound up taking a full force blow of Kiba's Gatsuga. Naruto flew back into the wall again but this time blood spayed everywhere when he hit. Naruto immediately fell down to his knees and started to cough up blood. I can't fail here. I am going to be Hokage so I can't stop here. 
Kiba started to laugh. Naruto you'll never become Hokage. Only the strongest become Hokage and you're one of the weakest. So it's impossible for you. Kakashi, Gai, and Ino. Kakahi looked at Gai. I'm sorry Gai but it looks like the real Naruto wasn't enough to defeat Kiba. He surprised me though. He was a lot stronger than I thought. Ino spoke up. He's a lot stronger than anybody thinks. I used to think he was just a dropout like everyone else, but I was wrong. He's not a dropout, he's a strong shinobi of the leaf. The taijutsu master spoke, my youthful rival that isn't the real Naruto. Kakashi shook his head, Ga even if that isn't the real Naruto, no one can get up after taking a hit like that with his injuries. No one. Guy chuckled, Kakashi do you know that Naruto is the most surprising ninja in the leaf? The masked Junin asked, what the hell are you talking about? Guy never had to answer a few seconds after Kakashi said that he felt Naruto's chakra start to skyrocket up. Back at the arena floor two minutes earlier, Kiba was standing over a beaten Naruto with confidence. Looks like it over Naruto. I guess I'm more suited to become Hokage. Kiba kept on boasting for a little bit until he started to feel Naruto chakra rise. What the hell is going on? Naruto stood up and glared at Kiba. If you compete for the title of Hokage you'll become the underdog. Heavenly Body Raiden, Lightning. Naruto surprised everyone again when he showed them his bloodline when his whole body turned into white lightning. Kiba just stood next to a transformed Akamaru and bite his hand to calm down. That a great bloodline but I'm still going to kick your ass. Naruto just smirked. Oh really well I guess you have me a disadvantage since you have Akamaru with you. Wait a second I'll even the numbers. Cage Bushin no Jutsu, Shadow Clone Technique. Another Naruto made of lightning popped out. Both Naruto looked a Kiba and a transformed Kiba. Then the real Naruto looked at his clone. Yo you take the puppy I'll get the real one. The clone replied. Alright let's get wild. They charged at the two and both screamed. Guy sensei I will use this forbidden technique you taught me to protect my way of the ninja. Rock Lee ran over to his sensei. Guy sensei you taught him that technique. Kakashi looked at his rival, what technique? Lee answered Kakashi, the Omid Renge, front lotus. Kakashi punched Guy right in the face. You taught him that technique. You idiot that puts a shit load of strain on a person's body when they're healthy. Naruto's badly injured if he uses that he could die. Guy rubbed his cheek where Kakashi hit him. I know but I taught him that technique for the same reason I taught Lee. I wanted to give him strength to help him fulfill his dream. Kakashi shouted, what if he dies because of that dream? Guy smiled widely, Naruto's a ninja who will always follow his own path. He'll always do what he believes is right. No matter what happens he'll never give up. Even if he dies before he reaches his goal he'll be happy. Because he fought for what he believed in. Kakashi take a real good look at Naruto. This is the first time you'll see the real Naruto. A person who would gladly die for his friends and his way of a ninja. A ninja who fights against the world to prove everybody wrong. He's a ninja who would walk through fire to protect his way of the ninja. Kakashi that's the real Naruto. Lee and Ino started to cry. Even Kakashi looked at Naruto and let a single tear escape. Guy I was wrong. Naruto is truly strong beyond measure. The taijutsu master gave his rival the good guy pose, I know. Ino continued to cry as she looked at her blonde haired teammate. Naruto show them who you really are. Naruto and his clone charge at the two Kiba and both shouted, initial gate open, Omid Renge, front lotus, both Naruto's lightning bodies flared up and their speed doubled. Within a second they were both underneath the Kiba and kicked him straight up in the air. They jumped up and put their chest to Kiba and Akamaru's back and grabbed them. They started to spin themselves as they plummeted to the ground. Right before they hit the ground both Naruto's let go and jumped away. Kiba and Akamaru smacked into the ground leaving huge creators. Akamaru turned back to a dog. Naruto dispelled his clone and waited for Hayate to check on them. Hayate walked over and checked Kiba, he's unconscious. Winner Uzumaki Naruto. After getting medics to take care of Kiba Hayate walked over to congratulate Naruto. Good job Naruto, you did amazing. Ino and Shino both jumped down to also congratulate him. Shino shook Naruto's hand. Naruto you truly are an amazing ninja. Naruto smiled, so are you my friend. 
The bug user smiled and was about to ask Naruto something when Ino jumped on Naruto and gave him a hug, oh my god Naruto that was ridiculous. I'm so happy you won we have to celebrate once the preliminaries are done. Naruto chuckled, yay that sounds great but right now I think I'm going to go to sleep. Naruto passed out right there. Hayate checked on Naruto right away, oh shit he lost way too much blood we have to get him to a medic now. As Naruto faded into unconsciousness all he could think of was of become stronger. At the medical room in the tower, Naruto started to slowly open his eyes. When they were fully open he saw that he was in a medical room. Guy, Kakashi, Hayate, Shino, and Ino were all standing around him. He looked at everyone and asked, how long have I been out? Hayate spoke up, about two hours. Naruto immediately sat up. Holy shit what about the preliminaries? Guy spoke up this time, Naruto they're almost over there's only one match left. Naruto sighed, oh so what happened in the other matches? The young bug user answered, well the sand nin Tamari wound up beating Hanada. Tamari uses powerful wind attacks with a fan. The other sand nin Kenkuro beat Kabuto's other teammate Sarugi Masumi. Nakuro is a puppet user. The next match the sound nin Dosu beat Choji. The last match Nara Shikamaru beat the sound nin Kinsuchi by using some weird shadow technique. Naruto took in all the information before asking another question, alright what is the last match? Guy shouted and gave Naruto the good guy pose, it's between both of my youthful students Hayuga Neji and the always youthful Rock Lee. Naruto smiled, I see that should be one interesting match, I just hope Lee kicks the Hayuga's ass, he's a little too arrogant for my taste. He kind of reminds me of a certain Uchiha bustard. Right after Naruto said the Ino picked up a bedpan and smacked him in the back of the head with it. Hey don't talk about Sasuke like that baka. God damn it I'm so confused right now. I still love Sasuke but I'm starting to developing feelings for this idiot too. Our blonde haired hero developed a huge ass lump on the back of his head. Damn mention one bad word about Sasuke and Ino becomes roid rage Ino. Damn it she still loves that bastard. Man I started to think I had a chance with her. Guess I was just dreaming. Ino got real pissed. What was that Naruto? The blue eyed genin got real scared and started to wave his hands. Nothing. I didn't say anything. Ino glared at our hero. Good, that's what I thought. Damn she sure is scary. Anyway guy how's 1010 doing? Guy became serious. She'll be alright. She got a concussion and a broken wrist. She's sleeping right but you'll be able to see her soon. Naruto's whole demeanor changed. He was really upset at himself. Damn it I wasn't fast enough. I couldn't protect her. Ino saw the hurt in his eyes and tried to comfort him. Naruto there was nothing you could have done. Ino was interrupted when Ichunin walked in. The tenth match is starting now. You guys should head to the arena now if you want to see it. Naruto got up and started to gingerly walk to the arena. Ino screamed. Naruto what the hell are you doing? You have to stay in bed. Naruto turned around to look at Ino. How can I stay in bed when Lee's fighting? I haven't known him long but he's a friend, and I support my friends. With that said Naruto walked out. Ino was about to bring him back when Guy stopped her. Ino he has to go. Him and Lee are very similar. Both Naruto and Lee have worked their asses off to get where they are. They both want acknowledgement from people. Naruto want Lee to know that he acknowledges him as a strong shinobi of the leaf. Ino understood. All right but I still think he should be resting. Hayate spoke up. Well let's go watch Lee's match with him to make sure he doesn't do something stupid. Yamanaka agreed. All right let's go. At the arena. Rock Lee and Hayuga Neji were standing around waiting for Hayate. Hayate came a couple of seconds later. Shit I almost forgot I am the proctor. Anyway sorry, match 10 begin. Neji stared at Lee, Byakugan, white eye. Lee with these eyes I can see almost anything. These eyes shows me that you're destined to lose. A genius will always beat a loser like you. Lee was about to say something but was stopped when Naruto shouted. Bullshit, Lee his eyes can't see shit. Lee proved to him that hard work can beat a genius. Show him that you are the strong shinobi that I know you are. The Hayuga grunted. Shut up idiot. No one can escape destiny. Lee looked up at Naruto. Thank you Naruto. He then turned his attention to Neji. 
Neji you were wrong, I will beat you and I will make my own destiny, the Hyuga grunted, shut up idiot. No one can escape destiny. Lee looked up at Naruto, thank you Naruto. He then turned his attention to Neji. Neji you were wrong, I will beat you and I will make my own destiny. Hayate signaled the match to begin. Neji and Lee both got into their fighting stances. Everyone was on the edge of their seats waiting to see who would come out on top. The Hyuga with the Juken Ryu, gentle fist style, or Rock Lee and his Gukan Ryu, strong fist style, which one of them would be the last one standing. Lee was anxious so he attacked first. He charged at Neji and tried to hit him with a Konoha Senku leaf whirlwind but Neji ducked out of the way. So Lee wound up sailing over him. The Hyuga had an evil smirk on his face. Lee I already told you. You cannot escape your destiny which is to lose to me. Hake Hasanjiki, 8 divination signs destructive mountain fist. Neji ran up and thrust his palm into Lee's gut, sending him flying back into a wall. See you're just too slow to fool my eyes. Lee steadied himself back up and looked at his sensei. Guy sensei can I show him my true speed? Guy nodded. Lee immediately jumped on the statue in front of the ring. Naruto asked Guy, what does he mean by true speed? Guy pointed to Lee's legs. You're not my only student who uses weights to train. Lee ripped off his weights and let them fall to the ground. Neji watched the weights falling to the ground. Confidently Neji shouted, You think taking off a little bit of weight is going to help you? Then you are sadly mistaken. His confidence flew away right when Lee's weights hit the ground leaving one huge ass crater. Oh shit. Everyone's eyes almost flew out of their sockets when Lee's weights hit the ground. Eno shouted at the green spandex wearing Junin. Holy shit, guy how much is that? Guy made a thinking pose, not that much only about a ton. Eno's jaw almost hit the floor, he was wearing 2000 pounds of weight on him and you think that not a lot. Are you crazy? Guy gave his famous good guy pose. I'm as crazy as any other youthful ninja wearing green spandex. Eno slapped her head, I give up. Now back to the match. Lee ran down the statue and got right in Neji's face. Oh did your eyes miss that? Well hopefully they won't miss this. Konoha Shufu, Leaf Rising Wind. Lee did a swift upwards kick to Neji's face. Neji moved his head back to try and avoid the hit but didn't move quick enough. He was pushed backwards but didn't fall down. Is that all you can do? Your destiny is to lose and no matter how hard you try you can't change destiny. Hake Kyushu, Ape Divination Signs Air Palm. Neji thrusted his palm at Lee. At first nothing happened but a few seconds later an invisible wave of chakra hit Lee in the gut. Lee fell to one knee and started coughing, he tried to get up but couldn't. I can't stop now, I must prove to people you can become a great ninja by just using taijutsu. The cocky Hayuga just laughed in his face. You will never be a good ninja. You were born with a destiny that made you unable to use ninjutsu techniques. Destiny didn't want you to be a ninja. Lee stood up and all of a sudden everybody in the arena felt a surge of chakra. Green chakra started to spill out of Lee. Destiny. I'll show you that the power of my youth can overcome stupid destiny. Celestial gate Kaiman, initial gate open. Kaiuman, heal gate open. Simon, life gate open. Lee's face turned red and veiny. Naruto utterly shocked at what was happening to Lee. He turned to the thick eyebrows sensei. Guy what the hell is happening to Lee? Guy began to cry, in order to protect his way of the ninja he's going to use an extremely dangerous jutsu called Ura Renge, Reverse Lotus. This jutsu is the big brother of the Omit Renge, Front Lotus, you used. Kakashi turned to his rival in worry, Guy how many gates can Lee open? Guy prayed before answering, he can open five gates. This is Lee's last attack no matter what happens to Neji. Even if he should win this match I don't know if he'll be able to compete in the finals. Eno screamed, then why the hell is he going to do this? Even if he wins he might not be able to even finish the Chunin exams. Why take that risk, why? Naruto answered he, he has to take that risk. He has to prove to himself and everybody else that he's strong. He has to prove it to Neji most of all. Eno looked down at the arena floor consumed with worry about the thick brows Genin, Neji was also worried but for a very different reason. He looked at Lee with his Byakugan white eye and saw Chakra engulfing him. Lee what the hell are you doing? 
Rock Lee just stared at the Hyuga for a while before looking up at Guy and Naruto and screaming, changing destiny. Fourth Gate Shoman, Wound Gate, and Fifth Gate Toman, Limit Gate Open. Lee screamed in pain as his muscles started to rip but that didn't stop him he screamed again. Ura Renge, Reverse Lotus, he quickly moved beneath Neji and kicks him upwards. While in the air Lee will then pummel the cocky Neji throughout the air with high-speed taijutsu attacks to weaken him. Then at the apex of his attack he will strike the Hyuga in the chest towards the ground. Lee then moves in close to the white-eyed Neji and attaches his bandage. Lee will then allow his teammate to get some distance, he then pulls his target back to his body and does a hard downward palm strike to their chest causing them both to crash into the ground with massive damage. Everyone was in shock at the amount of damage Lee's technique caused. A huge cloud of dust and rock flew up so no one could really tell what happened after they hit the ground. Everyone was waiting to see who was the one left standing. As the dust cloud started to clear up everyone saw someone standing over top of someone. No one could tell if the one standing was Neji or Lee. When the dust finally cleared the one that was standing was Neji. No one could believe it. Guy rubbed his eyes almost a million times not really believing what happened. He asked his rival, I don't understand how can Neji be perfectly fine after being hit with the Ura Renge, Reverse Lotus. Did you see what happened Kakashi? Kakashi had his Sharigan eye open the whole time so he did actually see what happened. I'm sorry guy but right before Neji landed he used the Hakusho Kaden, 8 divination palms of the hand, heavenly spin. He used the chakra barrier to protect himself. Naruto couldn't believe that Lee actually lost, I can't be. How could Lee lose after using such a kick-ass technique? Lee can't lose, he was supposed to prove to everybody you can become a great ninja with just taijutsu. Hayate announced, Hayuga Neji is the winner. Naruto and Guy both jumped down from the balcony to check on Lee after Hayate's announcement. When they finally reached him they saw Neji spit on Lee. Fool I told you, you cannot change destiny no matter how hard you fight. I mean look at yourself. If you just listened to me and accepted your fate you wouldn't have had to gone through such a beaten. Lee was unconscious so he couldn't answer back but his sensei sure as hell did. Neji you disrespectful brat. You and Lee had an amazing match but you have to defile your victory with your hate. You took your hate of the Hyuga clan out on your friend Lee. As your sensei I am ashamed of myself for not being able to change you. Neji got furious. Shut up guy, I don't want to hear anything about the Hyuga family and you're just upset I kicked your favorite student's weak ass. Guy was furious but before he could respond to Neji Naruto punched him in the face. You bastard, don't you dare call Lee weak. He is an amazing ninja and you're just a uptight prick. The Hyuga rubbed his cheek where Naruto hit him, so let me guess losers and dropout have to defend each other, that's so cute. Naruto almost went ballistic, if Guy didn't restrain him Naruto would have tried to beat him to death. Naruto calm down, you'll get your chance to face Neji soon enough in the finals but right now we have to make sure Lee's alright. The pissed of blonde shinobi calmed down, you're right Guy sensei. The Hyuga started to walk away, but before he could get very far Naruto yelled, Yo white eyes I'll show you that you should never underestimate a dropout. He then turned his attention to Gara up on the balcony, and you sand freak I'm going to kick your ass for hurting Tenten. I'm going to be the last man standing in these chunin exams. I promise you all. Hayate, Guy, and Kakashi all thought the same thing at that moment. I believe you Naruto. Gara and Neji both grunted at Naruto's comments. After Lee went to the medical wing to join his teammate Tenten the Hokage spoke up. Alright guys you who are still standing past the preliminary rounds. For those who have won their matches I would like you to pull out a piece of paper from this box. Morino Ibiki walked out with a box full of small pieces of paper. Once everybody grabbed their piece of paper the old man spoke up again. Alright now I want you to tell us your numbers. Neji's was 1, Naruto's was 2, Shino was 3, Kankiro was 4, Tamari was 5, Shikarmaru was 6, Dosu was 7, Gara was 8, and Sasuke was 9. Once everyone told them their numbers Ibuki showed them a bracket. The finals will be a tournament that will be held one month from today. We give you this month so you can train and prepare for your upcoming matches. Now if you look at your brackets it will show you who you will be facing a month from now. Ibiki started to call out the matches, 
Match 1 will be Hayuga Neji vs. Uzumaki Naruto. Match 2 will be Abarame Shino vs. Kankuro. Match 3 will be Tamari vs. Nara Shikramaru. Match 4 will be Dosu Kinyuta vs. Uchiha Sasuke and whoever wins that match will have to face one more opponent than everyone else. The winner of match 4's opponent will be Gara of the Sand. Naruto glared at Neji I'll prove to you that destiny is bullshit for Lee. I'll kick your ass in honor of one strong ninja rock Lee. The Hokage started to puff his pipe, well that all I have to say to you guys. Good luck in your upcoming matches and make your villages proud. Dismiss. Everybody in the room left to prepare for their match. The day after the preliminaries were over, Ino and Sakura went to the hospital to check on Sasuke while Naruto and Shino went to check on Lee and Ten Ten. Naruto and Shino also wanted Top find Hayate there so that he could help them with their training. Sasuke was out cold so Ino and Sakura just put a couple of flowers in a vase and left. Naruto and Shino, the guys from Team 10 were walking to the room that Lee and Tenten were in when they ran into their sensei Hayate. Shino spoke up first to his sensei, Hayate sensei we were looking for you. We want you to train us for the finals. Hayate sighed. Yes Shino I will be training you however Naruto I'm sorry but I won't be able to train you. Hayate's answer shocked our blonde haired hero. Wait why can you train Shino and not me? The sickly Junin explained. Look Naruto I'm a Doden Earth user same as Shino. I can help him more if I train him. I can't train both of you guys because you both need individual attention. Now Naruto I made an appointment with the Hokage to find someone that will help you with your training. Naruto understood but was still kind of pissed off. All right sensei when do I have to meet with the Hokage? The sword loving Junin answered, in an hour. Naruto waved goodbye to Hayate and signaled Shino to come along. When they got close to the hospital door they could hear Lee screaming, Guy sensei I should be healed in no time my youthfulness will make sure of that. They also heard Guy crying, oh what a youthful perspective Lee. When Naruto and Shino walked in they saw Lee and Guy hugging with a sunset behind them. A second later the two hugging ninjas was hit in the head with bedpans by one annoyed Ten Ten, can you idiot please shut up. She then looked at the door and saw Naruto. Oh Naruto I'm so glad you came. Naruto smiled at Tenten before turning around and talking to his bug user friend. Hey Shino can you check on Guy and Lee and make sure they're not dead while I go talk to Ten Ten. Shino nodded and went over to the green spandex wearing ninja while Naruto went over to Ten Ten and sat next to her. So how you feeling? She smiled. I'm feeling pretty good now thanks to you. Naruto pointed to himself, thanks to me. The weapon mistress chuckled, yes you. You jumped in front of me to protect me from that monster sand ninja. Naruto rubbed the back of his head, I had to Tenten. I couldn't bear to live with myself if anyone I cared about got hurt especially you. Ten Ten blushed a deep shade of crimson before kissing Naruto on the cheek, thank you so much Naruto. Naruto was on cloud 9 when Guy called out to him, yo Naruto I need to talk to you so can you come over here. He then looked at Tenten, sorry Tenten but this is impotent. Naruto walked over to the Taijutsu master, yo Guy what did you want to talk about? And where's Shino? Guy sighed, when Tenten hit Lee with a bedpan it knocked him out so Shino went to get a nurse. After explaining where Shino went Guy pulled out a scroll and gave it to Naruto, I can't train you since Neji is on my team but I would like you to use these techniques when you fight Neji. Naruto opened the scroll, the scroll had two techniques written on it. The first was the Konoha Dai Senku, Leaf Great Light Rotation, you will charge at your opponent and deliver a powerful kick to the side of the head which will make your opponent and will spin your opponent away. The next technique was the Ura Renge, Reverse Lotus, and at the bottom of the scroll was a note left by Guy. Naruto I'm giving you these techniques so you can help Lee's way of the ninja come true. I believe you are the only one capable of this. Please honor my courageous student Lee. After reading the scroll Naruto bowed in front of Guy, Guy I promise you I will do as you ask. Naruto then looked up at the clock and saw it was almost time for his meeting with the Hokage, I'm sorry but I have to go. He smiled and waved to Tenten, see you later, which made Tenten blush before walking out the door. Ten minutes later at the Hokage's office, Naruto was standing in front of the Hokage waiting to see who his new teacher would be, so old man Gigi who's going to help me with my training. 
The Hokage put a pipe in his mouth and started smoking, well I was thinking of having. Sarutobi was interrupted when an older looking man with white hair was thrown into his office by a female Anbu ninja, I'm sorry for interrupting your meeting but his pervert must be punished. The Hokage started to laugh, well let me guess you caught him peeking at the women at the hot springs. The female ninja nodded, all right you may leave I will take care of it. He then looked at the white haired man, Jiraiya you never change. Jiraiya rubbed his cheek where the female Anbu had hit him before, yea you know me. Hey sensei the women in Konoha are getting really strong. Sarutobi laughed and Naruto laughed as well, so Sarutobi Gigi this arrow senin used to be your student. Jiraiya looked at the blonde ninja up and down and couldn't believe how much he looked like his former student the fourth. He then wound up hitting the fourth look alike on the top of the head, hey Arobaka learn how to speak to your elders. Naruto tried to dropkick the white-haired Sanin but he sidestepped him. Naruto completely missed with the dropkick and ate the ground hard. The Hokage laughed at the two. How nostalgic that's exactly what Minato did when he first met Jiraiya. Hmm maybe as should, yes that's a great idea. Naruto I just figured out who will help you with your training before the Chunin exams. Naruto pooped right up, who is it? The old man smiled. One of the legendary Sanin's Jiria will be your sensei. Everybody in the whole village heard both of them scream, what? Later that night at the hospital, a certain snake bastard was staring at his body to be Sasuke, soon you will be mine. Orokiramaru was licking his lips when all of a sudden a flash of black lighting struck right next to him. This spooked the Sanin, that jutsu, it can't be. A person hidden in the shadows started to speak. Orokiramaru soon I will return. You and that Uchiha will help me make this world mine. Soon I will finish what I started 50 years ago, with another flash of black lightning the figure was gone. Whoever that figure was sure as hell scared the snake Sanin. Orokramaru wiped the sweat off his forehead and stared at Sasuke, it will begin soon. Naruto stuck his tongue out at the perverted ninja, alright arrow Sanin here I go cage bushin no jutsu, shadow clones, two Naruto's popped out. Here I go you stupid pervert. The two shadow clones of Naruto started running at Jiraiya. They both screamed. Tentai Raiden, Heavenly Body Lightning, the first shadow clone attacked first Tornado Raidoningu, Tornado Lightning. The second one yelled right after him, Rariu no Tatsumaki, Lightning Dragon Tornado. Jiraiya was able to sidestep and spin away from the Lightning Tornado but right after avoiding the Tornado the Lightning Dragon came bearing down on him. Jiraiya saw out of the corner of his eye and used Kawerimi no Jutsu, change of body stance technique, with a log to avoid the dragon. Right after that he Shunshin no Jutsu, body flicker technique, in front of the real Naruto and punched him in the stomach. When Naruto got punched his cage bushins wound up getting destroyed, that was pretty good Naruto but not good enough. Right now the Hyuga will kick your ass. Naruto clutched his stomach in pain and screamed, I won't lose Tentai Hyouten. Heavenly body ice. The blonde's body turned into black ice. Aero Sen and I will become Hokage and I will kick the Hyuga and your ass. Haru Muko, destruction dragon fierce tiger. A huge ice beast shot out at Jiraiya. The white haired Sanin expected this to happen and dodged the ice beast with relative ease. Naruto still no good enough. Damn I might be saying that but his ninjutsus are ridiculous and from what I've heard he's been taught taijutsu from Guy. With a little help from me he'll definitely beat that Hyuga. Naruto was also in deep thought shit that didn't work. I've only have enough chakra to pull of this last jutsu. I haven't mastered it yet but hopefully it'll work. Alright old man let's see if this is good enough Kokuryu Bufusetsu, Black Dragon Blizzard, a huge black ice dragon with red eyes shot out at the 50 year old Leaf Nin. Jiraiya just looked at the huge ice dragon bearing down on him. Holy shit I have no time to dodge. I can't believe that this kid made me use this jutsu. The Sanin screamed. Hari Jizu, underworld guardian spikes, his hair grew and surrounded his body, his hair also became rigid and pointy. When the ice dragon hit Jiraiya his hair wound up protecting him. When the attack died down he released his jutsu. His hair went back to normal. Naruto looked at Jiraiya in shock. Damn he might be a pervert but he sure is strong. Right after thinking that Naruto passed out from chakra exhaustion. Jiraiya saw this and ran over, when he realized Naruto was fine he sighed in relief, damn kid you sure or something. 
He watched the blonde-haired Jenin sleeping peacefully until something in his head clicked. Wait a sec the resemblance and that weird bloodline he used. It couldn't be. Jiraiya lifted Naruto's shirt up a little bit to see his stomach. He saw the Hake no Fuin Shiki, 8 divination signs seal style, and the Shisho Fuin, 4 image seal. So it's true this is the Kyuubi's Jinchuriki. Now I see why you made me his sensei. Naruto now I know exactly what I must teach you. Ino's house. Ino just woke up and was looking out of the window. Naruto I wish I could join you and Shino in the finals but I can't. However I'm not going to let you guys get ahead of me. I'm going to train during this month also. All of a sudden Ino's mom called out to her. Hey Ino there's someone at the door for you. Ino came running down the stairs. Mom who is it? When got to the end of the stairs her mom didn't have to answer. It was Yuahi Kuranai. The red-eyed Junin waved. Hey what's up Ino? Ino was a bit shocked at seeing the genjutsu specialist but didn't show it. Nothing much since Naruto and Shino are training for the finals. Anyway what brings you here? Kuranai smiled. Well Hayate asked me to come over here. The blonde Kunochi showed her shock this time. Why did he do that? Kuranai smiled again. Well he asked me to come over because he wanted me to train you while Naruto and Shino are training. He didn't want you to be left behind. It was Ino's turn to smile now. Well I'm going to have to thank Hayate Sensei for that later. So did he ask you to help since you're a friend of my mom? The red-eyed beauty shook her no. He asked me to help you since I specialize in genjutsu and I know a couple of Sweden water jutsus and he thinks we have similar personalities. The only female member of Team 10 was beaming with joy, are you serious? Wow now I can show Sasuke-kun that I'm a strong ninja. I'll also rub my strength into Naruto's face. Her eyes light up when she said the name Naruto. Kuranai saw this and had a slight smirk on her face. She probably doesn't realize that it isn't Sasuke who she really want to impress. After that thought she calmed Ino down and told her. Well I want to start your training right away so hurry up and get ready. We're leaving as soon as you're ready. Ino was so anxious to get stronger she sprinted up the stairs and stared to pack some supplies and get ready for training. Usually for Ino it takes her an hour to get ready but not today. She was done in a matter of minutes. Right when she was done they walked out the door. Right before she closed the door she thought I won't be a hindrance to Naruto or anyone else anymore. In the wood a couple miles away from Konoha, Hayate and Shino were sitting down having a conversation. Shino was sitting down on a rock while Hayate was leaning up against a tree. Hayate looked at his student and stated, Shino you are a very impressive young man and I thought it would be best if I trained you alone. Shino asked, best for me maybe but what about Naruto? He need your training too. I know the thing about you being a Doden user the same as me was just a bullshit answer, Shino was actually losing his composer. Something that that rarely ever happens to the bug user, but fearing that his friend was pushed to the side was a real incentive to do it. The swordsman sighed, look Shino calm down. You're right that excuse was bullshit, but I had my reasons. The sunglasses wearing Jenin raised his voice, tell me what is the reason, please. Hayate dropped his head in thought before answering. Look Shino the reason is that I promised an old friend of mine when this day came that I would train you personally so you could show all of Konoha how strong you were and become a chunin. He also wanted you to succeed where he failed. It was his dying wish and I plan on fulfilling it. The bug user was shocked. Hayate what are you talking about why would someone ask you that and whose dying wish was it? The sickly Junin started to tear up. It happened 11 years ago when I was your age and you were only one. I was the teammate of your brothers. Now Shino was real confused, what are you talking about I never had a brother. I'm an only child, my parents never had another child. Hayate sadly replied, Shino you do have a brother but he is not the son of Aburame Shibi and Aburame Emi. The more Hayate talked the more Shino was confused, wait how is that possible? How can I be someone's brother if they're not the son of my parents? The sickly Junin sighed, Shino they're not your real parents. The bug user shouted, what the hell are you talking about? Hayate walked over and placed a hand on Shino's shoulder. Look I know you want answer right now but just wait and listen to my story. If you listen your questions will be answered. Shino calmed down, alright sensei tell me about my brother. Hayate started to tell his story. 
Your brother's name was Mifu Shinobu and your father was Mifu Murasama, your mother's name was Mifu Namida. Both of your parents were Junins and loved you and your brother very much. Hayate had to wipe the tears away from his face before continuing his story. Me and your brother were best friends. Whenever we went on missions he would always tell me how he dreamed of becoming a legendary ninja feared all around the world. But when you were born his dream changed. Now he wanted to become a strong ninja so he could train you into becoming a legendary ninja that would protect this village. He trained so hard so he could make his dream come true. Your brother was one strong man. When her team went to the Chunin exams he wound up winning the finals against me nonetheless. Hayate smiled. He never let me live that down. Anyway the third made me and him Chunins and we were so happy but our teammate had lost his first match to your brother and didn't pass. His name was Hajiri Hayes. He was always jealous of your brother and when he wound up losing to him he wound up snapping. The night that me and Shinobu became Chunin we went out celebrating. It was such a fun night until me and your brother got back to his house. When we went into his house we saw Hayes standing next to a huge man with an equally huge sword killing your parents. I was about to attack him but Shinobu stopped me. He told me to save you while he tried to hold of Hayes and the other man. But before I could even move Hayes and the other man sliced down your brother. They were about to kill me to when Aburami Shibi and Emi came running in. They were your parents' friends and neighbors. They were walking home when they heard the noise coming from your house. They came running to see what happened. When they got there they were able to scare off Hayes and that other man. They managed to save me and you but your parents and your brother weren't so lucky. Right before he died your brother told me to train you when it was your turn to become a chunin. He also asked me to help make sure you succeed in whatever dream you had. He didn't want you to fail in succeeding your dream like he did his. After that the Abarames took you in as their own and I made sure you were on my team when you became a junin. Shino stood there in complete shock. He couldn't believe what he just heard. He just found out he had a brother and was adopted. He also heard the tragic story of how his family died. After hearing all that all he could do was weep, why didn't anyone tell me about? I had a right to know. Why did everybody lie to me all these years? Hayate continued to cry along with Shino, I'm sorry but we all thought it would be best not to tell you until you could handle it. About five minutes later Shino stopped crying. He stood up and looked at his sensei. All right sensei I understand why you guys didn't tell me till now. However I need to know what happened to Hayes and that other man right now. Hayate saw the seriousness on Shino's face and answered right away, Hayes became a nuke nin and is still at large. I never found out who that man was but I'll never forget that mon's sword. I became a swordsman so if I ever found that man I could cut him down just like he did your brother. The bug user accepted the answer. I see thank you for telling me Hayate you really are a great friend. Um could you answer one last question? The sickly Junin asked, sure anything. What do you want to ask? Shino took off his sunglasses, what was my brother like? Hayate smiled, he was a lot like you Shino. Shino wiped the last of his tears away and put back on his sunglasses. All right sensei let's make sure I make my brother proud and become a chunin. The leaf swordsman pulled out his dual blades, all right Shino let begin your training. Training Area 10. Kurinai was standing in front of Ino. Hayate told me you are pretty good at Genjutsu and have a couple Sweden Jutsus. Well first off I want to see what Sweden Jutsus you have. So show me what you got. Ino walked into a clearing and yelled, Well here I go Kurinai Debukufu no Jutsu Grand Waterfall Technique. A large column of water crushed into a couple of trees. Ino shouted at Kurinai, How was that? The Genjutsu mistress smiled. Pretty good I know exactly what I'm going to teach you during this month. Ino couldn't hold in her eagerness, what are you going to teach me? Kurinai smiled, alright calm down I'll show you. You know you're acting just like another blonde we know. Ino thought another blonde we know, what is she talking about? Wait she couldn't mean, Ino didn't get the chance to finish her thought because Kurinai started to do hand seals. Swear you didn't know jutsu, water dragon projectile technique. A 30-foot water dragon shot out and destroyed a lot of trees. All Ino could say was, wow. Kurani started to do hand seals again. Oh I'm not done yet Megan Jubaku Satsu, demonic illusion tree binding death. 
Ino found herself caught in a tree with Kurinai above her coming out of the tree. Right after Kurinai released the Genjutsu she smirked at Ino, now that is what I'll be teaching you during this month. Ino just stood there and kind of squealed, oh I can't wait to show everybody how much stronger I've become after this. Back in the forest, Shino was sweating from the spar he was having with Hayate. The bug user was about to start attacking his sensei again when Hayate called out, stop that's enough for now. I think it's time you start learning some new Doden Earth Jutsus. Shino stopped his attack and asked, All right, what are you going to be teaching me? The sickly Junin smiled and started to do hand seals, Let me show you Doryuden Earth Dragon Projectile. A mud dragon pooped out of the ground, a shot out solid mud ball from its mouth. Some of the balls hit solid rock and destroyed the rock. Hayate started to do more hand seals. I'll also be teaching you this Doryu Taiga, Earth Flow River, the ground that Shino was standing on turned to mud and made him lose his balance and start falling back. Hayate then stated, that this jutsu is good at keeping your enemy off balance and give you a perfect opportunity to attack. After regaining his balance Shino stared at his sensei, alright Hayate let's begin. Hayate smiled Shinobu I wish you could see how strong your brother has become. If you saw him you would be so proud. Back at the river bank, Naruto started to slowly get up, right when he opened his eyes and sat up Jiraiya threw a bucket of water on him. Naruto yelled, what the hell was that for I was already getting up Aero Senen. Jiraiya chuckled a little, no reason really just felt like it. Naruto was about to attack him until Jiraiya spoke up in a serious tone, now Naruto I figured out what I want to teach you. I have a two jutsus I want you to learn. However I won't teach you the second on until you finish learning the first one. Naruto nodded, alright I understand what's the first jutsu. Jiraiya's bit his thumb and slammed it down on the ground, Kuchio's no jutsu, summoning technique, a 15 foot frog came out. Jiraiya was standing on it, you'll be learning how to summon animals, but before you can do that you'll have to sign an animal summoning contract in blood. The frog then disappeared and Jiraiya stood in front of Naruto. Naruto ran up to the white-haired Sanin and anxiously asked, so will I be signing the frog contract? The white-haired Sanin smiled, no you will be signing a special summoning contract. He pulled out a huge scroll and opened it, he then pointed to where Naruto had to sign. The blonde-haired Genin bit his thumb and signed his name in blood then asked Jiraiya, what's so special about this summoning contract? The 50-year-old ninja smiled, well that summoning contract used to belong to a clan that had a special bloodline in the whirlpool country. This clan had the ability to turn their bodies into an elemental body. This summoning animal was supposed to be able to become the same elemental body of its master. Since you have a bloodline kind of like theirs I think it would be a good fit for you. Naruto realized that was the clan the Hokage told him about. He was supposed to be an ancestor of that clan. He had many though racing in his head but the on he said out loud was, Hey Erosenin what kind of animal is it? Jiraiya walked over to Naruto and punched him on top pf the head, I told you to sup calling me that. Honestly Naruto I don't know, I already had a summoning animal when I found that scroll so I never signed it. Naruto rubbed his head where Jiraiya hit him, OWW. Alright well let's see what it is. Naruto was about to bite his thumb again when Jiraiya grabbed his hand, why are you stopping me? Jiraiya had a serious look on his face, I stopped you because you can't use this jutsu until you contact that damn fox inside you. Naruto had a shocked look on his face, what are you talking about? How the hell am I to contact the thing inside of me and why would that help? Jiraiya answered admittedly, you have two chakras, the fox and yours. You still don't have enough chakra to pull of this technique on your own. You need some of the fox chakra. And all I can tell you about how to contact him is you're going to have to find out yourself, but what I can tell you is that if you don't contact the fox you won't be able to protect Ten Ten or Eno those girls you were telling me about from that monster demon. And you won't be able to beat the Hyuga and keep your promise to Guy. Our blue-eyed hero showed his determination to the Senin when he screamed, there's no way I'm going to fail. I'm going to become Hokage someday and Hokage's never back down. Naruto sat down and started to think about how he was going to contact the fox. After sitting around for an hour Jiraiya spoke up, Hey Naruto I think I figured a way for you to contact that demon fox. 
Naruto simply asked, how? Jiraiya had Naruto follow him for a while before he turned to pushed Naruto off a cliff. You have to die, please Kami let this work. As Naruto plummeted to the ground he though I can't die now. If I die now I would have failed my friend. And I would have failed to protect my friends. All of a sudden Naruto was in a sewer-like area and was standing in front of a huge prison. Naruto walked closer to the bars but stopped when he heard a deep voice say so my jailer has finally come to see me. Hey I have an idea why don't you come closer and let me eat you. Naruto stared into the demon fox eyes and yelled, so you're why my life has been so crummy. You bastard for what you've done to me you better give me some of your chakra. The huge beast started to laugh evilly all right you got some courage you little bastard. So as an award I'll give you some of my chakra. But don't think that just because in behind these bars I won't find a way to kill you if you dare threaten me again. Our hero responded, all right whatever just give me your chakra. All of a sudden Naruto was wrapped around red chakra. Naruto found himself back in the real world plummeting to his death. He quickly bite his hand and said, Kuchio's no jutsu, summoning technique, all of a sudden Naruto stopped plummeting. He didn't know what he was standing on until he heard a deep voice growl, it has been 50 years since Ayakaokami, Red Wolf, has been summoned. So who has summoned me? Naruto looked at what he was standing on and realized he was standing on a 50-foot black wolf that had red fangs and claws. His eyes were also red. It took a couple of seconds before Naruto finally answered. My name's Uzumaki Naruto and I'm the one who summoned you. He didn't know what he was standing on until he heard a deep voice growl. It has been 50 years since Ayakaokami, Red Wolf, has been summoned. So who has summoned me? Naruto looked at what he was standing on and realized he was standing on a 50-foot black wolf that had red fangs and claws. His eyes were also red. It took a couple of seconds before Naruto finally answered. My name's Uzumaki Naruto and I'm the one who summoned you. The giant wolf let out a huge laughing roar. Is this some kind of joke? There's no way a stupid kid like you could ever summon me. I have only been summoned by two other people and they were much stronger than you. You don't even deserve to sit on my head. If there was one thing that really pissed Naruto off besides Sasuke it was being looked down upon. Shut the hell up you stupid puppy. I summoned you so just accept it. Akalkami roared again but his time was much sinister. You dare call me a stupid puppy. I'll show you no one disrespects me and gets away with it. The black wolf jumped out of the cave so fast it almost made Naruto fall off. So you haven't fallen off my head, impressive but that's not enough for you to have summoned me. Naruto held on to the wolf's fur tight as hell before smacking his hand on top of its hell. You know what I just want to ask you a question. The great wolf summoned asked, fine what is it? Naruto had his trademark smirk on, do you like Christmas? The wolf was taken aback by the sudden question. Yay but why the hell would you be asking me something like that now? Naruto's smirk got even wider, I asked you that because you're about to be light up like a Christmas tree. Tentai Raiden, Heavenly Body Raiden, Naruto turned his body into lightning hoping to shock the wolf but what did happen he wasn't expecting at all. Akalkami's body turned into white lightning along with Naruto's body. When this happened the wolf's red eyes almost popped out of their sockets. You from the Tentai, Heavenly Body, Clan but how is that possible? The last Tentai that existed died over 50 years ago. Before Naruto could answer Jiraiya screamed, Kuchio's no jutsu, summoning technique, soon after the white-haired Sanin stood on a toad that was as tall as a Kaokami. The toad smoked a giant pipe before shouting, Jiraiya why the hell did you summon me? Jiraiya looked down at the toad as stated, Gambunta I wanted to talk to that summon beast over there and I thought it would be easier for me if you were with me. The toad known as Gambunta looked ahead and saw Akalkami. He almost dropped his pipe when he saw the wolf. Holy shit is that really you Akalkami? I haven't seen you my good friend in almost 50 years. Akalkami was equally as surprised. Yay it's me Gambunta, and I know it has been 50 years since we fought together against that bastard. He then realized he still hadn't gotten an answer about the Tentai clan yet. I'm sorry Gambunta but we must talk a little later. Your summoner still needs to answer a few questions. Jiraiya sighed. We believed the Tentai were extinct but a couple of months ago that boy on your head unlocked their bloodline. 
Since we don't know who this kid's parents are so we can't be completely sure but we believe that he is a descendant from that clan and one of his relatives must have survived the slaughter. Right after that Naruto passed out on top of Akakami's head. The huge wolf laughed, seems like that boy ran out of chakra. The toad hermit smiled, I should tell you that it was that blonde idiot that summoned you. Even though he's an idiot he's still strong. The red-eyed wolf smiled showing all of his fangs. You didn't need to tell me. I knew it was him that summoned me as soon as he activated his bloodline. I'm not exactly sure how I knew but I just got this feeling of overwhelming strength from him. Jiraiya smiled but his smile didn't last long. Gambunta got a good look at Naruto and asked, Jiraiya is that boy who I think he is. Is he the Nine Tails kid? This shocked the great wolf. Wait a minute did you say Nine Tails kid? You don't mean that this kid is the Jinchuriki to the Kyuubi. Jiraiya frowned. Yes he is. Is that a problem? The wolf red eyes showed a bit of anger at what Jiraiya meant by that question but knew he was just looking out for the kid. No it's not a problem at all. I'm just surprised that kid is a Jinchuriki. Gambunta and Jiraiya both simultaneously asked, why? Akakami smirked. I've met a couple of Jinchuriki before. They're usually mistreated and wind up becoming murderers and psychos. Some even let their demon take control of them. This kid seemed happy and determined. This village must have treated him differently than the others. The toad hermit admittedly dropped his head at those words. It saddens me deeply but Naruto was treated like any other Jinchuriki. He's been shunned, beaten up, made fun of, has had people try and kill him. He was all alone for a while. He found friends now but a lot of people still had him. The summoned beast was in shock. How's that possible? The white-haired Junin picked his head up and smile. Because he's Naruto the most surprising Shinobi Konoha has ever seen. The two summoning beasts both smiled. The fox then said, I better get back now. It sounds like I'll need to prepare for some huge battles soon. Wait I almost forgot can you give me Naruto's swords? Jiraiya took Naruto's black and red swords and threw them up to Ako Kami. After the wolf caught the swords in his mouth the toad Sanin asked, what do you want with Naruto's swords? The great wolf growled, I thought I recognized those swords. Jiraiya these two swords were made about 50 years ago by a great sword smith called Gatsu. Originally the swords were combined and it had the power to slice through any kind of element. Including a elemental body of the Tentai. One of the Tentai clan used it in the battle against that man. The Tentai warrior was able to nick the mon's face. Before the warrior could attack again he was killed and out of fear that man broke the sword in two. He did this because he knew the swords could not hurt him if they were apart. For Naruto to have these swords is truly amazing. How did he get them? Jiraiya was surprised by the wolf's story but answered right away, um I think our Hokage gave them to him. I see well tell that brat to summon me three weeks from now. I'll give that idiot his sword back then. The wolf proclaimed. Jiraiya asked. What are you going to do with his swords? Aka Okami smirked. I'm going to combine them. The wolf then disappeared. After Akakami left Gambunta looked up at Jiraiya and stated. I better get going too. Before he left he told the Sanin. That kid looks kinda weak. I can't believe he could summon something like Aka Okami. The old pervert chuckled. You know what they say looks can be deceiving. The toad blew on his pipe and the mumbled. Corny. The disappeared along with Aka Okami. Jiraiya yelled, Bastard Toad. He then walked over to a sleeping Naruto and pulled a blanket out of his bag, then placed it on two of the blonde. After that Jiraiya pulled out his notebook and started to do research. At the hospital, Uchiha Sasuke had just woken up and sat up. Damn I'm in a hospital. I have to get out of here. I need to become stronger so I can kill that bastard. All of a sudden Sasuke felt hotter. Then out of nowhere a burst of purple flame exploded in front of Sasuke's face. When the flame died down it revealed a letter. The young Uchiha picked it up and read it. Once he finished reading the mysterious letter he had an evil smirk on his face. Hum sounds interesting. I guess I should go find Kakashi now. I wonder who this letter is from. Oh it doesn't matter if he's going to help me kill my brother I'll do exactly whatever he wants. Back at the river bank three hours later. Naruto slowly awoke, he pulled of his blanket and looked around to see where Aero Senen was. He eventually saw him peeping at some girls in the bushes. 
The blonde genin then screamed, there's a pervert in the bushes. Jiraiya tried to place his hand over Naruto's mouth but he wasn't in time. The girls heard him and ran away. The white-haired Sanin yelled, you little brat you ruined my research. Naruto gave him the middle finger, bullshit arrow senin that's not research you were just peeping. The old ninja smiled, peeping gives me inspiration for my books Ika Ika Paradise. Naruto just shook his head, whatever arrow senin, come on though you got to train me. They walked over to a wide open area, all right pervert what was that other technique you wanted to teach me? Well I'm going to be teaching you a sword technique so. He reached into his bag and pulled out a normal katana. Here use this, he threw it at Naruto. Naruto caught it and looked at the toad hermit quizzically, why can't I just use my swords? He realized right then that he didn't have them. Arrow Senen where are my swords? The white haired Sanin scratched his head and said, Aka Okami took them. Naruto screamed, what? Back at the hospital, Ino had finished her training with Kurenai for the day and decided to visit Ten Ten and Lee in the hospital. She went to Ten Ten's room first. She opened the door and smiled, hey how you feeling Ten Ten? She waved to Ino, I'm alright just a little sore, um have you seen Naruto around? She smiled but deep in her gut she felt a little bit of jealousy, no I haven't seen him but knowing Naruto he's probably training his ass off. What is this feeling I get whenever I hear something about Naruto? Tenten smiled, probably, um can I ask you something? Ino replied, sure what is it? The weapons expert looked directly into Ino eyes and pleaded with her, Ino I really like Naruto but I always have the feeling he's hiding something. You're on his team don't you get that feeling to or am I just thinking too much? The blonde Kunochi head dropped and she told Tenten with a somber tone. No I know exactly what you mean. He's always smiling and goofing around even when he's really hurt. I think he's just hiding his feeling and other things from the rest of us and I don't know why. I feel bad about this but he was made fun of a lot at the academy. I was someone who made fun of him. Eno started to cry. Ten Ten grabbed her in an embassing hug and told her, go on finish what you wanted to say. Eno kept crying. He was always alone. He had no parents no nothing. He was always alone. Even when we became teammates I though oh no not Naruto, anyone but Naruto. Ino was able to stop her crying for a little bit of pulled away from Tenten. Ten Ten was the one crying now and Ino was the one who hugged her. Ten Ten asked, why did everyone make fun of him? Ino wiped her own tears away and said, he was the worst ninja in our class he always messed up. Plus he would always pull pranks and was loud. My dad told me to stay away from him to because they thought he was bad kid but he wasn't. So I just made fun of him and went along with everyone else. But that changed shortly after we became teammates. The brown haired Kunochi asked, what happened that made you change your mind? Her tears started to flow, he almost died trying to protect me twice. Tenten pleaded with Ino, wait what happened? Ino went into storytelling mode, a light lay back both stories are kind of long. Flashback, one of the mist nins were charging at Ino who was protecting Tazuna. Oh shit I'm going to die. I'll never get to see Sasuke's face again. She was trying to picture Sasuke coming to her rescue, but she couldn't. Right after that, Ino closed her eyes, expecting to die, but death never came to her. When she opened her eyes, she first thought that somehow Sasuke has come and saved her. But when her eyes fully opened, she realized it wasn't Sasuke who saved her, but her blonde teammate Naruto. 30 seconds earlier, Naruto realized that Ino was going to die if he didn't do anything. So he released his chakra weights and sprinted over to her. The mist chunin didn't even know Naruto was anywhere near him until he heard the blonde genin yell, Konoha Senpu, leaf whirlwind, right after hearing that the mist chunin got roundhouse kicked in the face. It took him a couple of seconds before he was able to stand up again and look for who kicked him. When he saw that it was Naruto he threw his chain at Naruto. Naruto was able to block it with one of his swords but the chain wound up wrapping around the sword. You idiot now I'm going to break your little sword then I'm going to kill your girl free, the chunin never got to finish his sentence before Naruto cut him off. Sanda Saburu, Thunder Saber, Naruto's sword was engulfed with lightning before he sent the lightning through the chain. Oh she, was all the chunin got to say before Naruto light him up like a Christmas tree. The other missed chunin saw what happened to his partner and started charging at Ino and Tazuna. 
Naruto saw the Mist Nin coming after them but he didn't have enough chakra to stop him. But before the Mist Nin could get there he was hit in the back of the head by the blunt side of a sword. It was Hayate. Sorry for being late, Hayate said. I thought you died, Ino shouted while tears came down her face. No I used Kawerimi no Jutsu, change of body stance technique, he paused for a second before he spoke again. I'm sorry I should have helped sooner but I had to see who they were after. Anyway you guys did great for your first actual fight with other ninjas. He then looked over at Naruto and saw he had a gash on his hand. Oh shit Naruto you got cut by one of their claws we got to get you to a hospital soon. Why it's just a scratch? Naruto asked. Their claws had poison on them if we don't get rid of the poison blood you could die. He took a second to catch his breath. Tazuna you lied on your mission application and one of my ninjas are hurt. I'm sorry but we have to abandon this mission and go back to Konoha. No, Naruto shouted. Naruto what are you talking about you could die if you don't get treatment, Ino shouted while tears started coming down more fiercely than ever. It's alright Ino, Naruto said before taking his kunai and stabbing it into his hand so that all the poison would bleed out. I swear on the pain in my hand that I won't need anyone's help that it'll become strong enough to protect the people I care about. I swear on this pain that it'll never give up that it'll never run away. That'll be my ninja way. I will not be a burden. Let's finish the mission. Tazuna just looked at the boy he thought was the weakest ninja ever. Holy shit does that boy have no fear. Shino just stared at someone he used to think was just a happy idiot. I don't know what drives you to push yourself so hard Naruto. I might not know what drives you but I do know you are one amazing bastard. Ino just stared at the boy she used to think was a loser and a dropout. Why do you keep protecting everyone? Why are you always getting hurt for others? Why do you spill your blood for me? End of flashback. Ino cried a little bit more before starting her next story. The second time he saved me was only a little while ago. Flashback. Right when Shino finished talking they all heard a female scream. Ino knew that scream. She had to go help. Shit that was Sakura. Naruto we need to help them. Naruto took one deep breath before agreeing. Alright Ino let's go help. I just hope we get there in time. Our three heroes started jumping from tree to tree. They were still a little while away when Ino heard Sakura scream again. This freaked her out. She started to shake in worry. I don't know what I'll do if Sakura gets hurt. I know we fight all the time but she's one of the few really good friends I have. Naruto reached over to Ino and tried to comfort her. It's alright Ino. I won't let her get hurt I promise and you know me with my promises. I always keep them because that's my way of the ninja. He then gave the worried girl one of his real smiles. Ino just smiled. Thanks Naruto. Our hero just smiled back. No problem. Naruto started to pick up speed. They were really close to where Sakura's scream came from. Right before they got there Ino just stared at her blonde haired blue eyes teammate. I don't know what it is but whenever Naruto smiles like that it seems to calm me. Ino wasn't calm for much longer. Team 10 arrived on the scene right when the grass nin bit Sasuke on the neck and gave him something called the cursed seal. Before jumping down to help, Naruto quickly looked around to see if he could find Sakura and Kiba. He found them bloodied and beaten a couple feet from where Sasuke was. But right when Naruto saw them the grass nin was charging at them ready to kill. The blonde genin throw a couple of shuriken. The shuriken flew right in front of the grass nin, stopping him in his tracks. The grass nin looked up at Team 10 and licked his lips, I see some fresh meat wants to join the party. Team 10 quickly jumped down in front of Sakura and Kiba. Ino then went over to check on Team 7 while Naruto and Shino made sure the grass nin didn't attack. Ino took out a first aid kit and started treating Sakura's wound. Sakura woke up right when Ino started treating her wound, OMG it you Ino. Are we safe is that monster gone? She then looked over and saw Sasuke on the groan and the grass nin not too far away. Oh god he managed to beat Sasuke where dead for sure. Ino tried to calm down the hysterical girl. Calm down. Don't worry we're here to help. Naruto and Shino will take care of him. Sakura was still a wreck, how can Naruto and Shino beat him? Sasuke lost and he was the strongest genin in the leaf. Ino grabbed her into a hug. You'll be fine, Naruto promised me, so you don't have to worry. 
The one thing that you know about is that he never breaks a promise. Sakura knew that was true and calmed down a little. She just held on to Ino as tight as she could, tears flowing from her eyes. I know I know but I am so scared. Ino turned away from a crying Sakura and looked at Naruto. Please Naruto find a way to beat him. Now let the action begin, the grass nin had an evil smirk on and stared at Naruto and Shino, alright boys let's have some fun. Shikumi no jutsu, death viewing technique, killing intent. Naruto and Shino saw images of their own death in painful ways. Shino was frozen stiff and terrified. Naruto was alright though, he hasn't figured out that jutsu doesn't work with me. I'll just play along and maybe I can catch him off guard. The grass nin was laughing evilly, ha ha that was too easy. He pulled out two kanai and threw them at Shino and Naruto. Ino saw what happened but Sakura was still holding her so she could help them, guys what are you doing? Move goddamn it. Naruto waited till the kanai were inches away from them before he dodged. He took Shino and jumped out of the way. He then took Shino over to Ino, that asshole over there messed with his mind. Try and snap him out of it I'm going to need help. He then turned around and stared at the grass nin with hatred in his eyes. The grass nin was a little surprised that a genin could break away from his jutsu so easily, how did you break my jutsu? I gave you both a jutsu that simulated a painful death. Your friend over there is still messed up but you're fine. How? Naruto pulled out his twin blades and replied with hatred in his voice, a jutsu like that won't work on me. My life has been far more painful than that jutsu. That answer surprised everyone especially Sakura and Ino. The both looked at each other with worry in their eyes, what did he mean by that? They both asked each other. The grass nin was surprised also, interesting. Well let's begin. Datapa, great breakthrough, a huge gust of wind blew Naruto into a tree. The impact caused the blonde genin to cough up blood. The blue-eyed ninja wiped the blood of his mouth and stood back up. Let's get wild. Heavenly body Raiden, lightning, Naruto's body turned into white lightning. The grass nin was utterly shocked, what the hell type of bloodline is that? Naruto screamed, well why don't I show you? Tornado Raidoningu, tornado lightning, a tornado made up of lightning shot out at the grass nin. The grass nin saw the tornado coming and bit his thumb, Kuchio's no jutsu, summoning technique. A 15 foot snake took the blast head on and protected the mysterious nin. The blast hit the snake dead on but it didn't do too much damage. Ha ha let's see you play with my snake for a little bit. The huge snake came charging at Ino and everyone else not Naruto. Naruto saw what the snake was after and got scarred. He released his chakra weights and sprinted in front of the snake. Sakura and Ino were scared to death they each closed their preparing for death. When the snake was a couple feet from them Ino opened her eyes. She didn't see a snake all she saw was Naruto, standing between them and a 15 foot snake. Don't worry Ino I won't let anything happen to you. Heavenly body high out in ice. He then started to do hand seals. Please Kami let this work. Haru Muko, destruction dragon fierce tiger, Kami answered Naruto's plea for help. A 25 foot ice tiger came flying out at the snake. The grass nin was standing on top pf the snake's head and saw the icy beast coming right at him. Oh crap he can use high out in jutsus. Right before the ice tiger hit the snake the grass nin jumped out of the way avoiding danger. Well the snakes wasn't so lucky the ice tiger made a hole straight through the giant snake. Ino and Sakura were shocked. Naruto actually managed to stop the giant snake. Naruto wasn't done yet. Yo freak let me introduce you to a technique I created myself. Hayaudan Saburu, Ice Saber, Ice Covered Naruto Blades making them two times harder and sharper. Let go you little snake freak Makajuki no Mai, Dance of the Crescent Moon. Naruto made three shadow copies of himself and charged at the grass nin. Right before he reached the grass nin Naruto jumped up in the air. The grass nin seemed to know which on was the real Naruto, I'm sorry little leaf nin but you made your final fatal mistake. Senei Jishu, Hidden Shadow Snake Hands. A couple of snakes shot out of the grass nin's arm. Naruto was able to dodge by doing a corkscrew in the air. When Naruto was inches away from coming down and slicing the grass nin in half. I mean mere seconds before Naruto's blades touched the grass nin, a sword came flinging out of his mouth. I stabbed straight through Naruto. 
He then pinned Naruto up against a tree. Ha ha so how do you like my kusongi grass cutter? Ino watched in horror as Naruto spat up blood. No it can't be. He can't die, he hasn't become Hokage yet. Ino burst into tears. Sakura joined her. Ino just let tears fly freely why did I make him promise to save us? He fought so hard to protect us. Why does he always do that? He always gets hurt so others won't have to. Naruto please don't die. Ino screamed. Naruto. The grass nin smirked. You seem to have an interesting bloodline. Maybe it'll make you my backup plan. He then tried to bite Naruto on the neck like he did Sasuke. Even if he was impaled with a sword, Naruto wasn't going to let the crazy snake nin bite him. Get the hell away from me you freaky bastard. Heavenly body Raiden, lightning. He turned his body into lightning. When the grass nin tried to bite him he got a little shock. The shock of lightning that hit the grass nin's face seemed to singe off his face. The grass nin had a different face. His true face showed a much older pale skin ninja. Feisty aren't we? It doesn't matter the Uchiha was stronger so I really don't need you. Ino couldn't just sit there and watch anymore. She pulled Sakura off of her and pulled out a couple kunais. She was about go until someone grabbed her arm. It was Shino. He seemed to finally snap out of the jutsu the pale skin nin placed on him. Quote. Wait up I. LL help. Naruto's one of my few good friend I can't just sit here and let him die. Ino just nodded. They both started to run at the grass nin. But before they could even get close Naruto yelled at them. Don't even think about fighting this guy. He'll just kill you. Ino pleaded with her blonde hair teammate. But if we work together we might be able to save me. Naruto coughed up some more blood. No, just leave me. Take Sasuke, Kiba, and Sakura and get the hell out of here. Ino started to cry again. She couldn't stand seeing Naruto hurt like that. Naruto I can't just leave you here to die. Please Naruto let us help. Shino started to tear also. Naruto I can't leave you either. You're one of the few people who accepted me right away even knowing I was a little different. A single tear trickled out of Naruto eyes. Thanks, but I rather die than see you guys get hurt. I'm sorry but you guys are going to have to finish this exam without me. He then pulled the sword out of his stomach and threw it to the ground. I'll hold him off for a little while but you guys got to go. Now. Ino started to cry even harder. No Naruto I can't do that. She was cut off when Shino grabbed her arm and started to pull her away. Shino what the hell are you doing he's going to die. Shino pulled down his sunglasses and showed Ino his eyes for the first time. There were great saddens in them, it is his last wish that we survive and I plan to honor it. Ino understood. Naruto picked up his blades again and looked at his teammates. Thanks Shino and make sure you protect Ino. Shino picked up Sasuke and Kiba before turning back to look at Naruto. I'll protect her no matter what. He took a second to wipe the tears out of his eyes before he started to run. Ino looked back at the boy she used to think was a loser. Naruto you truly are strong. She then grabbed Sakura and tried to catch up to Shino. End of flashback. Ten Ten and Ino were both crying hysterically. He managed to survive somehow. That's why he was so hurt when he was fighting in the Chunin exam. Tenten grabbed Ino into a fierce hug. Naruto really is amazing but why does he hide thing from us the people who care about him? Ino hugged Tenten right back. I don't know but let's make a promise to each other that we'll do whatever it takes to make him feel comfortable telling us. The both smiled at each other and said, that's a promise of a lifetime. They both laughed right after saying that. Their laughter stopped right away when they felt a huge amount of blood lust and heard clapping. How touching. I am glad you guys want to know him so bad. It will make it so much more fun when I see the terror in your eyes when you lose that chance forever. Both girls got scared and asked, Gara what do you want? The sand nin gave them both one evil ass smile. All I want you two to do is deliver a message to Uzumaki. Ten Ten asked, what's the message? Tell Uzumaki that if he losses to anyone before he can fight me in the Chunin exams I will kill the both of you. Oh yeah tell him if he losses to me either I kill the both of you. Well I guess I should be going. See you guys later. He still had on that evil smile as he left. Both girls looked at each other and thought the same thing, Naruto protect us. A month later outside the Chunin exam Ariana.
There stood a blonde genin holding up a beautiful white sword. The sword had a black fox on one side with the will of engraved on it. On the other side had a red fox with the engraving fire. The blonde genin stared at his sword and said, A light let's go kick that Hyuga's ass. Naruto all of a sudden heard someone scream, Naruto, he turned around and saw that it was Ino and Ten Ten. Hey what's up I haven't seen you two in a while. They had something important to tell him but they got distracted when they saw his sword. Ino asked, Naruto where did you get that sword? Our blue-eyed hero smiled, I got it from a friend. It's called the Amatsu Yaju, Heavenly Beast, thanks Rugastalian and Kuku Ra Men for helping with the translation. You didn't want to talk to me about my sword. So what did you and Ten Ten want to tell me? Ten Ten spoke up. It's about Gara. The end. Remember to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next video.